Hey everybody, it's Two Mess and Pie, bringing you Saturday Night Pie with a whole bunch of people, and I'm lazy, so I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I'll start with, uh, I guess, Oxygen. You can go. What's up, guys? I'm Oxygen. I am a Master Level Zerg player. Um, that's about it. I'm known as Runic Tundra in the chat, so you guys, I'm sure you've seen me around. I don't talk much, but I do my thing. That's about it. Winter, I guess you're up next. Alright, hi guys. I'm Winter. Uh, I'm a top 8 Masters random player and I tell my race before the game, so I try to play out macro games, stuff like that. I stream at twitch.tv slash zealfreebird, so if I'm in the chat, I'll be zealfreebird. But, glad to be here tonight, uh, and I look forward to talking about StarCraft, because I love doing that. Phoenix? Hey guys, uh, my name is Phoenix SD. Um, in the chat as Phoenix SD, so you'll let me there. I'm a uh, top 8 Diamond Zerg player. Playing at a master's level, though, of course. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'll be here master? for some Saturday Night Pie. All right, Imarine. I, I am uh, Imarine TV. I stream at twitch.tv slash Imarine TV. I'm a mid-master Protoss player that is strictly macro. I'm hoping to go pro before I go to college, but if not, then StarCraft two is done, and I just go to U of H. So that's my mission here on Twitch is to go to GM. All right. My own. <laughs> yep, you're a fox. What's going up, guys? Uh, I'm Fox. You guys have all seen me in the chat. Hopefully, uh, I stream at twitch.tv slash shockfox, and uh, I'm just here. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll find out. All right, so tonight I wanted to start off talking about the uh, the new maps for the 2013 ladder, how how amazing they are. And if you They're fucking them. bullshit. They're horrible <laughs> fucking third favorite. Two, two, two are fucking trash. Shit. One is they good. fucking no, remove Daybreak. Like, what in the actual fuck? That's what I have to say. <laughs> that, that last statement, I'll agree with. But before that, let's... let's, let's calm it down. Yeah, let's <laughs> have an objective perspective. Knock it down a notch. Objective. Knock it down a notch. Obje objective in StarCraft? Come on. Uh, in well, this community, a... objective? I don't think we All do right. that here. I'm sorry. Let me go get my high horse real quick. <laughs> right. but, uh, <laughs> as a random player, I want to say that at least two-thirds of the time I'm happy about the maps. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <All> right. <laughs> at least two-thirds. <laughs> Son uh, of a bitch. <clears throat> but I can say, like, the only at least you want to... <laughs> At least you want to play out macro games, so I can I can respect that. But I swear, every single time I see a random, I'm like, all right, time to nine scout. <laughs> right. like, I just fucking you can't. You get a safe build and, and scout early. I'd say I'd I say swear every time it's cheese. Twenty five percent of people they just don't trust me when I'm like I'm Protoss. Oh, I know. And they're like, anyone. no, fuck you. And then the, <laughs> right. then the yeah, drones and the wings anyway. come across the map. Like, mm -hmm. It's like, and okay, thank because, you for your letter points. Like <laughs> at a mid-master or high-master level, if you're not announcing your race as a random, you're inside this weird metagame that you can't practice from. So I don't actually understand why people don't announce their race, because you can't practice. You're not going to practice any matchup. Yeah, they just want your letter points. But I mean, like at a mid-master level, when you're investing like five to six hours a day and getting ladder points, like that's... That's just a They're lot. getting those ladder points, but, though. Yeah, exactly. It's about the ladder points. It's not about necessary improvements or any of that stuff. It's about yeah. getting the wins. And yeah. wins. Yeah, they, could, they could even AI just be I like sitting there like, yeah, you know what, I don't know what brace to play, so I'm just going to play whatever the game gives me, which is, like, what, what would you agree that it's mostly Terran whenever you go random? <laughs> no, like, it's I, mostly Terran. I think it's mostly Zerg. I, I've seen it in my Zerg. screen chat. It's whatever race I'm currently playing is, why are you playing that race so much? Have you switched to this race is usually what I get. Um, but I, I actually do find streaks. One time I got Protoss nine times in a row. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, but wow. it's, it, believe it or not, guys, about 33% of the time I find I play Terran, and then 33% I play Zerg. Whoa. And then, wait, well, whoa. Last 33% I play Imba. And that's, that's pretty only, much all that's only 99%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. The other one percent I lag out the again. game. <laughs> the other one percent I lag out. Very nice. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. I just That's like uh, Clontus. I guess is the the way that we're gonna pronounce that. I don't know. That's the way I'm pronouncing it. Uh, As a horrible Cl map. Clontus Meyer. It's like the return of Scrap Station, which I know is not like an original Oops. statement, but let that... me find these. It's Scrap Station without the destructible rocks in between, so it's I disgustingly just, I... Zerg favored. And it's gonna be a horrible ZBZ map. <laughs> I'm fine with them removing with them removing Daybreak. It's like the granddaddy of all maps. And it's a very yeah. good map, but like it's it's, it's time it's... to put it to breast, if you ask me. Like I'm fine with it. But put it the to problem breast. Yeah, put it to breast. I love my chicken <laughs> breast. But um the problem is that all these maps, like you'd think with the release of Core Hall City, Blizzard would realize that, oh my god, our maps 
we had before were so good, and then like not making Star Station Cross, it's like the beginning of Wings of Liberty all over again. Like I don't understand yeah. this, but now these new maps are happening. It's just so bad. Just, they don't learn anything. Yeah, I. All right. Go ahead. Um, I just, I mean, should we just go through each map from each perspective? Because we have like a dedicated Protoss player, dedicated uh, Zerg player, and also I'll I'll add this that well. Tim Essing and going on that. We could just go through each map and explain why we think it's absolutely terrible and Blizzard should go die in a fire and give us money. Derek, I, um, I can do that. I can do that really easily. Okay. The derelict Watcher is just terrible. I mean, I'm just looking at it now, like, for the very first time, and the first thing I noticed That's, is, like, the little specific. steam vents. The little steam vents right by the third. All I can imagine right now is somebody just sieging some type of unit there, whether it's offensive or defensive, and you just can't get past it. Whether That's it's, why you don't like, take the third there. Yeah, I'm just saying. That could be you just screw yourself there completely. I I think like that's the fourth base yeah. actually though. That'd yeah, be the fourth base in most matchups. Okay. That's Either really way. dangerous because if you take the third there, drops are too potent, especially against their because they'll dance between your main and the fourth. But yeah. I do I, like the third. I do like the low ground uh access that I have to that third with There's only points. one ramp on the third too. Yeah. yeah. So. I just real yeah, like that's I said, nice. it's the first time I'm looking at the map, so looking at that one we just tried, <laughs> decided it was the fourth. Just looking at like the when you go past that onto that raised ground, there's actually a very easy path to get straight to it. So yeah, you're right. You would not take that as your third because it's way too easy yeah. to just stream stuff in. Yeah, there, it's dangerous. Mm, I yeah. like how there's the only one access point to the third base because there's a lot of situations where, as long as there you have your army like in between your main and your natural. I don't care. Pick pick a race. It doesn't really matter. You have your army in between your main and your natural. If you're dealing with like drops or harassment or something, you only have to defend the mineral line, not like an extra ramp as well. Uh, yeah. So the third seems pretty easy to take. Um, that one area with a lot of open space outside the main and the, the, the natural and the third seems like that's where it's going to be hardest Protoss to deal with, like, Roach Hydra. That's where it's going to be hardest yeah. Terran to, like, engage a Protoss army that gets up in that situation. Um, but besides that, it seems relatively easy to take the third because there's uh, no ramp. I feel like Terran has a lot of opportunities on this map. It looks like it's going to be easy to, to pull a Protoss player out of position. But I, I don't know why Blizzard is stepping away. If you look at the positions on the Zelnaga Towers, Blizzard is really stepping away from giving map vision of the middle of the map at all. It's Especially yeah, you if you look with the, with the gas vents. It's, you know, just, you're going to be yeah. so blind if you just walk in the middle of the map. You, you yeah, have to have units I think that's there kind of the promoting, point, they're promoting positioning. Like before yeah. it was you would just sit there on the Zelnaga Towers and you knew exactly what was coming. You didn't have any risk or anything like that. But, I mean, just putting like a Zerg, like put one leg on each side of that and you know exactly when something's coming across the map. Or at least you know when they're positioning towards moving. Like, mm -hmm. it's just obnoxious That's... to have to do that. Instead of having two lings, one at each eye, or one, I call it an eye, it's a Zelnaga, one at each eye, you just put one at each Zelnaga and then one at either side of that little thing in the middle of the map, and you still have vision. Well, I mean, let's be honest, watchtowers were kind of, I don't want to say imbalanced, but like watchtowers like this, you see how they're on the high ground and they have like fog in them? They were very tough for Zerg to take. Uh, in other matchups, because if you just like put a zealot there, you don't know what's behind there. You can have a ranged unit and get it away. Uh, so it was kind of tough for Zerg to take some of the watchtowers some of the time. This actually, I think, favors Zerg not having the watchtowers. They have the most mobile and they have the cheapest units to go scout with, as opposed to just like, I'm going to plant a siege tank on the high ground at the watchtower and now I have vision over the entire center of the map area. Uh, stuff like that. Yeah, so I agree. I, I like that for, and it also favors the players who are a little bit more active on the map. If they're going to be active, like sending their units out in certain attack paths, or players who are active with their attacks, like I'm going to deny scouting of these two paths, so I could be coming any way here, and they don't need to just like touch the watchtower and see my attack. They can't actually do that anymore. So it's a little bit yeah. more favoring players who multitask a little bit better, I think. I'm actually really well, as long as you get hit. Yeah, we'll go ahead, I'm, I'm actually really liking the look of this map for Terran. I feel like if you if you can control that area, those two ramps between your natural and your third, like if you can you know get a nice line in that area for Terran, it's going to be really nice. I, and uh, I feel like there's yeah. a lot of harassment options also. I'm not happy with this style of ramp leading into the uh, the natural. I think that that is just too big. It's just like the one on Newkirk where it's just it's such a huge. huge well, you can ramp. do that double NG bay wall now. Like that's becoming pretty popular. You also, can do that, but I mean you're you're. Putting your upgrades at risk when you do stuff like that. Also, uh, early road rushes and that sort of thing from Zerg, which is becoming very, very prevalent uh, when you take your natural, especially if you take it on the low ground, um, or whenever you move it to the low ground, rather. Um, there are a lot of road rushes that are coming over and I believe, doing a lot of damage. 
It looks a lot bigger than it is. I believe that's still a two force field ramp. I mean, it's kind of like the one on no, Newkirk. It's but... yeah, it's the one on Newkirk. It's this. I don't know. I, I it's think the same it looks like Newkirk. a pretty decently big map. It's a very very large ramp. It takes... Newkirk is three yeah. force field ramp. It's three force field too. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If you look at the ramp from your nat or from your main uh, to your natural, it looks about three. Yeah. As far at as least the ramp. at least there is a ramp. Like on maps like Belcher Vestige and stuff, mm. there isn't a ramp. So. Um, that kind of funnels the roaches in a way that like widow mines can get a little bit of extra damage, stuff like that. I know it's it's a large ramp, but if they made it any smaller, it'd be uh, it'd be kind of like a neo planet situation where Protoss is like, I can forge fast expand easily at any point, and there's no way you can pressure it. So they can do a lot of cannon rushes and stuff like that because it takes less mm. buildings to wall off. So you got to think about the other matchups besides like TVZ, for example. Oh sure. Well, they don't and even how it, how it comes out. Yeah, and like. Maps like that, I believe that's the one with the uh, natural expansion inside the base, correct? Like touching the main, the one you, the map you were just referring to. No, we Derelict? were talking about. New no, Kirk no, not this one. I'm sorry, the the one you just compared the map to. No, New Kirk was Core Hall City is the one you're thinking of with Core Hall yeah. City. Horror, okay, horror. I was gonna say they don't even have to fucking Core Hall shit. Was... Forge. They just they just started off yeah, standard. Just put a, yeah. yeah, and then you just drop a nexus behind it, and you're still protected. Yeah, yeah that that's one's... that's not yeah. actually a good map though. So. For for Protoss, yeah. this map. It's not that great. PVZ, like, the whole map is open, so whenever I want to engage a Zerg, there's going to be no concave for me, so that sucks. Um, for PVT, it doesn't look like an issue. There's not, like, the bases aren't ridiculous, so it's okay. It's not like Whirlwind, Actually, so that's good. Yeah, I, I banned that map as soon as I saw it. I was like, yeah. nope, not So happening. PVT should be fine. PVP has always been a fuckfest, so it's continued it to be a fuckfest, so it doesn't matter what map you play on, unless it's like, what was that map this season where it was, like, two force fields on the main ramp? Hall? Yeah, okay, I, I vetoed that. Yeah, fuck that map. <laughs> that map. You, can't, you can't even play PvP on that map. You just can't the play. first time I, I played on that map, I got 10 pulled, and I was like, well, there goes this map. I'm never gonna play on it. <laughs> how do you, wait, how do you lose to 10 pull on that map? Yeah, no, I was doing a 1 racks expand. This oh, was like the very beginning of that. That might do it. Yeah. <laughs> right. I played on that one in, in beta, and I just, I didn't believe that it was gonna become an official map. Like, I was like... There's no way. There's no way that they're gonna do this. And then it it came out on the ladder, and I, I don't yep. know. Uh, it, that was immediately on my ban list. Yeah. It, I would. I've refused to play it. I think I played like. What do you guys think about the next map? Um. Meyer. Hold on. Meyer. Uh, where do you spawn? Quick, quick where do you I hate spawn? the tile set. Is the issue? Do you spawn oh, at the top. It's like yeah, scratch. I feel like I have to spawn at the top. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, you spawn Wait, on is the that, tops. Is that a ground path between yes. the two? Yes, yeah. It's, it's a like, narrow ground path. So the idea is that you can put on early game aggression. So if you do like a six pool or a ten pool or whatever, you can run over. If you do like a two racks, you can run. You can run your reapers or marines wow. across. Wait, wait, wait. Are you are you sure about that? No, I've played yeah. on this map. Yes, it's, I'm a hundred percent sure. It's in the so, so you're saying the top left and 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 top right. Yes. Those are the two starting bases. Scrap station. I like played I said, it. I played it last night. That is like really. Well, I mean, those are bad. the most obvious ones to have. I mean, if you think about it, you can't spawn anywhere else yeah, without that, having that, like a immeasurably small rush distance. To be honest, like, I, like, I oh, thought it was there. gonna be the path is gonna be the like the bottom and the and the top. Just well, they, they wouldn't give you some low ground. They wouldn't put you in the low ground to start <laughs> not out. The, not the low ground. Imagine ground. that. The one, <laughs> the one like, starts on the high ground and then you start on the low ground. <laughs> <laughs> The one with the ground one in the middle, I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't like, like I'm it. I'm liking this map for Terran again. I feel like dangerous. you just take your third and be at your also, opponent's base already. I, right. This, yeah, this is a tough situation for Zergs because even if you're trying to like send roaches through that little, it's like you have like two bunkers with marauders in it. <laughs> Good luck. All right. Yeah, I'm, 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 doesn't wait? Doesn't I this map like break ZBZ there. completely? Possibly. Doesn't yes, just, that's exactly yeah. why it's going to be banned. Everyone yeah. knows how you play Zerg on this Because, map, yeah. like, Zerg has to see, oh, they're making links. Okay, I'll make links. But since the rush distance looks like it's, like, 20 seconds, you can't even play reactionary, so you just die. Yep. Well, yeah, it's going to be 10 pull versus 10 pull game. Or I mean, yeah, I think you can't even, yeah, you have to open, well, I don't know about 10 pull, but some kind of much earlier pool. You can't go hatch first on this map, obviously. Um, 10 pull is the safest. 10 pull is actually a macro build most of the time, so I think 10 pull will become the standard on this map. Yeah, you that's... make eight lanes well, and expand. I, I don't think this is gonna be a map that's gonna be in any tournaments anytime soon. No, so. I second Especially that. I think with... derelict might though. Especially with the muta versus muta that ZVZ kind of oh, evolved. I fucking well, hate that, dude. we can it's we can so move so... on to like what they were thinking about doing with that in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a topic. All right, let's just not talk about this map anymore. I don't even want to. <laughs> I don't even. I don't <laughs> even want to look at this. Disgusting. Like, all right, so, all right, all right. Next, Zerus looks... Prime. Is this four player? It's a uh, four player map. It's four player map. Okay, Zerus so yeah. Prime reminds me of Entomb Valley too much. Yeah. So this map is really rocks. gonna fuck Protoss players that have to deal with Muta. 
I feel, because you can just sort of jump into the main and then go right back down to the natural. Actually, whoa. And then no, there's, there's a huge gap of, of ground. Yeah. Between that. Like, I don't is, believe that's going to be, this gonna be I feel like this is going to be cross-only. There's no way it's not. Um, yeah, they, they, I don't think it matters. It's going to be all positions. Yeah, okay. all positions yeah. won't be too bad. I mean, like a three-base Protoss, it'll be really easy to take a third base, which is awesome. But I feel but... like vertical... What about vertical spawn rush distances? I feel like that's very small. It, nah, it, it's no. It's because of the that's way. That's a the pretty huge map. Well, think about it like this: there's a Zelnaga right in the middle of that. They wouldn't put a Zelnaga in a small area, so there's you no actually Zelnaga. have. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. there's Zelnagas right in the I middle, guess. right in those little. It's a very crevices where so there's lava. I like yeah, the thing is, is, is like there's only one ramp, so dealing like if if you're talking about like a Mortal Sentry, there's only one ramp, so it's going to be really easy to deal with the Mortal Sentry. It's actually I don't think you can a mortal sentry. No, there's two ramps. There's it's kind of like more a rocks on the other one. Well, if they get oh, okay. let's say you're on two base, they get up that uh, ramp. There's that. Tiny oh, okay, I didn't see that. Mortal sentry anymore anyway with swarm hosts. So oh, yeah, they can't. It's not smart. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm Zerg loses to Stargate openers. That's why Stargate openers are so popular. One because mutas are so popular. Uh, opening up with just a handful of phoenixes just kind of really discourages that. And then you can just kind of take a third with colossi under the phoenixes as long as you scout. They're going for hydras. Uh, I mean. Yeah. From that point, it's kind of, once you secure your third base and you have the force fields and you have the cannons up, I feel like Protoss is going to have a very strong situation as long as they scout, con constantly scout with mute, uh, with phoenixes. I mean, because mm -hmm. um, as long as you're nation. constantly scouting, or yeah, I mean, who's nation as well? But having mm -hmm. the phoenix, like the actual phoenixes out, are like for a zerg player, it's kind of like, eh, do I really want to go mutas right now? Because then he can just make more phoenix. Uh, yeah. And then of well, course, I mean. And my ladder, like, if I lose one Phoenix, they just automatically make, like, 50 Muta. So if I lose a Phoenix, I just go ahead and put down a Fleet Beacon and go Blind Muta, or Blind Phoenix, because it happens every game. Every single game I play. And I'm 1200 point master. you think they would not be so stupid, but it, they, they really are that stupid. <laughs> and they think that you've yeah, so never invested in the tech. Like, at, I mean, at that point, it's like, when you're scouting with your Phoenixes, like, even if you've been or on the map for, like, five minutes, you still have the Stargate. Like, you can still make more. People but, just don't I mean, realize if that. You, They're if like, you oh, lose all four just, Phoenix... Because most people don't do that. I think that's why. Well, no, I mean, if you lose all four Phoenix, you go Muta, like, you know... Oh. Uh, Leenok went Muta versus uh, Naniwa when he lost all four Phoenix. Like, it's an instant reaction. Like, you go Muta after Naniwa you... actually completely... I was like, N Nani... What, one Phoenix? Okay... What did you just do, Nanny? All four Phoenix. Yeah, I was like staring. I was like, Nanny, well, pull those Phoenix back. You only lost 20. He's like, okay, wait, you, you just lost two. Okay, please pull those Phoenix back. And I'm like, okay, now he's going Muta. And as soon as I said that, Spire went down. I was like, yep, yeah, he's going Muta. So you just can't lose all four Phoenix. or you're... I really do like the fact that you don't need to have Lair Tech to get Overlord Speed now, though, because that actually helps a lot with the Stargate openings. Just uh... like before, it was like, you can either have Map Vision and, if, like, if they decide to go Air, which they never fucking did, but if they decide to go Air, you're gonna lose all your overlords if they, if because most maps you kind of have an idea of where the Zerg's putting his overlords once you play the map enough, because there's yeah. areas you need vision on or at least like people put pylons there a lot so you can have an overlord near it, but I mean just get phoned. But now you just go through it and you're like, oh okay, they went Phoenix. All right, they're gonna go Air. Just get the overlord upgrade, and if you don't have Lair Tech yet, you're not completely screwed because that's like what another two and a half minutes before yeah. you have the upgrade. They they kind of balanced that a little bit with, uh, I think they made overlords, they made scouting a little bit easier, but they also yeah. upgraded the base, uh, well, base strength of most protest units. Like, Void Rays have more damage, and they have that against armored, so Roach attacks aren't as strong. Uh, and they upgraded Phoenix range, so against, like, Mutas or to do a little bit of harassment, that's a little bit better. But also they gave uh, Zerg the opportunities for Burrow and for Overlord Speed, which I like both because now you see a lot of two to three base timings from each race as opposed to... I'm gonna make Infestor Broodlords. Come at me, bro. Like, yeah. Uh, so that yeah. was just kind of getting a little bit stale. Yeah. So. Well, that's also why the Muta play is so popular with the Muta upgrade and the Infestor nerf on Fungal. Like, it's way harder to actually hit a Fungal on Mutas if the They're person is actually looking. Still very important, though. Yeah. 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 I mean, of course, Base you still have actually to get them. landing a Fungal impossible if the Mutas keep running. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, ZBZ. You just can't. You yeah. just ZBZ can't. Yeah, in ZBZ. Entire... We can That's go over it a little bit after the map. Hold on, so this map, I think, is actually kind of good for Protoss. It's kind of like in Tomb Valley. You can just take a super fast third safely. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you can, you, everyone's going to go six minute third on this map, like, unequivocally. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, I'm not playing yeah. this map. Because <laughs> it, it only has two ramps. <laughs> I'm yeah. not playing any of these. I don't what's going like to no, happen is you know, only Protoss are going to play this map, so this map is just going to be PvP, which you don't do that, so they're just gonna, actually, no one's going to play it. Not the yeah. greatest Stargate map. Uh, in PvP, I don't think because there's only like one angle you can attack in from, 
uh, on each side because you can kind of cover a lot. I actually don't know. It depends on how much surface area because sometimes, you know, if you try to come by the natural with like mutas or phoenixes, you can get hit by cannons or stalkers or whatever, but on some maps you can swing around behind. If, think at, the natural, if at the natural, you can get hit from the net if you can get hit from units at the natural, I don't think this will be a great Stargate map. If you can't, then Oracle's all day, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, so. That's just a the, uh, the Ohana rocks at the natural bother me because they're like a little bit, they're too far from the actual natural itself. So I feel like a lot of people are going to be breaking them. Well, just put a pile on there. I know, you put a pile on, but it, the distance is too much. Uh, no, I mean, I just mean, as, like, once you get your, your front wall up, you're going to have to put another pile on somewhere. Exactly. Just put one there. And if you spawn close, like, vertically, it's, you're not, it's Oh, I see what you're really saying, the vertical close. spawns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the main ramp and just forge fast expand there and just go triple nexus, and that's what I'm going to do. Because <laughs> then I, mean, I just put a cannon on the other is. ramp. Yeah. And then you're going to get six bull because it's a four-player map, and I hope you don't scout first. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Scout all three other bases first, but by the time but you I go, I go, there. like, forge first if I don't scout them first. Because it's the only safe way to play, so. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it looks okay. like it's tombs, to be completely honest. I guess. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna right, give guys, two maps a thumbs up. Chat's going crazy. Uh, apparently, vertical spawns are not allowed on that map, so. Oh. Okay. Good. A little bit of your concerns. Okay. All right, that's, fine. that's good. Wait, that's no good vertical? Stuff. What's the point yeah. of these watchtowers then? <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think they put them there? If there was vertical watch spawns, they'd be way too powerful. Uh, been like, trying to well, kill I guess all the watchtowers so you can see when they're coming in because there's only one path to get into your base, so you'll be able uh, to yeah, see that. I got you. Yeah, yeah. And Maybe it's better because I don't. The way unit stream, but... Well, I mean, watchtowers are pretty useless in ZPZ because Ling's reign supreme. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's like, just oh. too fast in ZPZ. It doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, you're like, oh, there's things coming. Good thing I don't have any fucking supply. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Screwed. You're like, I've got space for six links. It's more of a game sense oriented matchup than yeah. actually like scouting. It's yeah. like at this point, you can have mutas coming out, so I need to move my overlords. Like yeah. I need to have like four overlords on the map tops, and the rest of them come back to my base. And you can't have two players playing reactionary, or else nothing happens. There's just macro. <laughs> or it gets map. weird. <laughs> Wait, where's the uh, where's the balance notes? I can't find them. Uh, I don't think they were doing it. Go to the forums. It's going to be the very first. Well, it's not, it's not like it's not a patch, but it's proposed changes. Oh, okay. Here, I'll, I'll link it in Skype. I right. have it. I'm just transitioning right now. Link we're it, and yeah, we're just gonna transition. Just one put of these it in quick and dirty transitions. Mm, that's how I like it. So yeah, this is what I was really. This kind the of scares stupid. me. So they're like, okay, we're not gonna nerf widow mines or hellbats, and Fuck we're gonna yeah. we're gonna buff oracles, which they were already really powerful. <laughs> So I honestly don't get that. Like that. So that's the Protoss oracles, player there. Well, yeah, exactly. Oracle Even the Protoss them. knows that oracles are really powerful. Yeah, like. Are like, you are you more upset Widowmines. about the fact that Terran's not getting nerfed? Look, okay, look. Widowmines and Hellbats are overpowered. Okay, it's just. It is. <laughs> you can't argue that point. No, Widowmines. <laughs> Hellbats. Are Winter's done. Winter's just like. Nah, really no, I've, I've stopped using Hel uh, uh, Widowmines because they just keep on killing my units like, instead of my we, opponents. We had you <laughs> on last time or a couple yeah. of shows ago, and he was like, "Okay, Widowmine, uh, the the splash damage needs to be nerfed, and Hellbats are way too fucking good." So, I can't believe that they didn't at least talk about it. Yeah, Hellbats are a big problem. Hellbats, I don't understand how they can go from a mechanical unit in a Hellion to a biological unit that can be healed yeah, by a I fucking think. medevac. Like, what the so hell are you thinking? Does it, does it have that's to make crap. sense, though? Like, it doesn't really have to Like, make that's sense. bullshit. It's I'm it's... trying to kill you with Zerglings here. I can't do it if you're fucking healed. Could they just, could they just stay it. bio the entire time? I mean, I, I'm fine with that. If it doesn't make sense as it is, let's just no, that's add not bio. Out of the barracks, not the I think it should factory. be mechanical. I think their tone and back their back damage back. is too much for just being a mineral unit. They need to but cost then we, need, we need the science vessel back. Yeah. No, it, it, you just need to nerf the, the damage between. a little bit. No, no, the the it's going to do that much damage, it needs to cost costs. gas. No, just make the switch between Hellion and Hellbat cost gas. That way, Exactly. Like, no, not just the upgrade, the switch. Make it like 50 gas to actually yes, switch, switch between. I don't, but I, I, don't, I don't even make Hellions. I just purely make Hellbats. I don't even use the switch. I don't even upgrade it. That's yeah, when it comes out, no one, no one gets gas. the Transformers or whatever it's called, yeah. because Hellbats are just better than Hellions. I think if they, one, can't be healed by Metavex, uh, and two, I'm thinking possibly like they get a reduced benefit from upgrades, because right now, if you get a plus one upgrade, they two-shot drones. Uh, so if you, they don't benefit as much from upgrades, they make it so it takes more shots to kill drones, maybe. Maybe reduce the radius of the splash? I don't know. 
I thought they would still two shot drones. They do nineteen damage. Drones are yeah. Drones die thirty five health, right? No, forty. Oh, it's forty. Okay. It's forty. Health. So if they so have they plus need... one, they two shot. Yeah, if okay. they don't, then otherwise they just bring we'll get them plus back. Yeah. Get, get your plus one characters, and then and it solves <laughs> it. It solves it. It solves problems. I saw. I saw TPZ guys. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Isn't Holt like he's doing the very popular on rush one armor build? <laughs> right. Get that as soon as possible. <laughs> Burrow, fuck Burrow. It's I mean plus you, one armor. 50 you don't need Burrow. Um, don't even take a third. Get that Evo up and get that plus one. You need it as get soon as possible. Don't, don't even make units. Like, not link speed. Not anything this. else. Just plus one carapace. Yeah. All right. By the way, mass banshee. Like oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because but it's he good has against mass banshee. Made was hell bats. It's, but yeah, that it's, it's just good against mass banshee because you've got the plus one carapace. It's gonna you're gonna take less damage from each banshee shot. You're okay. Yeah. You're fine. Or I'll just get a Viking and shoot down all your overlords. <laughs> Rude. And Rude. and the next thing that really worried me was burrow cost and or okay, research that's not, time that's down. Not going through. That's not going burrow through. Burrow cost like, will not. Oh, that's not because that I mean the whole yeah. like early burrow was already really powerful. Like you could do a roach rush and then burrow the roaches as you're doing the roach rush, and then it was like really already really strong. And now they're buffing it, yeah. and I don't, I don't get that at all. Uh, let me, get, let me ask you guys a question. What do you guys think of um, of ultras? Ultras they're are fine. Oh, where did that come from? <laughs> that just, I don't know where. What? Ultras are no, fine. I'm reading, I'm reading the chat. Oh, that's because last night Toon lost to ultras going mass marine. Probably that's probably why they're asking that. Uh, well, yeah, ultras are unit in like in theory. I think. Let's think about. What the current metagame is, though, uh, PVZ, Sky Toss, TVZ, it's a very heavy drop play, which means you're trying to pick the Zerg apart and you're using Widow Mines. Widow Mines, not good against Ultras. Marauders, not that good against Ultras. Mass Bile, not that good against Ultras. It's forcing, right now, the way Ultras work are forcing the other races to kind of either go for compositions that just can't keep compete on the ground uh, or force the Zerg to multitask. And I kind of like that. Like in TVZ, if you just let them kind of sit back and get Mass Ultra, it's kind of the new Broodlord and Fester. If you sit back yeah. and yeah. let them get it, that's my problem. This is, this is my only problem with Ultras is that if you get Ultras with like two or three Infestors and just like five Queens, and you just transfuse the crap out of them, you can't kill them. It's impossible. Honestly, the, also, be the best matchup I found, even just today, I was telling Tomb earlier, was that doing Roach Hydra in ZBT, like Roach, Roach Hydra, and you throw in like maybe 10 Banelings, like nothing special, just like 10 Banelings. Bio Hell it's beats fucking that. terrifying for a Terran. Really like, true. I haven't had a Terran just engage me yet. Like, they see it and they're like, okay, you yeah, know, I, I can kill a little bit of that. You just start shooting them down, and they see the Banelings running forward, and they have to try to kite you. And you're just shooting them as they kite because you're ranged. You're not melee, so you can't kite a ranged unit. They're just, just is, scared of the melee. This is why medevac speed exists. I was watching, uh, I believe, like a example of this, uh, Flash versus Soul Key in the GSL, in the last GSL group. Flash, at no point, as soon as he started getting close to max, he never did one big frontal attack so that Soul Key could just crush it. He'd do little attacks. He'd send a drop in the main, so it's like, oh, you have to split some of your units off. If at one point he commits too little to defending one of his bases, or too little to defending <laughs> against the drops, then Flash just does damage on one angle. Uh, and eventually Soul Key kept having to decide, do I bring my Ultras back to my main to make sure drops do zero damage, or do I actually attack with the Ultras into Whittle Mines, where they'll eventually whittle them away? Um, and sometimes the Ultras will push it back, but in that case, Flash would just up the drop. So Terran is no longer kind of, especially when they're going for bio, I don't really think you can any longer just be like, I have my army, let's fight. You're like, I need to put my army yeah. here, here, and here uh, in order to make sure that he doesn't have one big army that can just roll over mine. Um, I agree. But if they get yeah. that momentum, then the yeah. Zerg at this point will win in the metagame. Um, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like Bio Hellbad can just beat that straight up, and and maybe it's just because what I do is I just load. I'll just like throughout the game, I'll just constantly be taking two medevacs, loading four Hellbats in, and just going and pulling you know everything out of position, like like kind of what you were saying with Flash was doing, but you know, and a little bit just more for the sense of killing drones more than uh, you know well, making them. That's a completely back, but... different issue. That just is Hellbats being broken. That's not. No, but they're forced. They're forced in the same sense. Like you can never. Like I'm all over the map all the time. It doesn't matter. Like, right, but if it was a normal drop, they wouldn't care, but it's four Hellbats, so they, they know that they don't, if they don't deal with that, they're about to lose, like, you know, 30 drones, yeah. so they have to... <clears throat> yeah, and so even so, I mean... As soon as like you I make was... Widow Mines and Hellbats, it guarantees damage, because as soon as you drop them in the middle line, the Zerg has to react, or the Protoss yeah. has to react, and they're going to lose mining time, and they're going to lose a lot of it, because Hellbats are really strong. And if the Widow Mines, they lose really all of the workers. 
with a yeah, guarantee exactly. game. The amount of games I've won thanks to Hero Widowmines is just... Yeah, just that's another thing. Yeah. Widowmines, I don't think it's... Like, speed medevacs are fine. Terran needs speed medevacs. But Widowmines, the splash radius, is ridiculous. It's just... It is. They can kill every Sick single probe on the mineral line. I've, I've, I've killed 30 probes with one shot. 30. Yeah, it, it's just stupid. It really is just stupid. They yep, need yeah. to buff the splash radius to something that isn't so retarded. Or make them not cloaked when they burrow, because they stick out of the ground. Well, no, they yeah, need to be. be awesome. I think they need to be cloaked, yeah. but I I mean, they know. just Terran shouldn't just do so much goddamn damage. Terran yeah. has a huge advantage when it comes to widow mines because our workers have forty-five health, and the widow mine splash is forty. Yeah, Terran so you is think about against Terran. Like, yeah, exactly. So mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly mm -hmm. what it's become. Like PVP was always Maybe? just a fucking knife fight, or excuse me, uh, what was it? The roll of dice was was ZVZ. The knife fight was pr PVP, or no, ZVZ, and then TVT was the chess game, but. You just like you can't make every single mirror match just terrible and like impossible I, to deal with. I love PvP right now. It's so like you can play standard and you're fine. Yeah, like, I, have a, I, mean, I have a build. I guess it's now fine. they've changed it. I, mean, I don't PvP play Earth House anymore. No, no I mean PvP makes it standard. Mirror yeah. matchups. Yeah, mirror matchups are fine for me. The Mothership PvP Core just kills everything. It's so. Yeah, Mothership Core just shut PvP. down everything. Like when it comes to early game rushes. The thing about yeah. PvP is there's a lot of Protoss players that just use Protoss as a crutch, and they don't really learn mechanics at Masters level, so they get to PvP and they just all in. And as long as you you know what you're doing, you can hold their all ins and then you'll be fine. Because I don't, I barely have any Protoss players go past one base when I play them. Yeah. So do you do you open up Stargate most of the time? Yeah, I go Stargate Oracle, and then if they go one gate, I go Phoenix, and if they go two gate pressure, I stay in my base and go Void Rate just in case it's like a blink all in. And I I win like so many of my PVPs yeah. because the mothership core buys enough time to get like a void ray or two out and then yeah well, no, what do you really do that, against like, voiders? Once you have one void ray, I mean you can pull probes because you're so far ahead in probes, and then you'll just yeah. have a void ray. It's... That's what oracles for, yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I just I, I kind of want to take that bet to the oracle change. I don't if they're gonna change the oracle speed. What I would like to see because right now oracles die really easily, which is their fragility is the thing. Honestly, I wouldn't mind it being more of a change like the Reaper. Like, they up its health a little bit, but maybe they make it take three shots to kill a worker or something like that. So if it's faster, it has more health, so it's more survivable. Maybe it doesn't die in one Widowmine hit, but it also doesn't, like, oh, you weren't paying attention to your uh, mineral line for five seconds? Well, there goes half your mining. So, I don't know, maybe a change like that allows you to, like, react a little bit more than just kind of have a counter. Because um, I really like that about the Reaper. Maybe they did it a little bit too much with the Reaper because Reaper is fanned as viable in every matchup right now. Yeah, that's um, nice. But I don't yeah. know. What, what, what do you guys think about that? <laughs> no, Reaper expand yeah, became the new one racks expand. Like that's just what happened. Yeah, I, I think that people that still go one racks expand just they simply don't understand. Like you can get full scouting on Protoss with one Reaper, and you can always scout if they're going like Dark Shrine drop or whatever they're doing. So you should never go one racks fast expansion ever, because Reaper builds just superior. Yeah. I can see Reaper just being yeah, strong I, in every matchup. Like I said, I only played Zerg, so I'm not sure, but I guess Winter would be the one to ask. I mean, Reaper expand and TVZ, it's kind of the same. You can get a Reaper in well before a Queen comes out in, uh, if you're going hatch first. So you get in, you see the gas, you maybe pick off or harass a drone or two. Usually they'll just pull it back and like make it into a gas geyser or something. If You're lucky if you kill more than one drone. Um, yeah, usually the standard build... The no, standard build... Yeah, because the the standard build in TVZ right now is is not just to make one Reaper though. You come in with two or three, and then with a yeah. bunch of Hellions also. It's never just a one Reaper expand. It's become TVZ, a really greedy three yeah, but the, flash build. But the TVZ Reapers aren't like necessarily there for for damage. They're there to scout. I mean, that's really yeah. what they're, they're that's, trying to that's do. That's that's the basis of the things. entire build. Yeah. 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 They only go, uh, only Terrans, if they, they use their Reapers to scout, if you scout, they're not going for a Roach Warren or for like a Banding Bust or something. They add on the Hellions so that way they can harass the Creep Spread, and that buys time because you see so many Terrans going for 3cc. The Hellions uh, and the Reapers just keep the Lings away because, of course, uh, Terran players, I'm sure you've seen, like, he sees them going Reapers, he just made like 50 Speed Lings and counterattacked. Uh, but the Hellions are what prevent that when you're going for 3cc. So that's mm -hmm. kind of the standard, but uh, right now... I mean, I was trying to like get an opinion on oracles. Maybe if they made a change like that, how do you think that would affect um, like PvP? They, can, they can't buff oracles. It would fuck the game. I mean, like you, it breaks. It's I think not it a breaks. Buff, it's a chain. They already kill. No, they already no, kill. No, it, it is a buff. If you can what go you faster, want? you can micro around units that are chasing you. Like I can get away from a phoenix. That breaks PvP. 
Like, and if you if you look at PVT uh, against the Terrans, I mean, they're already killing a ton of Marines. And even if you reduce the amount of damage, they're already just destroying them. And if they're moving faster, you already have uh, Terrans who misunderstand how they have to micro against it. Even at a I don't, I don't even feel it's going to be a problem for Terran just because a missile turret in, in, in two play like if you get two missile turrets in your main and but the, a missile turret is your natural. The problem is fine. is the proxy Phoenix. So you don't you don't uh, always pick up on the scout on it. So you true. you can make the missile turrets in in your base. And if you're reacting to Proxy Phoenix, and it ends up being a Proxy Void Ray 3-gate all-in... The thing about instead, proxies is they're not in their base, so you can scout them, though. Is yeah, I mean, if you're dying yeah, to a no, proxy... I, that's, I send out at least, at least one, maybe, maybe two every game. Depends on what my Reaper yeah. sees. Yeah. Like, you, with your Reaper, you can see, oh, hey, he doesn't have a third pylon. He's proxying. Or, yeah, or look for the proxy. I, I've, I've seen Protosses who just don't take a third pylon and then just expand. At tw like, they stay at 26 supply for 30 seconds. I'm like, oh, well, they're proxying me. And then well, yeah, just that, that, like, you can do that, but you can't have a second gas. So, that's... Yeah, if they have two gas, uh, and or no third pylon, and or not going for a mothership core first, then it's like, well, where are you doing? What are you doing with your gas right now? Yeah, uh, yeah. Kind of have to. It's kind of more of an intuitive thing. You can't always know there's a proxy, but, but you should at least scout for it because some of the games you're gonna find a proxy and it's just an auto win. So you just you know you just get a widow mine in position or you have yeah. a phoenix out or something like that, and then suddenly there's nothing. So, I mean, it's it's kind of tough to, like, balance things around things like that, because strategies that can just be scouted. I don't care if an Oracle, once it gets into your middle line, it launches an instant nuke and it kills all your workers. If you scout the proxy, then you can probably get something out to kill the Oracle in time. Um, but just as, let's, uh, I think when going over changes like this, we have to more kind of take into account what would happen, how would this allow the metagame to develop, how would this allow one race to transition against another uh, when they're using a strategy as opposed to, Will this just kill people that aren't prepared for it? Because most proxies will. Yeah. <clears throat> That's kind of the idea of the proxies. If they had another 20 seconds, they would have been fine. But since it's closer, they don't. Yeah, it's literally like 20 seconds. So. Yeah, and if yeah. they speed up the Oracle, I don't even know why you would proxy. Because, I mean, it's so fast now. Why? I mean, it's like, what, 10 seconds difference if they speed up the... Because they already go across the map so fast. Mm -hmm. I don't even yeah. know why you would proxy Oracle, to be honest. I, like, well, I guess you proxy the Stargate so that you can get the Oracles out. It's not for the benefit of the Oracle. It's just it's also, for the benefit of the Void Ray next or anything like that. Yeah. Like, if you're going to 3-gate all in after the Oracle, if it does enough damage, then at least your Void Ray's right there. So It also hide, helps hide the tech. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I think, like, if you're playing at a Master's level, you should know that, hey, he doesn't have a third pylon. I'm waiting at his expansion. He doesn't have a Nexus. Okay, he's obviously proxying me. Like, it's 100% he's proxying me. Like, he... Right. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone knows that. Now. It's not. It's, he's not it's hiding the, the tech by proxying it. It's, it's just, such a. It's such a common can, opening that everybody knows that that's the right. case. Right. But what I'm saying is that once he starts getting the stalkers out onto the map, that he can deny the scouting on it. Right. But I mean, yeah. like, if you didn't take a third pylon and I waited at your nexus, because Sage takes a fast nexus and then goes third pylon and mothership core. I mean, if you can scout the nexus timing and know it wasn't, you know, before four minutes, then you that's, know it's proxy. That's why the Reaper is so great, is because you can just keep it around. <laughs> yeah. You should not lose your Reaper to a Stalker. Can we just establish that now? Like, no. a, a yeah. Reaper first, you should not lose to a Stalker. <laughs> no, we shouldn't lose it to a Queen yeah. either. Like, I've had yeah, so many like... Terrans, like, it just, they just like, fly their Reapers in and get behind my mineral line or something like that in my main. I'm like, cool, you just fucked yourself because there's one way out of here and I have two Queens. Like, they, you're they, not going to They butter them up before they get them out of the barracks there. That's why it takes so long. But Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, okay, can get a, you can get a Reaper to a base before Queens get out, even if, if you hatch first. Like, yeah, Queens will get out like 15 seconds later. I need to go look at those balance changes again. Oh, I burrow? Yeah, I just, too, right? Oh, I don't like these. Just in general, the burrow movement you said wasn't going to happen, right? Yeah, the burrow's not going to happen. Yeah, no, there's no way. There's no way. Wait, here's... here's we we kind of glazed over. There's That was under the... They, I'm sure they formatted that much better to draw the eye. But here's the thing they were actually talking about. Main thing we're hoping to address is soon the Ling, Mata, Ling Muta strategy in TVZ. Um, they're thinking about Hydralisk anti-air damage increase, plus bio to spore crawlers... Um, and they're trying to get more infestors into it. So, wait, plus what to spore crawlers? Uh, more does damage. extra damage to bio? Oh, so wait, 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 wait. Is anti-air damage because since Colossus is considered it's only is versus, biologic. No, no, it's versus bio? I would, air. I'd assume that it's oh, okay. versus bio air because yeah, it's only, basically they don't need because it. Muta. ZVZ, ZVZ Muta is just so fucking stupid. It's a race to see who can get to like twenty Muta's fastest and just. All right, yeah, that's fine. As long as it doesn't do more damage to my Colossus, I don't think that's the right way to do it. This is ZVZ. I don't think you can. I don't think you can oh. add bio damage because I think that once the right number of mutas come out, they ignore spore, spore crawlers anyway. 
I mean, you could I add think, more damage to it, but uh, you're just going to lose. Well, it, that's if they've already got the right well, number that's like of saying, meters. But... That's like saying turrets also do nothing if they just get big enough numbers. It's also a deterrent. Well, they do. I mean, th that's true. Though. No, 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 because, Look at, first of all, they're, they're losing money in trading. If, sure, if sure. They're, they're losing if they're money, trading with your turrets, they're, they're losing more money. Base, Look at Gumiho versus Jadong today. When Jadong went up to the ridiculous number of mutas that he went to in game two, he went over and he was killing turrets, and then he didn't care if they were getting repaired or not. He's do it. He's able to just do damage to those turrets and to the, and he'll target down the SCVs that surround the turrets and kill off the SCVs. I mean, you can't you can't say that because I mean, well, Gumio yeah. just let him get to that point where he, he had. To, yeah, and I'm not, not saying that it's, it's not, that's not that's not a standard thing that's. But it happens static defenses in ZVZ, are not though. the solution. Static, right. static defenses are not the solution. In my opinion, spore crawler damage is already really good to prevent you from. Like, it takes four shots to kill a meter right now. That's not very... Um, so if they're going to ignore the spores, it doesn't really matter. They're already at that meter count. I think the Hydralis AA might be something. Um, honestly, I would like to see... Uh, it's it's so hard to say. Like, maybe... <laughs> That's the only way to fix meter. No, yeah. you can't. No, no, no. Not, you can't rebuff the infestors. Enough. You can't do that. You can't rebuff the infestor because then it fucks up the, 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 the matchup for Protoss and Terran. But just giving, like, even I was talking to Tim yesterday about it, and he was like, okay, so a splash damage versus bio on spore crawlers. That okay. would give a fucking big incentive to not or, <clears throat> not just try to target down some guys. Hold on, crawlers. hold on. Here's a crazy thought. How about <clears throat> since mutas were already a great harass unit in Wings of Liberty, how about we just not fucking buff mutas for no reason in Heart of the Swarm? Yeah. How about that? I think they've already done that. And <laughs> or, I mean, even without the buff, there's The still reason why the buff was implemented was because of medevac speed. Also, right, I mean, but they can not give it so much regeneration. Like, if I storm a muta, like if it just goes away for a little bit, like my storm meant nothing. Like it just there has to be more of a consequence. I disagree it, with nerfs. Just I, in in. in I <laughs> disagree with nerfs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. go ahead, Wendy. Don't I'm nerf, nerf buff, but yeah, buff this, areas that can can be buffed. Right? I'm about to go on a full on meta game rant with like all the races involved. It'll probably take a little bit, but all right, my okay, body is ready. All right, all right, I'm glad I'm glad you prepared yourself for this. But okay, what is the Mutalisk? It is my favorite unit in StarCraft. Why? Because it's fast, it regenerates, uh, it gets in where it can do damage, but it also dies very easily to dozens of this and things. I know people will disagree there. Uh, but the Mutalisk, it's going on the style that Blizzard was trying to implement for Zerg in Heart of the Swarm. They're trying to bring that, that swarmy aspect of like, I'm going to make a bunch of units, I'm going to attack like different places at once, I'm going to crush things before you get a decent army, before you have the ability to just make cannons everywhere, or make turrets, or make spore colors everywhere. Uh, and that, the Muta, fe the Muta feels very Zergy. Uh, it just, <laughs> it, it, very arbitrary term is Zergy here, but I, I like the way the Muta is right now because it has that feel to it. What are the issues with it? And <clears throat> when, when you're facing in in ZVZ relevantly, it's since it's so good, there are no other units to contest it, and that's the issue here. But the reason in ZVP it's good and why it needs to be the same, and in ZVT are the same, because once you get to a maxed out army, a muta is not a useful addition over 80% of the time. Sure, there are niche situations where like the Protoss is desperately trying to max out whatever they can, or the Terran is really focused on drops, you need to deny that. But if you're fighting 200 v 200, in the late game, a muta is not helpful. And if they're slow, and if they don't regenerate, I, by not helpful, of course, I mean, like, it's not a cost-effective unit most of the time against late game compositions. But if they're slow, slower and they don't regenerate, then mutas are not going to be able to get in and do the economic and harassment damage that they need to do in order to prevent that late game of composition from happening, assuming you got there. Um, but w how would I change ZVZ? Ron, tell me. I'm not, Even I don't though know. it's not relevant. I'm, I'm just raising my hand very politely, Mr. Winter. I, <laughs> I just want to get, um, just the point is that well, whenever I'm playing against a Zerg player who went muta, what you'll see is them just trading away the mutas for, for better, co yes. more cost-efficient units in the late game. You don't see them. The, you, the mutas come into effect until they have enough money to replace them with something better. So. That's the entire point, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. that's not what the metagame is in ZVZ, which is, I don't have enough mutas yet. That's I don't have enough problem. mutas yet. That oh, I have, a bunch of, I have a bunch of minerals. Let's just make fucking 900 lings it's a i know it's a big number but just make as many as i can and then you know what i feel like morphing them all into bane links let's do that it's like ugh, okay when you're already struggling or however many i mean you basically have to get either a perfect bane link hit and have your investors ready with hydra support behind it to because they're gonna split their fucking mutas and you're not gonna be able to just like one fungal the entire pack so 
especially with the volleyball that you have to throw now, it's not an instant cast. So they have do split you? mutas, nothing but lings. You, it's just it's too complex, and you can't do it unless you just do the exact same build and hope you have more. Do you like, give it's just stupid? This this might be a situation. Do you give infestors like another ability where it's super fungal growth? I don't know. I'm not good at names. Where it's like <laughs> this. It costs 75 energy, but it only does like damage to bio air or something like that, and it does like. Uh, 80 damage or something like that. Something that like two will kill a muta as opposed to that. I don't know if that's a solution. I also I, I also heard bad. the difference I, would be that you still can't land it because I'm sure it's not going to be an instant cast thing. So I'm mean, just going off of what you're saying. I mean, well, obviously, I doubt this will ever happen, but you'd have to make it an instant cast, and you'd have to make sure that I mean, if it, it like maybe have a bigger radius so that splash is irrelevant as well. Because like I said, they split, and if you split 60 ooh. mutas, then it doesn't matter if I kill 30 of them. You still have 30 mutas in the air, and I'm fucked. Yeah. So you I'm, have to have a better splash damage benefit to some type of unit, whether it's a spore crawler or extra damage for the hydras, so they can maybe three or four shot mutas instead of what like eight shot or six shot them. Like it's it's just not efficient because mutas can just bouncing glaive every single hydra, and you have thirty hydras there versus thirty mutas, you're probably also, gonna lose. Also, something I saw someone suggest is like give Hydras a concussive shell type of anti-air deal so when they hit a Muta, not only will they be sure to kill it because it can't escape, and also it doesn't get as close as quickly. Uh, that might That's make it harder to fungal. Cool. But that way it doesn't, like, it's only against bio and it's only against anti-air. Of course, this is getting very specific, but that's what they're trying to address. Or... That way, because that way, if, like, oh, suddenly, like, sit to your mutas get hit by the concussive shell, maybe they turn and fight. They're forced to turn and fight, or else they just lose six mutas for free. So it's kind of like the, uh... The idea of, uh, is it like a taunt? So, like, you get hit and you have to turn around and fight, or at least, like, yeah, it's your and also it makes it, it keeps more mutas locked in, like, an area you could possibly fungal, too. Yeah. Uh, it's like a, it pretty much exactly like concussive shell, except for anti air against bio. Yeah. Hell, just fucking say against mutalis. I don't care. Why is that? Why is that such an issue to say, like, this does more damage against this unit? I don't really know why that. But hasn't the meta of CVZ always been to mass a single unit back? I think in Wings of Liberty before, you know, infestors were really discovered, it was mass roach, and no one was really complaining back then. What, I, as someone who doesn't play Zerg, what, what is the problem with Muta versus Muta? I don't Muta know. I extremely it. It's low. just, it makes you want to blow your brains out. It's They're very, very stupid, fast. I, it's like it's Ling versus Ling, up. and they, and they're, they're nasty. I mean, you've, you've encountered... 30 to 40 plus counts of muta in, in TVZ, right? I mean, like, where they get that, that huge muta composition. It's that feeling where you're just, you're trying to move out. You Whatever whatever composition that you do is not going to be good enough because they don't have marines. They're not going to be able to just shoot down clouds yeah. of mutas. So yeah. what what do they have? They have hydras, which are I, terrible. I mean, I mean they're I the worst like... unit in the game until you get the speed. And then... Um, yeah, and even if you go for the speed first, you, then you don't have the range, so you can't hit them anyway. Right, right. I, I, okay, so so from what I'm understanding, is that the problem is not the muta itself. It's that once you get ahead in ZVZ, you're automatically going to have more mutas. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. Always. And, always, always. And, and, and that's basically the end of the game. Am I yeah, once, right you, once you get a little yeah. bit ahead, you can't yep. lose. It's, no it's because the units it's are so mobile that even if like you're a little bit out of position... Like, with Roach versus Roach, if you're out of position, their Roaches get in there, and you're not going to be able to recover in time because they're ground units. They're not flying over anywhere. Mutas can be across the map and back in, like, 20 seconds. So, yeah. it's it's you can recover. If you're ahead, you can compound. It's like compound interest. Every time you're ahead, every time you take a fight, you'll have more and more Mutas, or you'll have more and more links. Yeah. And it's very difficult to actually recover from yeah. that and even and in, yeah. Even in the There's harassment time. aspect in ZVZ, like, even if you're not doing straight-up fights where you have 20 versus 15 or whatever, and you're trying to micro back and forth, like on what was that map, Corhall City that we were talking about earlier, where you have the in base expansion. Like your third base that has the rocks at it, you can take that one as your third, or you can take the one that's down your ramp underneath your uh your natural. <coughs> but if you do that, number one, it's way harder to defend. But the third base expansion that has the rocks next to it, you just can fly from was it like three different directions into that. They can fly over that big high ground wall that no one can get to, it's just like buildings. They can just fly over, snipe anything going to it or coming away from it and then fly away, and if you if they go there and you're like, oh, I gotta go engage them because they're gonna kill my stuff, you go down there to that third, and they just fly over the big air gap and land back at your main, which is fucking annoying, especially in ZBZ, because like Tomb said, they just degaff spore crawlers. They're like, oh, you have five spore crawlers here? Good thing I have 35 mutas. Just target them all down, or just fly over them and snipe your spire. 
which is worth like three or four mutas to them because you snipe a spire and then they know that you're fucking you're done you lost you, you can't snipe win a spire you can't win yeah. yeah and another thing with mutas is if you go muta and the other player decides to go hydra for defense you're automatically giving up map control and in zvz map control is extremely important because yeah. if if you don't have map control you don't get to have bases so you automatically fall behind so Exactly. Against a muta player, you're never going to win if you go Hydra because you cannot take your third base. They will not let you. It's impossible. Exactly. Yeah, while they're exactly. taking their fourth and fifth and how many yeah. they want before they come and decide to kill you. Yeah, I mean, generally, exactly. I mean, you, if you think they're going mutas and you're like, okay, I'm going to go Hydras instead, which is I'm guilty of doing that for the first couple weeks of HOTS and more recently up until about a week ago, I would just try to go mutas and infestors and just get as many as I could because I didn't want to go muta because I think it's a broken unit since Wings of Liberty. Like, even when they patched it and fixed it and made everybody else easier to deal with it and there was different strategies, I still hated Muta. Like, I played Protoss and then I switched to Zerg, still don't go Muta. Now I'm being forced to, and I don't know the builds and I don't know, like, all that shit because I never did it. So it's like, it's just, <clears throat> it's too difficult to well, figure all I that mean, out, and it's so volatile because you can just lose, like, one too many Mutas and then you're just fucking done. Like, that's it. Oh, you lose. That's, yeah, I don't think. We just we gotta stop like moving saying muta versus muta is the issue. It's the issue is matchups where if you, there's no way to recover, it's very difficult. It's possibly the hardest unit composition to ever come from behind with like a smart move or a smart tactic because it's a numbers game. So yeah, they could hold you into it. Just though, with the be, besides moving moving forward, how do we? How would you or would we or would Blizzard? make it less of a numbers game and make it more of a situation where the smarter player, um, <coughs> even if they get a little bit behind, can bring it back. I think uh, the Scourge would be, be the right answer. And I think yeah, the Scourge fixes all their problems. I think that uh, if you look at... Well, look look at the ground army issue that we had in ZVZ, right? Look, or would be an issue without Banelane. So if you look at if if you look at ZVZ in the early game, especially Wings of Liberty and, and without the Muta versus Muta, because that wasn't a big thing in, in ZVZ, mostly because of Fester, but... The ground armies are equalized by one good Baneling hit. You could be you could be way way behind. You know you got up lings late or uh, speed late, and they crushed you with you know thirty five lings in your base, and you only had twelve. And then all of a sudden, that one Baneling hit puts you back into the game that you. That's have kind of lost. the same argument with fungal though, because the best players will not ever lose their lings to a Baneling like that. Like. It just doesn't happen at the pro right, level. Right, just I like mean, they won't lose their mutas to a fungal. Stuff like that. But it's it's that tool that allows for the better player to win. So in that case, you know, the best players aren't going to lose it, but I don't know. I, I don't think they should change anything because I don't like Zerg and I think they should have to suffer if he's evil. <laughs> so I don't I mean That's a horrible thing to say. It's evil. <laughs> Terrible. It's messed up. I, I I actually have like a seventy four percent win rate right now in Z V D so I'm not really complaining. Yeah, um, ZVZ is a good matchup for me. Though. I mean, if you're, if you're a macro <laughs> like player, your ZVZ is going to be your matchup. So, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, that's not necessarily true in, I want to say, like, all leagues. It's like, no one gives a shit about, like, the super low leagues. But, like, I would consider Diamond the top of the super low leagues, and that's where I am. So, I'll take that for what it's worth. But it's just, it's still Winning incredibly the annoying. Olympics over here. <laughs> hey, exactly, man. <laughs> I'm the best at something. And if that's being special, then I'm fine with that. You play Protoss, but, right? No, I play Zerg. I used to play Protoss. Oh, and oh, I switched okay. to Zerg. What a manly uh, man. I'm right. You're all alone here, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So you switched from <laughs> I'm Protoss. I'm one third to... there. When did you switch to Zerg? When did I switch to Zerg? Uh, probably 2012, like January. So, so not so like Zerg, like before, over a year. Way before Hots. Okay. Oh, right. yeah, way before Hots. No, no, no. This was back right. when I, like, it was probably, like, I don't know when the game released, but it was, like, a couple years after that uh, because I was tired of Mutas. I think I just explained that, too. Maybe yeah, I Was that right after I... the. Pat the Queen buff? <laughs> I think it's right around the Queen buff. Yeah, right, right around the Queen buff. buff is no, Phoenix a patch Zerg? No, I was actually playing <laughs> Zerg for a while, and then that Queen buff came out, so you could actually... I looked at it as you can actually hit a Hellion from the other side of a hatchery, and it was amazing. So that was fun. With, that, but, with the long, le yeah, long well, arms actually animation? Instead of, like, just walk around shit, I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> never hit this Hellion for the life of me. Yeah, after uh, that Queen buff, I just quit Terran completely, so... Well, <laughs> and yeah. honestly, that's, that's the spirit. Like, <laughs> I can't win, so I'm going to switch. <laughs> I mean, it, it just Well, yeah, I looked easy. at it as like, that's why I switched to Zerg. Because I was like, oh, with Zerg, you can fungal things. or you have other units that actually hit the air. But with Protoss, I just had the hardest time getting up like a macro base. Like a macro, macroing and getting up bases so that I could 
have stalkers out in time or get storm out in time to deal with mutas because there was that two base all in timing of mutas and I was just getting boned. I was like, all right, I'm done. Um, this was right before the Forge Fast expand became popular, so hmm. whenever that was. Um, you could have defined the meta there, but <laughs> you just didn't take that opportunity. I don't know but, what yeah. was just said. So, wait, yeah, I mean, if you if you want to get to Master League faster, Phoenix, I would suggest switching your turn. Oh, yes. I don't know about that. One second, I'm gonna put a link out in the chat for you. I think. Um, no, I mean seriously, like I this. think the right answer is to go Zerg. I think that's where it's at. No, 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 no. Terran is by far the best race right now. Who just now. won this last MLG and who just? Yeah. Wait, but Terran's and... lost to some really stupid shit, man. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. If they, they, if they played the macro games. Shit. No, in a macro game, like Terran is a really, really good race. But against Once again, like I'll Proxy, go back to Oracle, or, Oracle busts and like cheese. No, no, no. Yeah, right <laughs> that. Three CC. No, I... Yeah, I completely understand that, but like with destroyed. with Zerg, I understand the matchup of like the matchups rather like in all three except for ZVZ right now because it's infuriating. But with that, like I know what to do versus Protoss, and I know what to do versus Terran. If I played Terran, like I don't even know how many fucking barracks I can afford on one base. Like, what's too many? <laughs> what, what, when am I boned? Like, <laughs> how many can I afford? Like, I would be starting back at like silver, and I can't do that to myself. Like, no. No, because I'd be losing to like gold level players. Is that a seven? Are you holding up no, seven? No, Terran, Terran build orders are really simple. That's it's eight? just the micro that you need. Yeah. Yeah, and so I, I have definitely. The micro, like, I mean, uh, if you, you can learn ZVZ, you can micro units. Well, I mean, yeah. If you can't, if you can't like split this... marines, then don't play Terran. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> let me let me find my high horse again. Um, <laughs> as someone who's like, I'm like fourteen, fifteen hundred as random right now, just like straight up random. Playing GMs and stuff in every matchup. I think I must say this: Terran is the hardest to control overall. For like, if you don't have experience with Terran, the mechanics are the hardest. The micro is the hardest. It doesn't make the race the hardest because of certain strategies that are so robust. Like Marine Tank, Mine, Medevac can work in pretty much every matchup if you have that kind of control. Yeah. But it takes you can't a move a Terran army so. It's quite difficult to do, where in some situations you can A-move a Protoss army, or in most situations you should be able to A-move a Zerg army, or you're just in a tough situation. So yeah. if you don't have... It takes a different mindset, I think, to play Terran than Zerg or Protoss when it comes to like big engagements, or how you macro, or how you use your mechanics, or when you make your production. Um, so it is quite difficult to switch to Terran from the other races, I would agree. Yeah, like I, with Protoss, like it was a simple switch to Zerg. Cause, like you just learned that okay, well I use this drone for something, and now it's gone. It's not sent back to the mineral line after it's done building something. But that everything is a little bit cheaper, and you kind of get into that mindset of like, okay, well I should build drones now, and you just learn the timings of all that. Like right now, I think I have what, around the same amount of points as as Tomb right now. I think I had my highest was 810. I was ranked number two in my league, and then I just went on a huge tilt, and now I'm ranked like 17 or something like that, with like 750 points, because I had like four ZVZs in a row, and I lost all four of them, and they were all worth like, what, 16 points or 15 points or something like that, which was, ugh. That's, I, I found pretty early on in the StarCraft that the more you give a fuck, the less you're going to improve, because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's why, that's all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, to everyone uh, here. You, you want to hear a story? You, you, yeah, Somebody just I'm, quiet, I'm gesturing. Yeah. Okay, um, earlier this week I played a guy, um, and this is not my proudest moment, but uh, I, he, so I, I tried to do the heart build, which was where you proxy that, that first barracks, make four reapers, and start making hellions, and he just made roaches and rolled me, and like he started, he was like the most like BM guy I've ever played in my entire life, <laughs> and like it, was, it, was, it got to the point where he had like 50 roaches in my base just dancing, and like he was just spamming chat saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I left the game, and I, I messaged him afterwards, and I said, I'm going to find you, I'm going <laughs> to oh get a God. sex change, I'm going to make you fall in love with me, and then stomp on your heart and take half of what you have. That's what I'm going to do to you for what you just did to me. Jesus Christ. So, so what should happen is you should have blocked him when you left the game, and then pressed find match, and then right. continue. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Alternatively... Yeah. You should have just pressed find match and not given a fuck what he was saying. Because it's more fun when they keep talking to see how long their attention span lasts when they know you're not responding. I, I, I get a True. lot of kicks out of that. Uh, more so <sighs> like, have you, you guys heard about the kid who was talking a bunch of shit to this guy in Call of Duty or Xbox Live or whatever. And the du dude was like, I'm going to find you. The kid's like, yeah, whatever. He's like a 14-year-old kid. Oh, and this, did. I this like 35-year-old dude right. found him at the mall and choked him out. Like, it's the best story 
is just hey, so beautiful. I'm like, a he's Navy like, SEAL sniper with 300 confirmed kills, all right? I don't oh, know yeah, if you guys exactly. knew that. No, uh, but... coffee pasta. Oh my Wait, God. he killed the kid? No, no he, he didn't, didn't kill him. He just choked him. He just choked him and then... He got arrested and just, then... Yeah, he got arrested and shit, but he was in the same state as the kid. Like, he found him. He, like, Googled all of the shit and stuff and was like, oh, yeah, this is that kid. And he... Like, no, the kid just... probably, like, you know, set his address, like, thinking, like, no one's ever gonna find <laughs> right. him or whatever. But yeah. I think it was, like, three hours away, though. He had to, like, drive for, like, three hours Yeah, he had to drive a little so bit. He, it was the guy, the guy was committed. <laughs> it wasn't, like, <laughs> you know, you're very New York committed to this. Texas or something. It was, like... Columbus. How time. many how many years in prison did he get? Like five or ten or what? It's assault and battery, like for a kid too. It's like, no, he didn't yeah. get prison. It's got to be get prison. I mean, what? it's stalking. It's, because he was so like, BM. I mean, it was I mean like, yeah. it, that's like psychopathic tendencies. You should. No, no, I have a screenshot of the BM here for you to see. <laughs> <laughs> I should tune some BM, some Terran BM. I don't know. I live in Texas, so like everything that happens, like I'm like you know he should get death row or this should happen. I'm very. Liberal with my sentencing. Make sure yeah. every child has a gun. Like, let's go down that road. Oh, God. Well, that's not necessarily Texas. That's just that's America. Gun, gun owners that's in general. Like, that's yeah. all of America, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, people. so somebody, I'm gonna post this in our Skype call, but somebody can shorten the link and post it to chat. But that's the story on it. I don't. Grown know. man hunts down an attack child who kills him in a Call of Duty game. No. <laughs> I Dude, if you kill me in Call of Duty... It was blood for blood. He killed me. <laughs> I gotta get him back. This was self-defense, alright? <laughs> he killed me. <laughs> no, in, his, in his defense, he said, I'd been playing the whole day and he was just baiting me and baiting me and would just not <laughs> shut up. He, he went just on kept on, on I just lost it. I hold my hands up, I lost the plot. In a moment of madness, I went around to his house. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, so it was a 46-year-old, actually. And this is yeah, why... 46-year-old assaulted a 13-year-old. This is why I just don't play Xbox anymore. Like, people used to get people's IP address, and, like, I've been DDoS when I played Xbox, and people used to, like, find their IP address and, like, find their actual name and, like, SWAT them, which means, like, they call the police in your town and they get a SWAT team to break down your door. Like, oh they come up with some situation. Oh, my God. That, uh, that, had, yeah. that started so that's happening. Why in Hold on, dude. I got a kill streak going. Oh, like, you need to wait. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a, a Counter Strike clan. Um,. And uh, we, we broke off from a different clan, and one of the guys in, in the clan that we broke off from started actually swatting these people. And it was just the weirdest thing. Like, there were, like we'd be you know, talking, and all of a sudden they'd just go offline, and they'd come back like a couple of days later and be like, hey, the FBI was at my house. This guy called in a hostage situation. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh, like, oh God, you shit. guys. <sighs> Some of these... Yeah. Some of these communities, some of these online communities are, are definitely the worst. <laughs> do, do, <laughs> all right, is, is this our now. opportunity to talk about LOL? Uh, no, sure. let's no, jump in. Go for Crash it. game. All right, no. I think Crash game. LOL is oh, a pretty fun That's... game to play with your friends. Oh. Yes, true. Han or Dota, oh, at me. not LOL. Look, it, when you're like tilted on StarCraft and you're like, fuck, I hate StarCraft, and you just want to chill out and have like 10 APM, like LOL is a great game and it's a lot of fun. But I, I don't think that, like, the professional scene is something to, like, look at and be like, oh, he's Agreed. really good. I mean, it's Agreed. just... You guys are all fucking casuals. If you want to yeah, have somebody exactly. yell at you for something that they did wrong, then go ahead and play LOL. But other than that, like, you just really don't want to... <laughs> I've sunk so, so much time into League of Legends, just, like, on the side. Just, like, with when I was nothing else to do and I didn't want to play StarCraft. And I just can't seem to get better at the game. It's just, I hate the fact that I have to rely yeah. on... Other people. Do you not know how to right click? I mean, you just right click. No, I hate and then... other people so much when I play that game. Like, like, LOL is even easier than just gonna... though. That's the thing. Like, That's the weird part about LOL. Like, I watched the LOL games, and like Toom said yesterday, that PvP is pretty boring to watch. But watching a LOL game, just watching them get creep for like 15 minutes, like I. I don't Did know how to see how well he hit that no, guy. No, the, the mechanics like, are so much. strong with the right <laughs> You gotta do so really good right clicking there. It's how well can people coordinate with each other. It's how well can you guys get together and work as a team. Can you, you know, find champions that work together well? Can you I just... coordinate well with the person who's going to come in and, 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 you know, and hit, you know, and, and gank the other guy in your lane? It's all about teamwork, and that doesn't happen ever. Can I just play all five? Can I just do that? With that no, there's that flash joke that said, like, I... uh, League, of Legends, League of Legends is really fun. The guy controlling the other five champions is really good. Like, <laughs> well... Last week, just for LOLs, well, no pun intended, but I played uh, LOL and StarCraft at the same time on stream. Like, I, I played on a Bronze League account, and I ended up, 
like not actually dying that much and long and winning like four bronze league games. So uh, my attention wasn't right. too stressed, I guess. <laughs> Only um, bronze league games? You should have been like, able to win like that. Like yeah. When Dragon goes down. I mean, like I was just right clicking around. And <laughs> okay, I, okay, I'm gonna make a confession. I went on my friend's account. He's he's in bronze four, and I'm in I'm in like silver one. And I went on his account. and I played a couple games, and I lost every single one. Because yeah, it's because you can't just carry else a is. team by one person. You can't do it. It's not. It's it's impossible. I, that's, like, that's oh, yeah, why I, I, debatable. I'm like, not going to yeah. do law. I, I can't do it anymore. Okay, I'm sorry. If you're in the fucking what is it the the biggest I have the smallest P in the world league. I don't know what to call it, but yeah, if you have that, then yeah, you basically just carry the entire team. But if you're normal and go outside, then there's no way you're going to be. Able hey, to carry I don't the go outside team. very much. What it's is this outside happening. you speak of? It's where you buy yeah, this. Yeah, what the fuck? Where is it? Where I have to buy groceries. Oh, I just get those free at MLG. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I felt so bad. Like, there were these, like, booth babies trying to hand me this Dr. Pepper 10 or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm sorry. And they're like, no, you should really. I'm like, no, no I'm it's... not. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and you just, they, like, you, their, their faces, they're so disappointed. They're like, I really wish you would have gotten that soda. I feel like uh, a dick, but. I really wish. I got the number of one of the Dr. Pepper girls at MLG in Raleigh. <laughs> really? <laughs> I was just like walked up to her, sort of talking to her, because Jeff was talking to me. And he's like, "You should go." Did you actually try calling number. that number? Yeah, no, I got her. Yeah. Okay. I there called the go. number and I was like, "Hey, we're at the hotel. We're at the was, wasn't the." Winter, I don't know what experiences you've had with women, but the rest. <laughs> but no, I was <laughs> my like, my yeah, girlfriend is in the Bronx Hotel. Okay, the so, Clarion. We were at the oh. Clarion in Raleigh. She plays protest and though. I'm she was like, "Oh no, I'm busy tonight. We're actually out drinking with the." She's like with her other Dr. Pepper girls, and I was like, "All right, yeah, no worries." But that was our last night, so, oh well. Were they drinking Coke off the radar? Probably, <laughs> Mr. Pib. Dude didn't get his degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Starcraft is pretty cool. Yeah, um, why did? Yeah, let's talk about. <laughs> let's get back to that. <laughs> so we were talking about balance. We stopped on ZVZ. I'm fine with ZVZ staying the way it is. Um, yeah, I. I I like hey. Mutas, and I have a 74% win rate, so I can't complain too much. Can we yeah. can we actually complain that a mirror matchup is unbalanced, though? I mean, like, I know that you... Zerg wins every time. It's, no, it's just, it's just feel, dumb. Like, it's not like, unbalanced. TVT is kind of balanced yeah. out now, thanks to the Motion Core, but TVT is such... <laughs> TVT, TVT is easy. Hell bad. No, all right. With your, you and okay, your Tomb, bad. okay, <laughs> okay, so you are not... <laughs> okay, hold on. You are not allowed to talk about TVT, Tomb, ever on, on this show, ever. Fuck yeah, I am. TVT? No. Okay, TV? step one, no. make Hellbats. No. Step two, no. drop right. Hellbats. If you step out of your base at the wrong time, there's going to be eight medevacs full of marines and tanks <laughs> flying over your missile turrets, because you have missile turrets <laughs> everywhere. It doesn't matter. They fly right over them, and just you, you die. Put up a widow mine. Now you know how I feel at ZVT, where I'm like, oh yeah, I got six war crawlers by my base, I'll be fine, and they're just like, whoops, oh, because what happened is that okay? So if you put a widow mine behind a missile turret, when they boost over the the uh, the missile turret, the widow mine will kill the uh, medevac, and then and then you laugh, and then you and then you just win. So how do you do that in ZVZ? That's ZVT. how all my TVTs go. I don't go three reaper. See, I just throw five hi- siege tanks with widow right, mines and marine tank with here. drops. I just throw five no, hydras at every shit. base and then go with my main army. And Terran tries to drop me. I'm like, yeah, I got spore crawlers and five hydras, and you die now. The Hydra like, drop defense squad. I just, I I just, just keep on going. We're just having an intervention here, Tomb. We, we want to talk about your TVT, okay? We all, my we all TVT know. is solid. Right. And we want you I to get say. better at It's the about game, as solid so. as collapsible rocks right Look, now. We, we we you... 64%. 64%, sir. Look, 64% Tomb, win rate. Uh, we just want you to play standard and not go for Hellback drops. It is standard. It's an intervention. No, it's not a standard. Just Just do Reapers. That's all I ask. I'll make Reapers when, when I feel no, like it, look. but when I want to win, I'm going to make help. I'm glad they took away the building right. damage on Reapers, Reaper. though, because that was so obnoxious. Like, it was just... so great late game. I learned that from QXE. Just, like, make six, six or seven Reapers and then just go into someone's yeah. base late game, and then just... It's unbelievable. Just it was so great. At the they end took and it off, just, yeah. and I was so sad. I was like, oh, man. No, that was garbage. Yeah, I mean, it was going to be really obnoxious with the like the Reaper Hellion. Now, like you would, ne- like Zerix would never take a third base ever before you know seven or eight minutes. It would I be great. Seven or eight minutes in DVT. You got to get those one one Roach upgrades started, so that way you can hit a uh, Roach time in about eleven minutes before their first two medevacs come out. Mm-hmm. Fuck that shit up. I don't know what's pretty what, standard. Eleven minute medevac, like that's become standard in DVT. That's that's when you go three CC after Reaper with Hellion harassment. It's about ten to thirty to eleven for the first medevacs. Yeah. 
It depends on when they're getting their upgrades. That's why you fuck them up at that point, before they can get those Hellbat drops going on, because they don't have metavags. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, so, wait, what were we talking about? We got kind of derailed there, I think. We were talking about TBT and how he needs to stop. TBT. Tube, we should TBT. Yeah, but you can Hellbat drop. My TBT is okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, your TVT like non Hellbat drop one base all in? It's not a one base all in, it's a one Would base you pressure. Key? It's a one Keith. base all in. Okay. It's a, it's a one base pressure. pressure. Just because I run out of minerals in the main doesn't mean it's an all in, okay? <laughs> I expand, I move my I move my main oh. command center down to Dude. my natural, and then we're just we're fine after that. It's Dude, okay. Like if you don't do devastating damage, you lose the game. It doesn't matter how many CCs you hey. took behind it. That's not it doesn't true. Doesn't matter at all. That's not true because I always do devastating damage. Yeah, you can't debate that. Remember when you played right? Filter and he actually like just hard countered you? I don't ever remember playing Filter ever. I don't. I don't it's remember. Not, it's no? just, you know the Hellbat drops are coming. Like if you open Reapers and you scout that he's just all right. Mm -hmm. He's getting his factory and there's a reactor coming down and then you scan later. See that it's not even hard to to beat Hellbat drops anymore. Like everyone just knows that they're coming now. And you just get one Viking, you get a couple of Widow Mines, you get a turn in your natural and in your main, and they can't do anything. Actually, Reaper's, uh, or not Reaper, but Filter's um, defense was actually just to put two uh, two bunkers down. He put one in his natural, one in his main. Which costs as much as two Hellbats, let me remind you here. Right, so. and then... But then you kill the medevac too. Yeah, so it's worth then it. I couldn't do much damage. I did I did a bunch, I mean, I did... So like... wait, there's a way to defend it? Yeah, you can defend it. Okay, what are we talking about right. here? <laughs> so, my, uh, my other TVT is that I go, I just make tanks, like normal, <laughs> turtle as hard as I can, Build battle into cruisers. like five bases and battle cruiser, yeah. Three, three battle cruiser. My, my TV <laughs> is, is I just I just make apart. it go thirty plus minutes and see what happens. Right, <laughs> exactly. Thirty battle, you know, thirty battle cruisers. That, that doesn't. That's, that's not zero. anyone that's making that happen. Strategy. Are we it's able just, to call TBT at chess mats now? Can yes. we call TBT at chess yes, mats? Oh, chess yeah. mats. Yeah. Yeah. As a chess player, I'm offended. You either can make way worse. Or a few pieces. TBT is pretty fun. I like that matchup. There's a lot of different types of pieces too. It's just either it's going to be a 10 minute game because it's a Banshee and, and, and Hellion drops and, and Hellbat drops, or it's going to be a 45 minute Raven Battle Cruiser Viking slugfest. No, it doesn't. Like a there's also the mid game. Yeah. Tank position exactly. the, mid game, the mid game is, is if you can snipe your, your other guy's third. If you can snipe the other guy's third, then you won the game. But if you're like, doing Marine Tank, or if you, go, if you go heavy mech like uh, Widow Mine, Hellbat, Tank with viking support then that's a really fun game you can push their third if they if they've gone marine tank and you go hellbat tank um you make like two medevacs along with your um fleet of vikings and then you drop the hellbats onto their marines and then you obliterate their marines and then their your tanks take out their tanks you win the game i just never seem to have enough production facilities that's my problem so, so i, I think so can we agree here that changes. all right what were you gonna say I, I, just just to summarize what I got from this entire conversation is, as long as you macro better, you'll probably win. Yeah, no. pretty much. Not in oh, CBC. Silly. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know how to use three production buildings on three bases as long as I can. I right. seem to be the only turn with the problem of not having enough SCVs. Everyone else always says that they have too many. I just I yeah, stop. I, like like, I seem to just stop pressing the button at at fifty five. Like that's when I just that's I hit my probably max. why I two would you. Shockbox. That's yeah, probably what happens. Oh. Oh. oh my god. What I, I like to do is I like to make one. 38 SCVs and then right. just go from there. And then I think, you know, There's I think you're fine one. after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, so after the balance the changes. States. Nice. Dude, what, 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 what did you plan for us to talk about after the balance changes? Oh, wait, I, I'm, right. I'm up for another show anything? match. Come on, man. I'll do it again. Oh, we, yeah, we can do a show match right now, man. Like, I'm down. <laughs> I... You know pick I don't my race anything. and pick the map. I, I challenge anyone. $20 best of three. Let's go. All right, okay. let's go. Me and you. Okay. We can do I'll that. I'll play Terran. You play Zerg. We're going to go to Scrap Station. <laughs> <laughs> don't you mean Four Hall Mines or whatever the fuck no, it's I called? No, I mean Scrap Station. Guess who's floating to the fucking... <laughs> like, yeah, turret. go ahead and float. Base. I think he'll have units up. Missile Turret's one base. Cloak Banshee. <laughs> And we're not talking about like real twenty dollars, like Monopoly money, or is that? No, no, no. We're talking uh, about actual money. Oh, okay. I don't have yes. that much actual money. Oh, when are, when okay. are the top in virtual means? Masters random player comes in here with us. I, I have to go down to the bank and put twenty dollars. I'm, I'm, I'm here to extort <laughs> all of you guys. That's the only reason. Uh, You're I like what fifteen hundred point master or fifteen hundred point master there. random? Yeah, something like that. And I'm like twelve hundred and something. So I I could probably beat you. 
if you yeah. get a certain race. It is, like if you it is if you get Protoss, Protoss, I would win. Yeah, I would yeah. win with PvP. Yeah. Really? I'm anyway, so proud of his PvP recently. Every time he comes into the chat room, he's like, Dude, I have a great PvP for you to cast! I just won! Oh, it's so great! Oh! <laughs> hold on. If you guys, hold on. If you guys actually watched that replay and saw, like, the production and how behind I was, and if you looked at my camera, I was holding, like, these triple prongs. How many like, Dark Shrines did you make? I made one. <laughs> there it is! <laughs> anyway, like, if you actually watched the game, instead of just, like, staring at the middle of the map where nothing was going on, it was a very interesting game. But Toon was like, no, I'm just gonna stare... In the middle of the map, not pull up a production because tab, I'm not pull up a unit's I'm lost fair, tab. Like, I've watched, I watched four of your PvPs before that, like, in the weeks before that, and they were all the worst matches I've ever seen. It's like, how are you Masters League? It was like it was like watching, like, a, a silver Protoss go up against, like, a, a Grandmaster Protoss. You were making the other guy look so good. It's like, how were you... <laughs> Did I win most of those games? <laughs> no. Protoss oh. always wins in those matches. You won one of those games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And All you right, almost guys, lost it. I actually do have to go. My uh, my roommates are having people over, so it's going to get pretty loud. So I'm going to go join them instead of yell at them. So All right. I had a good time uh, sitting in here with you guys, though. Have fun, man. All right, All right guys. And uh, anybody in the stream, Papers. thank you for watching me. I appreciate not yelling at me and making the uh, making the jokes about the name because everyone goes, "Oh, Phoenix SD. Oh, what's the SD stand for?" It's San Diego. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I'll catch you later, San Diego. See you later. I'm. I'm kind of depressed that we didn't make that joke. I didn't. I didn't talk. notice. His name's Harrison. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah we could have totally done that. Damn it! Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Free, free jokes there. All right. I'm good. I'm good. Everyone in chat already made them for us, so we didn't have to uh, know it. ourselves to that level. Um, so what we do now? What a, now For that sure. all the Zergs are gone. I'm sure. I'm still here, man. Oh, still here. I've kept yeah, quiet. I mean, we got we got four people. So. Oh, well, filter's coming in apparently. Oh, now we got maybe well, if plus he does. Two, I don't know if he does or not. Yeah. So I don't have to be the only Terran opinion then, right? Wait, what? What, what race uh, are you? Oh well, no, shock is Terran oh, and sorry. oxygen is Zerg. I don't even know. And you're random, so you're just sort of impartial to. I, I just talk all the time. So. Yeah. Winter's up there on his high horse. Yeah, I'm, I've been riding it the entire time, but I can go for as long as I need to. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you want it to happen? No. Yeah. Do you want, you want those what? jokes to be correct? Um, wait. How far are we taking this? God Hold on. Us. What about Exalted? He's in chat. He's a good guy. Oh, Nace. Get yeah. Nace in, dude. Filter. He on my Skype. Old teammate, TVT though. Discussion. Don't call let's, let's talk about some TVT. You don't like it. Wait, he can't hear Yeah, he plays Terran now. Yeah, he switched to Terran, and I was like, good choice. Switch to Terran. Nice. Pretty good at it. Apparently so am I, though. Because I, I won three TV... X matchups on accident in Master League at thirteen hundred points. So, hey, nice. What's your? Oh, never mind. I shouldn't probably ask for your Skype name because then you put it in the chat and people know your Skype name. Oh, I think I it. can add him. Okay. Hey, what are we? I got distracted. What is going on? <laughs> oh, no. Don't read the chat while you're trying to know what your people are talking about. There we go. Everything's dead. <laughs> Uh, what happened here? I don't know. Oh, who's this babe in my box? Oh, come on, too. Oh. oh, man. Get that out of here. Hello? What's up, man? What's going What's on? Peace. Oh, it's so weird. I'm making two work over here. He's I like, know. Oh, All right. He's like, <laughs> exploding. <laughs> Guys, stop. Hold on. Everyone leave the call and come back. Just No, and I'll just end the show. It'll just be gone. And we'll, be, we'll just be done. <laughs> <laughs> Bad plan. I don't want that. Thing. <laughs> That's okay, one so good way to just make it end. I just wish there was a better like program for this. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Like if there was like a chat program. Well, I mean, if you just set up like six different scenes where you had different combinations of where people would sit. No, that's, you... not, that's not how that works. I don't think you understand how Skype works. Right, but like if, as long yeah. as you full screen whatever you're doing and then, you know, capture the no, little no, box. No, no, that's not how that, that would work. Don't, don't, it doesn't it capture screen. from a... All right, somebody give me something anyway. to talk about while they're discussing how not to know how to use Skype. What do you think about ZVP right now? ZVP. Uh, uh, that's ZVP's a match we haven't talked about. It's my I worst match, match right now. I love that matchup. As as a Protoss player, I just make Colossi and Void Rays, and if I get to three base maxed out Colossi Void Ray, I win. 
The only ways I find myself losing are heavy, like the way Lenok played, heavy ling timings, like upgraded lings to deny third bases and to like reduce the glass I count into like hydra timings. And once you have the hydras out, you kind of switch into mutas because as Zerg, I don't think you can play like a straight up macro game where you're, both of you just like make drones, make probes, make bases, and just this is our army. Uh, because Zerg units right now are just not as cost efficient as Protoss units. The advantage Zerg has is they can make more faster units and they have to use that. So I think yeah. the way Lenok played is going to become the new standard so with upgraded what's, links. But what happened with Swarm Hosts? What, what do Swarm Hosts do in that matchup um, that makes them I so sick? Swarm Hosts are Defend really all fucking retarded. That's the real thing. They're that's, really that's freaking awesome. good. <laughs> Believe go it or not. They are really uh, good units. They are very cost effective. And I'm not saying they need a nerf, but it's very hard to play against them. They are very difficult to play against until you get like four Colossus and they're useless. But well, I've actually, having... I've I've had games where they go two base swarm hosts and I have nine Colossus and I still can push back their amount of swarm hosts. Oh, it's okay. uh, yeah. That's why I like Eddie and Void Rays as well because the Void Rays make it so they have to kind of commit to some anti air. Like even if well, you have like four or five Void Rays, it's like well. Four or five well, void rays will literally kill everything. Well, yeah. usually what happens is like they put up spore crawlers and they have like five or six queens, um, and it's just like yeah, they're it's... transfusing the spore crawlers, so you can't go void rays, so you have to go colossus, and have enough colossus to push back swarm hosts is kind of. That's ridiculous. exactly what you need to do. Like Puck was talking about this, or Leia was talking about this earlier on the last uh, SMP, and it was. Oh, is, um, it back, is it back to Puck now, or is it still Leia? That was like a whole Puck. thing. Going on there. Is it Puck now? Okay, so Puck, Puck was talking you. about how like. Yeah. The, the length of the not... swarm post life is so long that it's just it's very yeah, hard. They're to play. really hard to kill if you if the Zerg player knows what he's doing with them. I found that like if you seashells. open, yeah, they're pretty much. And I found if you open like a Roach Queen style, oh, it doesn't work in ZBC. Stargate, no, no, don't make swarm hosts in ZBC. Yeah, it doesn't work they in ZBC. Roach well, I mean, I guess they go, Muta, I thought. You know, anything yeah, if they open Muta, you can't swarm host. But I if they're gonna go Roach Hydra, go swarm host. Go swarm host in ZVZ. If, here's the thing about uh, for protest, you have to kind of play like the Zerg in ZVZ. What I found, if they're like really sieging up on swarm host, I just kind of take my army. If I have an option, if like they're already sieged up outside my base, you're kind of a little bit fucked. But if you see yeah. they're going swarm host and you, but you like can't kill the swarm host, you kind of just go base trade and make sure you have a mothership core to recall as soon as they commit back. Like uh, and then just catch them out of really position. Shady. Yeah. Something I've been but, doing in ZVP is a Roach Queen, extremely defensive Roach Queen build. So I'll sit on three to four bases and force the Protoss to come to you. And by that time, you can actually get a five to, mm, I think it's five to ten Swarm Host, which will allow you to continually send volleys at the Protoss army and force them to engage you eventually. And once you, yeah, that's why you have Queens. It's a mass Queen Roach build, and then you get Swarm Hosts underneath it. So, so you have the gas that. for it. And queens are good because they have transfused and they're not light, so they're not negatively affected by anything. They're essentially that's, just psionic biological. Well, what if they just macro behind and just like make a huge ass army? You, that's what you have the swarm hosts for. You sit there and you continually send volleys and make them come out to the you. The swarm hosts are not the ends to a means. Though. They're the means to an end. They're so you can get your fourth base up, so you can get infestors up. So ideally, either ultras or uh, viper roach hydra is usually the late game composition you're looking for. You don't just say, I'm going to kill him with Swarm Host, because no, in a straight up macro game, a competent protest player most of the time will not just like die to the Swarm Host, because eventually you overcommit to Swarm Host, or they just clean them up. But have you bought enough time to get Ultras out? Have you got enough time to get Hive Tech out? That's what the Swarm Hosts are for. What, do, what, what are your thoughts on Vipers, Winner? I'm curious. I, oh, Vipers are so good. They Vipers are, are fine. quite situated. There are there. I mean, there's no reason not to have like three to five vipers at any point. Um, it's just getting to them. If you're going to commit that army supply on the vipers, you have to make. I see so many players. They're like, I'm going to use blinding cloud, and I have like nine vipers, and now what do I do with them? And it's yeah. just cutting into the army supply. But a well used viper is much better than the supply it, it costs. So there's no reason and not adding to adding vipers to a late game zerg composition against protoss is disgusting or, or terran fun. or terran even or terran, terran. Yeah. Yeah, even terran exactly. especially mech i think that that's what really no completely oh, yeah. rendered oh. mech useless that's why you can't mech is because of the viper yeah it, it rendered when, tanks yeah. useless it rendered it's Thor's. unbelievable yeah i mean with the way like bio and widow mines work i don't even know why you would want to go mech that often exactly bio uh, i actually second that I, I love playing bio bio medevac Oh, it's just so fun. With Widowmines. 
It's really just there's so much opportunity. I really yeah, especially it. like when the banelings just explode, like all of them explode from the widow mines. It's just like wow, yeah, that just happens. I started yeah, to hate mines pretty much I feel like how bats, how bats come out from the same. They're actually <laughs> affected by upgrades. Which widow mines aren't, but I mean they're ridiculous as it is. I mean if widow mines were affected by upgrades, it would be way too much. But widow mines are like the Benedict Arnold of the turn army. If you go like Marine widow mine and you like miss micro, they come in behind you. That's they a good point. kill you. Oh, they do. That's why I use overlords to do that. I use overlords yeah. to make the widow mines part of my army when I'm engaging like bio. That's because I usually go Roach Hydra against uh, Marine Tank I, I, Bio. I, I, which is the same issue that we I, had I, when I, we were going Marine Tank versus um, Broodlords, is that you use yeah. the tanks against the current army if the Marines Wait, step out of place. I don't like know. I, I, I super try harded because what I do is I actually lift up the Widow Mines as they're like trying to get them to lift up. Oh, that's up. the correct. That's how you have to do it, actually. Yeah. Oh, because so, so many like, they're get so going to get better and better. That's why Hellbats are becoming more popular in Korea. Um, my friend Bad Cop. Um, he actually was the top oh, place the American. Guy, it's sick, yeah. Yeah, he w he only plays on Korean now. He says everybody's going Hellbats in TVZ. Mines are just like, they work for the Zerg player mines, most you, of the time. You make though. four to six mines just to be defensively oh. and then add them into the army late game and then you just go pure Hellbat. Mines, if yeah. he doesn't have a wall, will work in Zerg favor if the Zerg knows what he's doing. You send three Zerglings in at a time toward the in Marines. In a perfect engagement, of course. Like, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you're just like, it drops, oh, yeah. gotta kill things, and that's when mines yeah. work out well. Especially yeah. against the le lesser APM players, they're like, gotta kill like, this. Yeah. And then <laughs> Widow mine drops are just really good, because like, let's say I, they drop into my base, do zero damage, I pull my probes, uh, like, I make sure none of the probes from the gas, because there's always this one probe in each gas guys that doesn't freaking come with you. And I pull those two, and I lose, I lose no probes. But I just lost 200 minerals worth of mining time, so I'm like, okay, that sucks, and I go back. Even more than that. I think the best part about widow mines is just to sneak them in, like, like you know, just like to make one or two of them, and then just to like rally them around the corners of the map and stick them in like the third base mineral line, and bam, suddenly yeah. 15 minerals just die. They're the same thing oh, as the so shredder far. was, and that's why the shredder got cut was because they were being dropped in mineral lines. Yeah, and they basically put the shredder back in, but with a cool. Oh down. yeah, that shit. Uh, that it's was the same ridiculous. exact unit. I remember that. I think that was like a troll video. Like I saw that. It killed like <laughs> it killed that everything. Was, that was a joke. That was a joke. Oh yeah, uh, they respawned as hellbats. So I'm gonna post a link in chat of a picture of why swarm host is good in ZVP and Viper and Spore because. And like, I'm gonna pick it picture. apart and say this is why this worked, but go for I, it. I think swarm Look host at the unit like, lost tab, yeah. Winter. Look at the unit. This is really gay. <laughs> Oh boy! Look at Wait, is look there a at picture? the unit last tab. Wow! Well, you just screenshot your Skype. That you is should a probably delete that. That is a point master Protoss, mind you. Yeah, you I, uh... I used the Roach Queen build in this matchup. He couldn't touch me. He opened Stargate. He couldn't do anything about it. Whose Skype is that? In the that's yours. It's Tundra's. Yeah. <laughs> That's my Skype. Oh, <laughs> no. Tundra. Smartly done. Execute DDoS. <laughs> oh, That's I, I, I could kill it. No one will DDoS me. Oh, man. <laughs> no one will DDoS me. That's the, those are the that's words you want to use. That's, that's, that's right. something that's the exact opposite of what you say in front of 150 people. Because there's that one guy right now in chat. Then he fucking buys. Like he's a script kitty and he buys that thing for 15 bucks a month to flood your line for 30 seconds. So you just, you just fucked yourself, hey. man. Are you uh, watching Stefano or something at the same time? I was, yeah, I have two monitors. So when I took the screenshot, it took the other monitor as well. So I was watching Stefano play at the same time. Oh man, my screenshots only take the wrong monitor. It doesn't matter which monitor I'm aiming at. Your I'll screenshots should other. take all of them. When you yeah, it should pick yeah, all. Yeah, that's of them. like the ideal late game. I only get one. Oh man, against every single Protoss death ball, it kills it no matter what. Unless they have Tempest. Besides that. No, even with Tempest, that's what you have Vipers for. You pull them in. You shouldn't be able to get <laughs> close to Tempest. But then they have Tempest. Templar to feedback the Vipers before they get close yeah. enough but to kill the Tempest. But the Tempest, the Tempest well, what it works out as, it's like, you feedback the Viper the... as it's pulling it in. So yeah, the, the Viper loses all of his energy and it probably dies, but it still pulls the Tempest. It, that's usually yeah. how it works And out. the role of the Swarm Host is specifically to zone out High Templar so it can't get enraged to feedback Yeah, the... exactly. If, if, if he pulls forward, he's going to lose High Templar. But if he pulls back, he's going to lose structures, so he's going to lose production. What's the range out of duck? I thought it was only eight. I really haven't seen any Protoss players using that the Tempest. I, it, it, I've only seen it like very, very, very late game ZVP. 
Because they're only good against Broodlord, so you don't... No, they're so no, good they're, against Terran. And they are oh really good against Terran. Oh, against Terran? I did, what do you mean? Like They're I mean, just well, good I against Terran. They just are. By, by good against Terran, do you mean not good against Terran? Yeah, no, I mean, because <laughs> what if they just make bio? You just make, guy, what if they make keep, units of any kind, like Marines? You storm the bio, and then you kill everything else. Wait, hold on. Are you actually being serious right now? No, I'm being serious. Like, eight Tempest are really, Bio will beat Mass Tempest. No. not only will it beat it, but it will be so costly. No. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I, I mean, just using them as an as an effective tool to just keep Terran where you want him to be. Because I played. I played a game on the Korean server. This guy just just kept. He, he made two tempests. That was all he made, and he just and he had a few colossus. And I just I couldn't touch him. Don't he like just he stood outside of my so base, anything? and I just every time I tried to move out, I was just completely zoned. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how Tempest will ever be viable PVT. Ever. I feel like it's I'm a lack of commitment that in that situation. Because well, if you're afraid to leave that. leave your base as a Terran against a Protoss, you've already lost. Oh, because he had the Colossi also. I can't even imagine a situation where you have so many Tempests that the Terran can't leave their base. Like that's a situation it, where you could have won with well, any you other build. Up, all right. That's yeah, and if you're letting him just <laughs> wail on your bases, you just need to drop him if he's continuing yeah, like, you like I that. I could go mass carrier in PVT, and and we could say mass carrier going back. <coughs> Mass Carrier with Temp I mean with Templar is kind of viable because of the nature what, of what happened to Carrier? Because we're talking I, about late game. Like, yeah, no, I heard that Carrier got buffed. When? But I never for seen micro. it. But it's only for play. micro. It's a buff yeah. for micro. The thing is, it's like if you're gonna make it's a carrier, so you, you could make a tempest, and the tempest is better in every way, so you don't make the carrier. Besides <laughs> unless unless all the interceptors are firing, then the temp uh, carrier actually has more DPS, but most of the time. The only thing that helps with the uh, carrier is if they're bad at micro and they screw up their AI, the AI will target the interceptors instead of the carrier as opposed to like just targeting the Tempest. So that's, it's kind of like, do you think he'll actually target my carriers or is he just going to sit there and be sad about the situation where he let me get tier 3 air? Like, Also, talking about this mass Tempest thing, like, couldn't you just like go mass Viking? Like, or you just can. No, you can start to switch over to mass Viking, and then once you have mass Viking, no, they go, the... they go tempest. Um, high but jump. see, the Vikings and Vikings Viking produce are exactly the same, so you shouldn't have a problem on making. They're not Vikings. exactly the same. Listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying this. I've literally 16. never seen mass tempest late game in PvP. I, I, I haven't. I haven't. You can get Vikings fast. I've though. tried yeah. it like off of two bases, and it's worked because they're like, "What the fuck are these things?" Like, but I had somebody. I just I beat somebody who just went. um... Carrier Tempest on uh, two base on uh, on Neo Planet S. Like, today I mean, I guess it's what? the same thing as like <laughs> when. It, remember when like Taren can get like twenty battle cruisers? <laughs> it is. It was awesome. I was really happy about it. But... Like if if Taren gets t twenty battle cruisers and a PVT, you you've lost the game like one hundred percent. Okay, like, even Squirtle. Stuff. Wait a oh, second. Yeah. Hold on. Well, usually, <laughs> so like if you're gonna let a, a Protoss get like twenty Tempests and like have this go unscouted, then I guess you just deserve to lose. Probably, yes, because yeah. as the way the way Terran is supposed to be played in TVP, you're not supposed to like sit back and make your army. You're supposed to make it so he, he can't make his army. No, that's what I did because he was only on two base, so I just sat oh. back and then he made this like. If he's on two base, he can't. Really wait, make wait, wait, wait! He went two base Tempest, <laughs> two base Carrier Tempest. And I don't you think lost they this? Game no, I killed him. It was awesome. But wait, no, oh, okay. One what is our argument here? Wait, no, then, if you killed game. him, then. <laughs> No, what? there was a. I, I was just saying, like it was very scary for about like forty-five seconds. I was like, "Oh my god, what do I do against these?" We've spent more than forty-five seconds talking about this. I know, I but like I was scared. Dude, you should have opened up with the fact that this guy two base tempest me and I killed him, and then we would have. There was off. a different game and then where the guy went six base tempest and he. he beat because him. he had six six bases base tempest, he yeah. can do. He okay, the fact that he had to get on six base. every minute if he felt oh like my god that much gas. That's like two thousand gas per minute. I know. Yeah, that's it's crazy. Yeah. I don't what are what we doing, doing right now? True. I don't, I don't know how you handle. What that. is this? A, a balanced discussion for ants? Yeah. <laughs> dude, if you let a protoss get on six bases, just leave the fucking game, dude. Just, know, really? But, but you can't beat them. <laughs> <laughs> just leave the game the next time that happens. Like. <laughs> so next time I play two, I'll be sure to build six nexuses really fast. It's not even hard. He doesn't rush. Citus says that Tempest are so good. How so? Like Tempest are really not that good. Okay. PT? Like we how so? Shh. Tempest aren't as good as Void Rays, Colossi, or Storm. They're good. Like every Protoss unit in the late game. <laughs> they're not they're not supply efficient though, I don't think. That's they're the only good for killing massive air. Like that's what their role is. 
If they're if they bitch. went battle cruiser, wait, why didn't you just go void rays then? Is the real question, like, because they do extra damage to the armored. Exactly. So. Yeah, yeah void rays are just a better um, option. Period. I think I think our our can we can we agree the consensus on tempest and PVT is, meh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you, I mean if you're making an air unit, I just I don't know how that goes unscouted. Like you should be ready for that transition. It shouldn't really hurt you that bad. Exactly. And I don't even know how you're supposed to live during that transition because they have all bio, and you're like I'm guessing sacrificing Colossus. Are you doing something with your army to fit in these really expensive tempests? So I don't. I just don't. Being really unsafe to do something that's completely stupid and shouldn't work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, Sidis is, like, high master, and he's saying that Tempest and PVT are really, really good. I don't know why he's saying that. Bring it, Sidis. Yeah, I'm not... I guess the good thing the about... It's, it messes up the overlay every time. Yeah. I think the good thing about um, Tempest and PVT is that it'll force an engagement on the Protoss side. Because from what I see, because well, like, I don't play... TVP ever. We're not we're not talking about mass tempest. We're talking about like just like siege tanks couple. where you don't make like fifty unless you're going mech. You make like five or ten in like marine yeah, exactly. tank to but, force a fight. Sure, that, I can see that working. Tempests but. get better the more that you have of them. So if you have twelve tempests, they're better than having two tempests. Like I just don't see you like against Vikings. I don't see how the tempests are gonna. Tempests outrange Viking. Right, but I mean, if like you just bring in a fuckload of Vikings, and obviously the tempest, and then they get stormed, and then they die. No, but then he's saying ghosts. He's so that's because ghosts. you're not splitting your units. Well, like yeah, you but first of all, there's gonna be no. ghosts. But Vikings don't split. Look Are at look at anybody use Vikings. They don't. Oh nobody my splits gosh. Vikings. Uh, <laughs> I Vikings low, like, you have to split Vikings. your Vikings or a storm. Come on now. Yeah, like uh, I don't nobody play a lot of Terran, but just run in in Vikings oh, and don't split them. Yeah. Yeah, you. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Pass like okay against mech. I can see tempest working because of the way mech works. That's like void rays are void ray tempest is a pretty sick counter to mech. But against bio, I feel the mobility of my bio outweighs like the mobility restriction that tempest give you because tempests aren't like the all out damage unit. They don't do that much damage. They're not that scary. They're kind of annoying, but. Against Bio, I feel like Bio has too much mobility on most maps. Maybe there are a couple maps, like maybe Belshire Vestige, you can force a half map or something like that and go Tempest. Alright, but... let's put it this way. I've never seen a pro game where a Protoss goes Tempest, you ever, I, in Heart of the Swarm. In, in the PvT, months, you will see in PvP, I've never seen that. I, I promise you, you'll see it. Two is two, making two. a prediction. There we go. I'm making a prediction. Alright. Okay, right usually now. Koreans are ahead of the metagame, so if Koreans aren't already doing it, it's probably not going to happen in okay. the next six months. So We'll see. I've never seen a Tempest either in, like, game versus PvP. I don't know, I feel like Koreans only innovate when they feel like they need to. And I feel like right now they feel really comfortable in PvP. Yeah, most Protoss, honestly, from a pro- I played Protoss and Terran, like, about the same level. I feel a lot less- I feel a lot more comfortable, like, how I should transition, how I should go into the late game. And if I'm at that situation where I have, like, two, three Robos, and also, I have like four or five bases of gas, I can just make High Templar and Colossus at the same time, I'm kind of like- I don't really need to do more, I just need to keep doing this until he runs out of steam. Uh, and eventually, in like a straight up engagement, my units will be more cost efficient. So that's why I see, I mean, sure, maybe Terran are going to come up with like some ridiculous way of defending it, and then Tempest will be like, wait a second, I'm going to fuck shit up with these Tempests now. Hold but... on, Sid has said that it happened. Someone did Tempests in TVT. Happy, Happy versus, versus Hasselobs. Does anyone have that bot? Yeah. I want to see how this works right now. Like, I honestly, I don't even see conceptually how it would work. I mean, I can see conceptually. I just can't see why it would be needed, honestly, in PvT. I, I mean, just like conceptually, how you get there. Listen, the the point that you guys are making, I don't know why this is still going on. Like I understood this five hours ago, is that there are better options. Okay, we understand. Yeah. Thank you. We don't need. Like this is still going for no reason. But the I mean, reason is to talk about game. StarCraft. All right. How about we talk about DreamHack? Because that just happened. I'm, I'm down with that. I'm down with Linux ZVP style or oh Nanny was PVZ style. Oh, Nanny was making me so sad. Oracle. I was so DVD. sad when he lost. Uh, I mean, it, everybody was sad when he lost. Let's be honest here. Everyone wanted Nanny Will to win. He was like yeah. third on R slash all. That's how. Yeah. That's how intense everybody wanted Nanny Will to win. But I mean, oh, yeah. when he made know. the final, like, like, Lenok was the better player uh, mechanically, so was Nanny Will was never going to win. Not like, even Nanny mechanically, Wall... like tactically, I think. Well, he yeah, was, I mean, he was, like he, already, he always had the initiative. So. Yeah, it's just that uh, 
I don't know. Like every bit, every game that Naniwa won, it was pretty much an all-in to some extent. So he really wasn't. So. Besides the one where how, uh, how old is Leonok now? Does anyone know? I think he's like Isn't he's he like twenty. Korean. I thought he was like twenty or something. No, he's like seventeen. Really? Yeah, he's like he's seventeen. Yeah. Oh okay. He's won that many. Jesus Christ. He's won like an MLG championship and a dream hack. Wow. Isn't yeah, life's like what? Life's sixteen? Life's sixteen and he yeah. has over a hundred and twenty thousand dollars in prize money this 50, year. One fifty. They must like start playing StarCraft like out of the fucking womb. Like mom's like, you're gonna play this for the next sixteen <laughs> he, weeks. He could have he could have been born and within a year StarCraft did come out, so that one year old life. Yeah. Fifteen APM, working his way up. <laughs> oh my god. I, I can actually imagine that. It's like give give your kid the brood war real quick. Just let him play around. See if he makes some dragoons or something. Like, <laughs> I have a good question for you. Uh, does anyone here besides Imarine, who obviously does because he said he does in the beginning, but does anyone here have an aspiration for you know going you know making a living off this game? I do. I'm playing full time as us now. The most I'm comfortable saying is I made as much as I would make working part time, like as a student last month playing StarCraft, like, in streaming and coaching and stuff. So that's... Wow. I don't know... I, I mean, I coach. Do you uh, charge? How much do you charge? I, I charge $20 an hour for coaching. Hmm. I have, like, entire site and scheduling oh. and all that. Uh, nice. And also, like, donations on stream and stuff like that. But right now, it's so hard to get partnered. Uh, it's Yeah, you it, have to have, like, a lot 400 of viewers, so I don't... It's, mm. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. The most I'm I got sure was, like, $40 five donation. Five viewers max. But, I don't yeah. know, like, that's something I don't do. I don't ask for donations, like, pretty much at all, and I don't charge for my coaching, because I'm not... I just want to go pro. I'm not looking for... I'm... <sighs> I, 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 I get what I can get. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to take my stream it. into something where it's, you know, where it's viable, but I don't I would know. love to go pro at this game. I just, I don't, it's just... I don't know if I'll ever have the skills to go pro. I just keep working at it, and we'll move up, but... I mean, you you're at the point where you're just grinding games, and you need to start focusing on on actual you know on actual mechanics instead of just grinding the games like you're saying. Yeah, that's what I've started to work on. But and you know, hard. you did actually start this week. It was actually really it was nice to see. Was good but I mean, I really it's like just that. I feel like it's just it takes so much work to actually it do it. Name one North American pro that can take uh, games off Koreans on a regular basis that is active right now. Name one. The Muslim. Name Muscles two. Not North American. <laughs> uh, He's effectively North American. Scarlet. Scarlet's not playing right now. She's yeah, not, Scarlet's she's in Korea. Oh, so that's not. She's, in that's, Korea. she's still a North American, and she was taking thought, games off before she. Oh went. yeah, that's right. She moved to university in America. But she still plays on Korea servers, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If you're gonna do that, then I can say Pult because he's in university in Texas. USA. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Stefano. Yeah, that's right. But it's it's oh, just the system right now. It's. There's no infrastructure in North America to just churn out pro gamers because it's also the cultural differences. Even in Europe, even in, in Europe and Korea, the culture. Now I could be looking like an ignorant Wasn't American that the right thing now. With the WCS about why everyone was so mad, it's because hey, this is how we were gonna start, you know, getting. Okay, uh, would you rather? Would you rather have eight like see an American tournament right now, and then have eight Americans get two would in the first round of WCS like <laughs> World, or would you yeah. have the top? The next, the next top eight Koreans competing against eight more Koreans that are. It, it's like, right, well, it, it's like if I were. Hold on, hold on. If I would make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but instead it, it wasn't that at all. It was like a ham sandwich. It's the same as saying it's WCS North America, and then it's nothing like that at all. There's I would, no. I personally like, would make rather sense have the logically. best players in the world competing in this tournament. I don't care if it's a I, world tournament. That's fine. I actually but have to say, I have to go with that. Listen, I, mean, I don't, I don't care where you're from. North America, I would love it's it. Called WCS. It is. I, I would I, love it if the, the the Koreans who are in WCS and A would leave Korea, come to WCS, like come to NA, and actually start playing on the ladder no. here. But they don't. There's only like two pros who really like cons like are playing on the NA ladder from Korea, and that's Beyond and uh, Pult. And Pult's in America, and Beyond is just fucking with Idra. So, <laughs> do you think you that do you think it. that foreign players should be allowed to play in the NBA? What? Yes. It's it's a, a net no, hold on, hold on, stop. <laughs> This is the <laughs> National Basketball League. This is this is an American so league, and we have foreign players that are allowed to play in the league. It's the same idea. We we do this all the time. Players, yeah, of but the they're best, U.S. citizens. It doesn't matter. 
It's, it, no, no, that's completely see. different. It's a hundred percent different. If you're a U.S. citizen and you've been naturalized, oh. that's completely different from playing from Korea. You're not yeah, even moving to the United yeah, States. Playing like, force. Force. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. That's my problem with it is that I, any, any players would get event. so much better if Koreans were here and playing on the ladder here. No, they would just they would fall to the same. No, you issue. can't compare the two. Okay, I, I, uh, I'll give you an example. I played against a, like a, an almost grandmaster level Zerg today. Like I practiced TVZ with him. I practiced for about four hours with him, and over the course of those four hours, I felt myself getting better at TVZ. Sure, like, and that's when why you play the Korean against better players you get better. And that's why the Korean infrastructure is so good is because they're always playing against better players. They no, the, the Korean best... infrastructure is good because they're, they're not, not going to come to America. If they right, came to America, no they would get worse because you lose half of the infrastructure. The infrastructure, the only infrastructure yeah. there is that they're actually, they, they, the, the infrastructure there is not that they're playing as better players, it's the amount of time that they're putting in. Uh, NA players are just so, like, they don't put in the time in That's comparison. not true at all. I mean, look at, just, look at how much the Muslim plays. You can see him streaming for, it's, you know, eight hours a day. the number one grandmaster in the world. Right. and Idris have, streams. On the North American ladder. On the North American ladder, right. Idris a mindset case, you're not. Can't look at Idra. Anyway. Okay, let's let's put it this way. There's Ooh. there's a multiplier effect here with the amount of practice you have times the amount uh, how good your opponents are. There's a, there's a cap like, let's say on a scale of one to ten. If you're playing against level ten opponents and you're putting the most work you could possibly put in ten, uh, just say ten amount ten hours a day. Obviously it's more like fourteen or fifteen. But ten times ten that's a hundred. Even if you're putting in, let's say the North American players, this is putting it uh, realistically like seven or eight on the level of players compared to Koreans. Even if you're putting in like a 12 or a 13, you're still getting less returns for more time. And yeah. at, at a certain point, you can't... Like, no one can practice efficiently more than 14 hours a day. Let's be realistic here. No one can focus more than 14 hours a day on improving at StarCraft. So past a certain point, if you don't have the best practice partners, you can't just have as efficient practice as having more efficient practice partners for the same amount of time would be. So, And Koreans are practicing literally all the time they can focus for with the best practice partners, and if you're practicing all the time you can focus for with subpar practice partners, then you're just not going to be as good. And, that's and to me, it. that is the Korean infrastructure, is the fact that they can just sit there for 14 hours and not worry about anything. But else. They don't have to stream. They're not required to sit there and, and, and show their practice. They can just sit there for 14 hours and focus on improving. Their meals are taken care of. They can sit there. That's why I'm so looking forward to the Root Team House, because I think Root can actually, can actually do something. I don't something. think that Root has enough players to do it. I think the Root Team House will help them, but I don't think that they have uh... enough of the high enough players to, to practice against. It's, yeah, it's the same situation, like, sure, you're getting more together, it might raise the skill level from, like, 7 to 8.5, but, unless they're gonna... The main okay. point is, is, like... Filter brings up a good point in chat, by the way. He's saying the that they have, they have, they have coaches in North, you know, in Korea, and, and there's nothing really like that in, 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 in NA. And if you look, if you see just the it's effect not... of, look at what Coach Park did to EGTL. In the first in the first week of him being there, you could see the immense improvement of just having his influence on the team. Like those coaches that they have there, they're 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 on the players' asses. You know, if the player isn't practicing, he's but in trouble. Quantic had coaches too. I mean, I don't. It's uh, who did who did Quantic have? I don't remember his name, but there was not a... not the coach. I mean, I mean player wise, because I don't. Remember they had a Quantic. lot of good players. Naniwa at one point. Um, Destiny. <laughs> Destiny, of course. Um, Hyun, um, although I think he was Hyun. playing, <coughs> yeah, he came back. I mean, but he was playing for um, uh, Sogosu, uh, Sogosu, I think. Um, Apocalypse, Flow, um, Matalisk, but Matalisk wasn't in the team house. Um, State, uh, Theognis, Sase, Illusion. Um... Okay, there's one player there that I'm hearing that routinely has done well in the past and do, does well in tournaments. Sase, of course. Um, and also, well, Sase's where, been where in was Taiwan, Sase? By the way. Like, he's been in Taiwan, and he's also lived in Korea. He knows how to practice the Korean mindset. Of course, he's not playing with the best players now, but he can at least bring that mindset. Any player, that's why it's so valuable to send players to Korea, even if they come back. I mean, I can't think of any examples off the top of my head, but having that mindset, some players just realize it's not for them. Like, Stefano went to Korea, he's like, I just can't do this. But Stefano, I don't even know what goes through that guy's head sometimes, but <laughs> <laughs> he's just like, I'm going to make things and win. I, What's your build? Oh, I just thought, I, 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 I kind of feel when I need it. Like, whatever. But it's. No, I understand. I do that also. Like, I kind of just feel out some things. 
That's just that's just thing. a person with a natural game sense. It's, yeah. There's always like gonna I, be prodigies or something like that. So like when I say I lose a Phoenix and they go Mita, like it happens so often that I go Phoenix and they go Mita, and I already yeah, have. Yeah, but that's range. just that's experience, not game sense. That's just you that, having. Well, that's what game sense is. Enough. That is what. Yeah. I mean. Having more experience allows you to develop more game sense. Is kind yeah, of. Yeah. No, there's a correlation. Yeah. Absolutely. And which is what I don't I know. I feel like all right. This is actually important. something that I've I've discussed like an immense amount because it's something that I had an interest in. Is 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 going. And and if you put me okay, let's say like in like people like I Marine, me, Winter, and and anyone else who was in you know, is a mid you know, a mid to high masters player in North America or anyone else, and they actually wanted to take the game seriously, and if you put us in a team house, what would happen? Like you put us in a situation we'd we get mid grandmasters and we tell call it a day because we like we improved, guys. Now let's go eat some pizza and watch TV. I mean, like, if I had a team house where I could do whatever I wanted, I'd become the best StarCraft player in the world, because I would dedicate all my time exactly. to it. Exactly! That's what's happening! I, and th but I don't, that's, think that's, I don't think that's possible, though. I don't think that you can just. I don't think you can just say, I'm going to have a team house, and then I'm going to be the best. No, I will because, practice for 14 hours a day, and then I'm going to be the best. If I didn't have to go to school, right, then say, I could. No, 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 even without school. What I'm let's saying say is I that, opened up my house, and I said, you pay me $500, I will take care of all your food, all of your, your, you know, everything for you. You're obviously going to have to take care of your own hygiene and shit like that. But I'm going to sit there. I'm going to make sure that you are doing what you need to be doing to get better at this game. But and, there are some and people who will, will not be able to handle that. There are some people who can't handle okay, and pick so up that mindset. Home, not interested in what I'm saying is that, okay, so let's say we bring in a Master's Terran or a Grandmaster Terran into your, into your house. How do you get that player to be better than what they are currently? How do you, with your right, well, current skill set, move them from where they are now to you know to something that's greater they you have to get the other players in the house to be as good as him first starcraft right. is a two-player so, game you can use so. him as first of all you can he can attract his own practice when you're in grandmasters you have access to things that are outside of you know the realm of masters because when you have that grandmasters tag you get automatic access to certain you know people are like oh hey let's practice you know i i you know i go to certain people and i say let's practice but for them to practice with me is a waste of time they sure. do it because they like me. Like that guy I was playing TVZ with today, like he just practiced with me just because he loves me, you know? <coughs> it was a complete waste of time for him. Well, how many points master was he? He's 1,500, but he barely plays. doesn't yeah. matter how many okay. points master. Honestly, I, it, everybody exaggerates the gap between the Korean, the North American, and European ladders. Why do they exaggerate the gap? Because I hear Diamond players saying, oh, you're playing on NA in Masters, oh, who cares? It, yeah, it exactly, dude. The, the reason, like, yeah, it, yeah, like, there's only, okay, it's probably, like, 200 people in Korea, or maybe 500, that are better than people in North America, so, when you play with latency, people are like, oh, it's a whole league difference. No, not at all. Like, if a GM from America goes to play on Korea, he'll probably be top 8 master on Korea, yeah. and probably ranked in the top 50 in the region, so he's only a little bit behind Korean Grandmasters, but it's... because of the latency, everyone... No, like assumes I, that it's a whole fucking league and it's not. That's not I even close. I thought that the whole the whole thing there it's was the that it's just. A, I thought everyone just everyone knows that anyone who says that is trolling at this point. It's because on the especially Korean with server, global play now available, like everyone are, can go and play on any server they want to. And I've been on Korea, players. and it's not that hard. You know, the players there are not better, but it's just the no, latency. Like, 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 like if I go play on Korea, like. I have like a lot of latency, so I will never get to Masters League on Korea because I simply can't cast a force field before I get Baneling Buster. I, I, I can't cast anything. I mean, yeah, you can't, you can't compare the servers. Or like while you're ever, streaming, at least. Yeah, you like if I was on NA... Because the, the players on Korea are much more aggressive. Like, I promise yeah. you, if you moved everyone from North America to Korea and we all played on the same server, the difference would be very small. Obviously, Korean players are a little bit better, but our North American Grandmasters aren't horrible. It's not that big of a gap. It's that there's the more of them. Though. That's yeah. why you get better on the Korean server, is because in Grandmaster, there are probably 150 players who are competitive for Code A. Well, yeah. Whereas on North America, 50? there's five, maybe. Maybe ten. And that's not including like the Koreans who play in North America and just take up a bunch of slots. <laughs> yeah, and also, like, Korean Grandmaster, like, every single GM is, like, extremely active. Like, you won't really see a lot of spots just open up. Or Marine King has, like, five of the top 15 slots. Or yeah. <laughs> why uh, does he do that? Is there a reason why he takes so many of them? Because he can. Just to do it? <laughs> uh, well, I guess I would, too, if I could, if I could take the top five spots. Or the top ten spots of, of Grandmaster, I think I would I would definitely do it. But. It's a, it's an achievement. It's like uh, League of Legends. Like some players, and you know, some they of get, them are him you know, off, spot one and two on the global ladder. 
Sometimes he just plays like Protoss and Zerg and just like gets like rank four Grandmasters because he can. Like that's just that's the level that he's at. So there's it's not there's nothing wrong with it. If you can get oh, no, not at all. four accounts, like why not? And that's just showing you how far and away some players can be better than even like mid Grandmasters playing on Korea. Like Marine King picks up any race, any matchup, he could probably stomp a hundred of the Korean Grandmasters, no matter what the matchup was. Uh, so it's just that's that's the type of skill gap you're looking at. Where in North America there's a ceiling, um, with Korea that ceiling's just higher. So, and another thing you have to think of is ceilings can be broken if there are more players of equal skill to improve upon with each other. You know, right? And so I think you can that raise the roof. That's what exactly. North America is making. <laughs> is just a is a focus practiced among the highest level players, uh, making its own meta game and changing the way that the meta game works. Right now, the the meta game is shifted by the Korean uh, by the Korean community instead of by the North American, and it would take a lot of a lot of time and a lot of practice to, to do that. It's not just one team house; it's you know having several or having you know. I think that the best way to do it, if if America wants to emulate and um, advance past the um, the system. Oh, great! I think Phil <laughs> just broke my overlay. <laughs> no, I'm going to destroy your. Your overlay. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Oh, Son of a bitch. You, you, don't, you don't have to, don't try don't to fix worry. it too much, Tombs, because I'll like leave your overlay in a second okay. and it'll unfix. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't want to type all out in chat. Drop so, it. Drop this knowledge. Just drop it like a tot. I, I'm going to drop it. Uh, the reason, okay, here's the biggest reason why the, the Korean scene is so much further ahead than the North American scene. Um, somebody like Katz is right on the money. When you start talking about the North American WCS and how it's all Korean players, and there's very few North Americans, uh, what's happening is there's no real infrastructure to bring new players into the scene, and there's nothing to really motivate North American players. So even if like within that first year, like very few people or half the number of people were watching it, um, because it was a bunch of like quote-unquote North American scrub players uh, that nobody really wanted to watch, there'd be people there that were trying to get better, um, trying to improve, trying to win that prize money, and they had something to work towards, so that in a year or two, they they're, they're going to be able to start competing with the Koreans on a global scale, as well as you'd have things like, you know, new people coming in, new sponsors trying to trying to get in, in, involved with, uh, with the industry, and you'd have new players and new people getting opportunity. Um, one thing I was kind of throwing out and mentioning in chat that I, I, I don't know if Winter saw, uh, but he's a really good example of that. He's somebody who, like, right now he's dedicating all his time to to StarCraft and coaching and stuff like that. And if Winter was in Korea, in a situation where he was one of the better players that was like borderline Grandmaster, um, he would have no trouble getting picked up by a pro team in Korea, going to their pro house, practicing with the best players in the world, um, and improving his own game and becoming kind of the next level. But in North America, the opportunity for Winter doesn't exist, right? Like he's yeah. you're not, you're not fielding offers from from pro teams left right and center to go and practice and play not with them. Not pro teams that have Filter. any sponsorship or actual physical backing. Yeah, um, right. Like so. you're, Filter, you're let me, talking let me ask about. You a question. Yeah. If I if I contacted Cats and I said to Cats, Cats, I'm willing to pay X amount of money to stay in the root team house and train and and whatever. Would Cats take that offer? It doesn't matter how much if Kats money. Does or not. Like you're not. It's not a like the root team house is not. It's one team house out of I don't know how many, and it's still like it's it's going to be a bunch of established group players. There's not yeah, going to be. It's, probably, it's that there's two team houses in North America. One of them doesn't even exist yet. There's just there's right now there's just Evil Geniuses. There's no there's has, clarity. There's uh, so clarity. clarity. Is it is it there? Is it established? Yes, it's yes. established. Okay, so but I it didn't has know like that. half Korean, so that's smart. Yeah, no, but Clarity, I'm I'm looking forward to Clarity. I think that yeah, but like they're... these are like even the root team house isn't. A, a Korean team house. Like, a Korean team house is not, like, five or six guys playing and talking StarCraft and trying to improve. Five or six guys a, Korean, a Korean team house is 15 people with a coach on a schedule practicing and playing pretty much the whole day. Right. And not, right? And and not it's louder. not. And, 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 like, yeah, and you're talking about of those 15 people, like, five, six, seven, eight of them are people you're going to recognize that have played in Code A, Code S. The other guys are all guys that are chipping right at those guys' heels. So when somebody like Parting is playing in Code S, he knows there's another Protoss on his team that is almost as good as him, trying to make his name and make his mark, right? The Root Team House isn't going to have that. People like um, Winter again as an example. Right. He's not... I mean, yeah, like, Winter is not going to go to the team the Root Team House and start pushing the Root players, because um, that opportunity is just not going to be there, right? 
And like, I don't know about you, Winter, but if you had, let's say you you totally reverse this and, and throw it and say you're you're Korean and, and I am comes up to you and says, hey man, like we've seen a lot of your play. You want to come to the state of the team house for a couple of weeks? See what you do. Um, you're gonna you're probably gonna jump on that opportunity, right? And then I am sees how good you are and you stay as like an I am B teamer for a little while. Um, you're gonna get better. Like that's gonna be it's, way better than any ladder would ever give you. It's not it a goes, North like. American ladder versus a Korean ladder thing, right? It's it's nowhere. Everybody says that, but it's nowhere near that. Like the North American ladder is chock full of people that are um, like really really good players, but they're not like they're not they're not they're gonna not get refined, an opportunity, right? Either. Like you look at somebody like um, Kane. Kane is was number two on the North American ladder. That's what it took for him to get on with a pro team. Right, like your your average Kane is pretty much player the, that shows do you think that was do, that does anyone know have, if Kane was offered anything previously and 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 declined or was it completely? He was on Pulse at some point. I don't know yeah, what that was. There's but. only like there's really only if there's what Team Liquid, uh, there's Root Gaming, there's Quantic Gaming, there's uh, Evil Geniuses, um, there's Complexity. So there's basically five major pro teams or what I would call a major pro team, right? Um, that have outside of Korea, you mean? Players. Yeah. Outside of Korea, that have competitive rosters, um, I don't even know like if Complexity is like cutting their StarCraft team too. Competitive? How many? How many of those competitive rosters involve majorly Koreans too? Is the thing? Yeah, right. it's a huge percentage, right? Like, so if you're talking about, um, if, if you had a North American LCS or not LCS, a WCS that was just North American players, all of a sudden a whole bunch of new people are, are going to start getting opportunities. Um, as happening? things centralized, like you look at um, EG's moving their team house to either San Francisco or LA. Um, if if more teams start putting team houses there, um, there's more of an opportunity for people to to kind of move out and and grow. Then things are going to be better. Um, the only major thing is like a, a, a cultural <coughs> problem. Like Koreans don't mind going to a team house where you have four other people in your room and basically no privacy, and all you do is play StarCraft. That's, that's the culture, too. That's it's the like, culture, right? The North American culture is, like, I have my own room. There's nobody living with me. I get to chill out, do my own thing, um, and nobody's going to bother me. Yeah. I'm free, if you will, to do right? what I want. But it, if, you, if you had a major North American team say, like, we're going to, you know, we're going to house, like, five or six of our best players at this team house, and then we're going to house, like, ten more guys that are in GM trying to, trying to make it, um, we're gonna house all these guys, and they're all gonna live together, and it's gonna be close quarters, and it's essentially gonna suck for um, the people <laughs> living there. That team, I guarantee you, that team would have the best players, um, the best quote unquote foreigner players, easily within like six months. It's yeah. just something like that's not gonna happen. Um, and Blizzard's screwing this well, up, so we have so many Koreans. Well, there's so many Koreans in WCS. Why would you want? Why would I want Winter on my team? Like, what does he provide? And it, again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not picking so on you at saying, all. Like, I, I like I, your, I your stream. Oh, I, I am not I even close. I, I, player. I, I am not but even it, close to competitive. Like. I mean, you're a perfect so, example of somebody that could, you know, <laughs> when given an opportunity, might be able to to take your game to the next level, right? Like, like you have for, that potential. Yeah, but, well, but you're, the you're, only you're way that happens, level. the only you way that North America gets to that point is a huge cash influx for for a team to be able to support it. So basically, it's a cash twenty-two. Is that that's not going to happen? Because right. Well, no, it, it's what it is, is Blizzard screwed up with the WCS. It should have been North America only, regardless of the fact that um, the viewership would probably be down. Also, it just needed to be supportive of the North American scene. What, what Riot did with the Legend scene is, is genius, because not only does it shelter people from the opinion that the Koreans are all way better, and they are, Look what happened uh, in the esports scene. You you have GGU and Vulcan and all those guys taking games off the top four teams. In the beginning of the season, they were complete jokes. These are, and these look are what happened. teams, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, all right. It, I mean, it, let, it, let me let me break it down. In the beginning, there were there were the four major teams. There was TSM, CLG, Dignitas, and I forget the other one. But um, and then there were the four the bottom four teams who were uh, were complete jokes at that time. And and now if and they they developed over the course because they were able to you know to set aside and just play the game full time they've actually developed and they you know they they started beating the the, the top four scenes dignitas and clg just both got knocked out of of the of well, the system. that's exactly okay. it and then like to even add on to that uh dignitas and tsm all of a sudden said oh shit like we can't sit back and do nothing we have to push it we have to get better we have to become a better team um, and Dignitas has improved a ton. Like they might even be competitive with some of the EU teams, right? Uh, you look at TSM. TSM kicked off Chaos, who's been on the team for two years, uh, because he, his attitude wasn't going to cut it anymore. He wasn't going to be like their star AD carry that they needed, right? Um, that kind of development only happened because of uh, 
because Riot essentially separated everything, right? Instead of you know TSM and Curse and uh, and CLG being comfortable being the top three teams, other teams are getting opportunities to come up um, and kind of push those guys, and then other players are getting the opportunity. Uh, I mean, you don't see that in in the North American StarCraft try, scene. Try and make a little point here, though. It's that. The scenes in Le in League of Legends have not really developed as far as they had in StarCraft in the sense that the, the, the Korean teams have all been around for about as long as the, the American teams. You know, Brood War, you know, the Koreans already that, have that's not even, that that's established. Not even, yeah, that's really true for Brood War, yeah, that's that not true for League. The yeah, League teams least. have only been about a year and a half. And also, exactly. um, that's my point, is that, is that yeah. they don't have that, that, that same uh, reputation. Hold, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. They but will. I, like you, just wait till like as soon as no, they uh, will. guys, 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 guys. The second it goes to to worlds or whatever, the Korean teams are just gonna smash everybody. It's exactly yeah, like, what's did, gonna did happen. Did you guys see NLG Dallas? Like the KT Rollsters B team for League of Legends. No, it, it's not their B no, no, it's team. Just, that's it's actually the, one of the best teams in Korea. Yeah. It's, and that it team is actually that team got smoked at the start of the OGN championships. Like the Korean teams are just gonna come out and start wrecking everybody because you have teams like. Teams are good. It's not even, it's like in StarCraft, you have uh, Kespa teams, and then you have non-Kespa teams, right? And all the best players right now are coming from Kespa, uh, because they've, like, they're... Well, that's because all the ESF, the, 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 non, the players that the non, switched over were all the B-teamers yeah, the, from the Kespa teams. Well, that's true, but the ESF teams were all, like, ladder practice, ladder practice, like, very little coaching, ladder practice, ladder practice, not practicing against each other. Because that's they were how practicing the scene more than anyone anyway. Yeah, and they were winning, so. but... When you had the Kespa teams come over, all of a sudden you have people that are, are, are getting coached nonstop. They're getting coached on specific builds and stuff like that. Um, so that's why you have Kespa player domination. It's not just guys like Flash. They're like, we're obviously going to come over and rape everybody anyway. Um, there's lots of good Kespa players that are really, really good that are coming over, it's, right? So it's, it's because it's, they have the Kespa teams have such a good standard and a setup and tons of money behind them. Like, but, you know, SK Telecom is one of the biggest. Uh, companies in Korea, right? You know Samsung Khan. Like you have huge names and a lot of KT you know. Yeah. Like I love that those are all you know comp they're, they're huge companies and that esports is. You know I'm waiting for the time where we get like a McDonald's team. Well, <laughs> uh, Startail is apparently it's rumored to sw be switching to Red Bull Stars. Uh, in the really? near future. Yeah. I mean, if I they, can see that though switch, because like, Red Bull they, they sent Bomber skydiving, man. Like that <laughs> legit. Like they love Startail. I'd say sending four or five players across the ocean to win tournaments would even be like a bigger drain on their resources there. But no, but Red but Bull just has the money anyway. Like is that it on is how okay? North American players are not as good as Korean players. We know that. Now Korea has the advantage. I'm just <laughs> I'm just I'm gonna go through it here. Korea has the advantage because they've always been the best players. They have started as the best players. That's just how it is. We have to accept that they're going to be the best. What? from a business perspective, is the incentive to sponsor American players to try to train them to even be competitive with the lesser Koreans where you could just sponsor the best players in Korea and say, it's not even, well, these are the best players. What's the, what's the even, business advantage? It's not a sponsorship advantage? thing. Like, somebody like um, in control, um, if you measure him as a professional, he's not very good. If you measure him in terms of his dollar value to sponsors, he's probably exactly. like top two or three. But he's... Right? That's, that's Then we can't be... Yeah, using the like, same argument, it, you know. yeah, but the, the but audience that's, but that's why, is there. It's that's just why there's no EG, infrastructure. I mean, but isn't that why, like, that's two teams, different the arguments. foreign teams are such a are such problems? Because in Korea, if you're not performing, you're getting kicked. In NA, it's 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 all about the ROI you, for the investment. You have to perform there's nothing to compete like, entertainment. Like there's, like, there's, like, there's no, where's the incentive? It's Katz said the same thing. Well, I think like, now it's why, here. Why, I would, think... why would Katz try to get a, be a better player? Katz is really good, and I like him. That's... But what, where's his incentive? Thousands of people watch his stream. That's... Um, he leads so, through okay. gaming. They're getting Naniwa. sponsored. What's Naniwa's motivation? What can he win? He just, Nani was a cold, stone face killer. Yeah, that's exactly. the motivation that's that no one has. It's the same thing I, I, us, want, I just want to be the best. I want to be able to say I that's can not take enough. anyone there's no, down. There's only a few people that are ever going to do that. No, yeah, there's like, some people... He doesn't, it's not like Naniwa and Huck have the infrastructure to even do it, right? Like, Huck had to go to Korea. He wasn't going to do that in North America. So did Naniwa. Yeah, same with Naniwa. It's... It, right now... North America, like, this is why... This is why I get 100, 200 viewers... My filter gets hundreds of viewers. Why I Marine, why Two Mess, they get hundreds of viewers from North American viewers, and 
top 20 G like a title top 20 GM Protoss gets 10 because that's how North American viewers that's how you get return on investment in non Korea because we they play, people know that we don't have the skill we like, we are not the best players so we have to work with what we have um, is the argument now how do we develop that or is the argument how do we become the best? Because those are two you. completely different arguments. The argument is we can't develop it because they, because WCS screwed it up. The, we we can't develop do, it because it's think, not. There's, do you think that there's not going to be any improvement? Not. No, guys, guys. Man, so cloud, so okay, well, off. here, let me. I'm I'm gonna get off the call in a sec because I'm screwing Tomb's thing completely and it. screwing Hold the on, show filter, up. Yeah, I know. I think he just fixed it, filter. But um. Like here, here's a simple question. Like, name one foreigner from North America that's been uh, made an impact and picked up by a pro from team in the last year. Uh, from major. North America, Kane. In the last year, major is Brood War. What? Kane. So we got one. Major's from Brood War. Like uh, he is old, man. I see what you're saying. Killer. Um, yeah, major was on six. Sterling. Six. Killer's Killer been around like, forever. Yeah. Name another one. Like who's who, where are these? Because like, there's Masters. kids picking up and playing StarCraft, right? There's all yeah. kinds of kids picking up and playing StarCraft, but who's picked getting up picked up? Yeah. Like, who's getting that opportunity to become, like, you know, have their stresses taken away and become the next good player and put in the practice? Suppies? And having the infrastructure to have people um, put them together. Suppy? Suppy's, Suppy's been... He's about a year right now, Suppy. Sasquatch, and he's still in school. Asan, um, yeah, but didn't hasn't Suppy Starlight. been playing since, like, Brood War? Yeah, yeah, and you know how Scarlet got that, that opportunity? Scarlet straight up oh, went out and won to play him. Went to the went to IPL and I read, beat I read Cat's thing too. I know. I read, I read that also. That's the only reason Scarlet got an opportunity. Like who else? There's got to be more. Like you want to start looking at the list of Koreans that have come out in the last year. That's exactly the point I was about There's to make. There's tons yeah. of them. Absolutely so why tons. Do you think that is? Like I mean, life didn't do jack why do I think that until is? the last year. Infrastructure. It's the infrastructure. So it's, it's like what it's assembly, like, assembly yeah, line versus individual construction. Like, what about, it's what just about, gonna be more efficient. What about Europe? How many guys in Europe have done this? <laughs> they have a higher infrastructure for it as well. Europe is also you know, everything's Europe more actually, concentrated. Europe is a lot closer <laughs> than have, North America. But there's they, still like nobody coming out of yeah, Europe. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen. I'm telling you, it's it's about that infrastructure. Just as Winter was explaining before, when you have the best players to practice against, you're going to have better practice. So if I practice for one hour a day, if I only have one hour a day to spend on practice, and obviously one hour is not enough, but if I have one hour to spend on practice, is it better to practice against a Silver League player or a Grandmaster League player? I mean, that's, I mean, that's obvious. It's not even... At Platinum League, neither is going that's, to help. If you have 12 yeah. hours a day to practice, which one of them is better to go against? It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is that one hour of practice, one, one commodity of practice, whether it's an hour, 10 hours, 14 hours, whatever it is, if you're I spending think that time, the AI is better. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying <laughs> is that if you're going up against a worse player, if you're going up against somebody who doesn't have the skill to play this game at a high level, then that practice is wasted time. That that one hour exactly. Of practice, that's why Koreans don't practice with Americans. Right. So instead of instead of saying, okay, well, I'm going to practice with other grandmasters on the NA ladder, that's like saying I'm going to practice against a silver player. If you have the ability to play against. Uh, GSL Code Ask Champions. If you have the ability to play against people who are playing in Code A every every time I, it comes I around, think, I think it's more important that it's not Silver or Grandmaster. It's that do you have the ability to play against someone who can beat you, but you can still learn from. And if you're the if you become the best in North America, you don't have access to people better than you. But that's While on Korea, mean, there's that's always what someone. With America, it's that's when you go to Korea. Even that though, there's literally no, there's no fresh blood coming in at all. It's all yeah, guys there's, that are, there's are there's established the around. There's no the fresh blood. It's all people like me who are just like entertaining, but they're not winning anything. Like, do you guys do you guys know the saying <laughs> that if you're the smartest person in the room, then you're in the wrong room? Yeah, it's, I feel like that's what that that's exactly that's exactly I'm what you're like describing. That. Right, it's true. Yeah, I mean, even then, that's not necessarily true, though, because like I said before, if you can improve other players around you to get them at the same level as you so that you can learn from them, then you're going to create new blood that way, but it's a matter of getting to that point. Well, then, no, but then you're it's already... not even creating new blood, it's the new blood gets zero opportunity in North America. Well, not even new yeah. blood, I mean, what, How what do opportunity... Like, no. take, take, take mid-tier pros like um, like Theognis or Puck or... Puck or um, even to Muslim, I mean, 
Look at how hard it is for Demuslim, even with EG backing him. Well, he does have to... 10,000 viewers. That's what's no, important. No, no, no. Well, it's not even the 10,000 viewers. I'm saying, like, in terms of making it into... Um, Making it into one of these, like, into one of these tournaments. Even the Muslim can't even do it. I mean, there's not, who's like... Who's pushing... A... Who's pushing the Muslim, though? Like, literally, who's gonna take his job? Nobody. He's the number no. one StarCraft 2 streamer on Twitch. He's on the best team, probably, to be on, if you're a StarCraft 2 player. And, I mean, no disrespect to Quantic Quanti Gaming. Um, but EG knows how to market everything. No there's literally zero... There's, there's right? nobody... There's no incentive for the Muslim to get better. And EG doesn't have anybody behind oh, him. They're no. not even trying... They're not I even mean, trying. Why would EG? The Muslim, though, the Muslim feels like he's getting better here. Like he's, that's, he's no, no, that's fine. But, but there's nobody he... pushing him. Like if you had okay, let's say there's the Muslim 2.0 and Muslim 3.0 straight behind him that are practicing twice as hard, finding better practice partners than him, um, working on specific matchups, and like going into like let's say all the Muslim does is play ladder, and I love him, and I think he's probably the best player in a, in NA right now, exactly. even though he's from the UK and all that stuff. I really, really like him. Um, but there, there's just nobody pushing him, right? <laughs> right. There's, there's like, like, if he whole, had, if by, by pushing, while, by pushing, you mean coming up behind him Wait. and pressuring him? No, yeah. say there's, players are let's say there's him. somebody. Yeah, let's say there's a guy. Let's say EG has the Muslim 2.0 or or whatever they have behind him, a charismatic Terran who you know talks to his stream chat um, and is seeking <laughs> out luck. the best players in the world to play against in practice, right? And EG has like two or three of those guys behind him. Um, and they each and every single one of them basically gets paid like a quarter of the Muslim, so they want to take over his money. Right. He's gonna he's gonna bust his ass off. He's gonna be telling EG like, "Ship me to Korea. I want to be in the EG EGTL team house. I want to be getting Coach Park. I want to get better." But without those guys behind him, and there's no incentive for EG to even have those guys behind him, right? What? Then, like, why is he's not gonna he's not gonna continue to push himself? Uh, what is okay? What, about what is you Showcraft we, America is an amazing idea. A um, lot of we've already talked about this is what's up. This is why it isn't working. How do we change it? Let me actually let me. I'll, well, let that's me what pose, he was like, saying about WCSNA fucking up. That's what he was. Because saying. We, so that, like we do have winter wrong, here. But what do we do right? And you're winter. You're obviously a, a pretty good player, right? Like <laughs> let's say I'm, I'm no pro. I'm no semi pro. I just yeah, but winter. I, I let's play say yeah, well. but you're you're a good player. Winter, you're legit you, a good player. You put in the time and effort to perfect your play, and, and not necessarily. But talk I spend your chat. it talking to my chat and commentating well, exactly. instead of it, focusing on improving. Most of the time is the thing, because well, exactly. that gets That's me more viewers. Right? That gets me more coaching. That gets me more money. But, where I can play Starcraft. Let's say let's That's say you have let's say you have. Um, the opportunity with a team, or, or you know that's out there and available. What are you gonna do, right? Like for you, like for right now, the step from where you are to get onto a pro team is like 800 hours. Like you have to play a ton, get to like number one or two on GM to even get sniffed at by a pro team, and then you probably have to go to a tournament anyway and I'd prove that you can beat people at a LAN. I'd probably, right? if I just set and continue doing what I do right now, it's a lot more likely for me to get on a pro team as like. And in control, or a Maximus Black, or something like that, as opposed to a Kane, or something like that. Because Kane, as good as he is, as amazing as he is, he's probably not going to get any exposure for the next like three months till the next tournament when he like takes a game off one Korean and they get knocked out in the round of sixteen. Well, I'm streaming every day, I'm commenting, I'm like interacting with people every day, and that's just getting me further. And that's why I've been doing that. Like, I want to win. I want to go fucking win MLG. Who doesn't? Like, but is that realistic? Can I do actually really... continue to do that? Because you're playing. Okay, well, you're, like, you've you're been, even I Marine said behind. he wanted to be GM, right? Tomb said he wanted to be GM, and you Everybody. guys both said like, it, like everybody wants to be GM. Like, I would like to be GM too. But there's really like, there's not a whole lot of uh, incentive to to even make that push. Right. There needs to be there needs to be a structure in place where you're gonna find teams that are are gonna help you out. It's just, um, you guys just are going no to give you the ability to train and get better, right? Like my drive right now is What's to improve my stream and talk to people more, put out more YouTube videos because, like, a I'm already on a on a pro team in, in terms of exposure and stuff like that. Um, obviously not as a pro player, but like incentive to become a pro player, like it's just it's doesn't exist. I'd much I, rather be a teacher and stuff like that or a caster. Um, I, I'm sure the same like. Teams, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I have absolutely I a hundred percent agree. I have absolutely no incentive. There's nothing that drives me to be masters other than just my own preference that I would like to be a masters league player. Like right now I'm diamond. I could, you know, I could just stay at diamond for the next 
two years and just play at diamond and only focus on being entertaining i mean guys the the incentive no, if I told to become you better James... at the game is human nature like I want to be better. I'm a very competitive sure, person. Therefore, I want to be the best player in the world. There's better ways to improve, though. Like, I'll, I'll, we'll use, we can use Tombs as a perfect example here. Let's say Tombs. Let's say there's a team that, you know, if you practice for, like, a month or, or a month and a half or something, um, you know, like, a certain team is trying to recruit, like, five or six B-teamers for their team house or something like that. Um, and that's happening for all the different teams. Teams because WCS is coming up and they need more people. So they need like, you know, there's 20, 25 slots available um, to potentially go to a team house and improve your game and practice. Uh, the next thing when you practice tomorrow, is your army going to be, be hockey? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're going to start picking apart every single fly you have in your own game and you're going to work on your practice in a much more refined way rather than just like right now where you're like, well, I want to work on mechanics, but you kind of flop around and flop through it. When I play, it's the same thing. When iMarine plays, it's the same thing. Like, he dies to something. Like, I was watching iMarine stream earlier. He dies to something, and there's no real trying to figure it out or, or figure out what my flaw was. It was like, well, it's I kind of died for X and X reason, and it's really quick, um, but it's not hardcore picking apart your game. Right? Now, it's the same with, so same with Winter. I mean, what do you mean? Like, when I, when I lose to something, I'm pretty sure I know why I lost. So I just make sure I won't make that same mistake. No, yeah, but you but, continue but, to make that mistake. Same you're gonna make that mistake yeah. again. I, right, but I mean, it, it takes it takes time to. I mean, it's not like I say, okay, I'll never lose to a bailing bust again. Like, there's but gonna be instances where I'll lose to it again. That's the difference between you and somebody in Korea that's on a B team. No, no, no. I'm. They are improving no, fast. Because, like because... Pr practice is what makes you consistent. Like I know what I did wrong. It doesn't mean okay, I'm not gonna make the same say, mistake again. No, I'm. Let's say you lose to a bailing bust. You immediately go find a GM on your on your list on your friends list. Like, let's say I lost to a Baneling bus and I got Masan on my team. I know he's not doing anything. Um, am I hitting up Masan and being like, Masan, you're way better than me. Can you Baneling bus me, like, ten games in a row until I can stop that shit with my regular build? I don't do that. I don't get my friends to do that. I just go, no, I want to no go no on my stream, that. and I want to practice no, on my stream, and I want to play though. and have fun and work on small things. You don't things. do that because you'll lose viewers, because it's just like you holding a Baneling bus. Yeah, I'm well, going to hammer Baneling bus specifically, I mean, it's pretty simple. Like I, it's, this, is, this is a metaphor. Yeah, right but you now. die to it all the time. Like, have you had a GM go and Baneling bus? Well, no, like a Baneling bus was just an example. Like, I've never, I haven't been Baneling busted in months, and I don't actually lose to Listen, it. The most I do. Well, yeah, the okay, most so, I just, like, going to a okay, so for instance, I was it's on the like HGL, the push, right? I was I was on a on the team for Best Buy, and we were practicing every week for uh, for different matchups. And what we would do is that if you were playing a matchup, it was it was kind of like the um, the GSL format where you knew what you're what you were playing ahead of time, so you knew that you were playing up against the Zerg. You didn't really have replays because the other players didn't really play much, especially you know uh, just kind of the way that that worked. So you would. You would just play that matchup, and you would do the build that you were going to do in the game, or the builds that you were going to do in the game, and you would have them just pick it apart. You would have three Zerg players just attack you over and over again and pick apart your play. And I think that that's that's the kind of practice that you get when you're on, you know, when you're on a pro team or or when you're trying to get better. That's the type of practice that you do. It's not well, I'm going to go ladder again, and I I know I kind of know how to hold this thing, uh, this one thing that can destroy my build. I kind of understand how to do it. You don't just understand it. You practice that until it's an unnatural natural, where you your response to it is not the natural response that your body would make, but rather the the right response, and you just do it as an instinct. Mm -hmm. Wait, what was, what was? Okay, I think we're getting like pretty in depth into like one branch of something. We're talking about how what needs to be done to encourage people to do these sort of things. We know we we kind you know, of cats had it right. It's even like, simple. No, we, We've been talking about this for a long time. We really shouldn't be. It's like Katz said it perfectly. And if you haven't seen what Katz said, then I'm we'll go watch it because he articulated the point perfectly. If you let Koreans play in the WCS North American qualifier, there's not going to be that breakout North American player. So there's no incentive to get better at the game. So the North American scene won't grow. Um, they talk about it in the state of the game. You can't, you know, that's just how it is. Can I, I, I say already. something? Yeah, Katz's point is, is right on the money if you go check out the video. Yeah, I mean, we can't one up cats. Like he said exactly why it people won't get better. It's because cats they're fucking us over with the qualifier. Yeah, and and it's... lots of people are trying to blame like five hundred different things, but uh, the WCS, the way that's organized, is going to cripple infrastructure. Um, it's yeah. just it's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same thing. Like the root root is going to have the team house, but they're not going to fill it with like five or six up and comers. Um, on top of their pro players, which let's, they might do if there's a WCS. Now let's play devil's advocate here for a second. 
Why should North? I, oh, okay. I guess I'm gonna rephrase the question. In a I can way. I can play devil's advocate perfectly because go, go I, I, it, I am because I, I am like the I'm devil's advocate right heavy. here. I'm I'm coming at this from a completely different angle. You guys, all you guys are saying that you that there's no motivation for you to get better. But why why not? I'm I'm someone I would l just just to get better for me is such a pleasure. After every game that I lose, I want to go into that replay, right, see what it's... I could have done better, and I do that. And I get five five six viewers max because I'm not I'm I'm maybe maybe focusing exactly. on the game too much. I'm I'm not talking as much as I should be. I'm I'm losing that. But I'm just I, to get better to me is the greatest thing. I love getting better every week. I ask myself if I were to play myself from one week before, would I smash myself? Would I would I burn myself into the ground. If the answer is no, I did something very wrong. Because yeah, getting right. better is so good. How can you not? Look, when I hit Masters, have you guys seen the video of me hitting Masters? Hold on, hold on. But the, what, what we're arguing here is like, to get actually better, you'd have to be in a team house with a practice regimen. It's no, not about you going home as well. and at your I'm, house being like, I'm going to ladder for eight hours. That means nothing. No, but but I'm not at the I'm not at the level where I can I can't improve exactly. anymore from the slattering. Like there's so many people who are like, oh, I'm masters, I'm pretty good. Let's let's have an entertaining stream and let's beat like 54 percent of people on the North American ladder and call it a day. That's not. I mean, there's so many people out there. I, I I'm in that situation. I'm like, I like learning new builds. I watch streams all the time. I steal like I take notes on GSL at six in the morning. And, and I never I meant really to say like, on that, but. <laughs> I never meant to say that I'm not going to get better or that I don't enjoy getting better. I'm saying that there's no actual incentive. There's only the personal drive to get better. That's it. And that's that's okay. That's what it all boils down to. But, but your personal drive is only so much motivation. Uh, the difference between if you go to the gym and you work out by yourself versus if you have a, a personal trainer there, there are days where you're going to slack. There are days where by yourself you are just not going to hit it as hard as you need to or as hard as you would if you have somebody standing over you and telling you you're gonna do three more you're gonna okay well you did three more now you're gonna give me three more after that that's actually so accurate though oh and that's God. and that's the difference you know I can I can go out there and I can I can go to the gym every day and you know and work and do that and it comes down to my own personal work ethic and you know maybe maybe my worth work ethic is just as good as somebody with a trainer but I'll bet you that it's not I'll bet you that in. You'll uh, say it will be, but yeah. Here, guys, be. guys, I just linked the video of me hitting masters in the stream chat. Go look at it. On the North American it. server? On the North See, American server. Go. I'm sorry, <laughs> me hitting diamond on the Korean server was crazy. You should have been, you know, I wish I was recording that. Woof! But. That... Diamond on the Korean server? What? No, okay. I'm, I'm just making a joke. Hey! <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but, um, you know. Just that, just to work towards that goal for me. I I don't know. Maybe I I guess I was playing the perfect devil's advocate because you guys were saying, well, I'm I I when I'm not doing this, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Fuck. What was I? I, I don't know. I lose track very easily. I, that's why I'm such a great Starcraft player. I have like the the greatest ADD in the world. I don't know. Well, you're still yeah. in like the same kind of position. Like I I think probably all of us, maybe except Winter, in a position where, um. Our our main problem that's still crippling us is is still like a mechanical problem. Oh, it's still my problem too. I don't practice. Right? And it's still enough. yeah, and it's uh, well, still like that's so easy to fix. But isn't everybody's um, issue at some point like just that little bit of a mechanic? I mean, there isn't there? Yeah, like, that I mean, little bit. It's, until it's everybody beyond else a little bit of a, a mechanic, better. though. Like, but like, I mean, I like even Flash, one. like in in uh, in the last MLG, like, I mean, Flash wasn't target firing with Widow Mines. I mean, that's you know. It's because mostly playing Wings Liberty or whatever, but you know, it's it's one of those things. It's it's a little mechanic, but I think everybody can develop mechanics that are a little bit better. Uh, Jadon throwing Moodalists away to to Widow Mines is. Are you not you know, individually splitting your Marines? Then you still could do more. Like. No, no, right, I, right, right. I, I don't even I don't mean it like that. I mean like just just um, basic small mechanical problems to the point where we we're tackling like. Um, really tackling hard like a specific flaw in my, my build or the way I play. Uh, it's not going to be necessarily the most effective way for me to practice. Like I still have to get through all the uh, all the mechanical stuff. It's mm -hmm. <laughs> that's why I switch races. <laughs> that's why there's mm, like right now. If I went back as a player right now, pick any one of my races. If you took me right now in the meta game in Wings of Liberty and put me in GSL Open Season One, I probably could have gotten top four just because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I totally. Yeah, it's because the execution. You mean. It's not. Well, it's, PM is like 152. It's actually pretty bad. I mean, it's it's not about it's not about improving. 
it's about improving faster than other people, and that's what competition is, and that's what we were going over before, but I think that's what it boils down yeah. to. Because Korea, as a culture, is ahead of America, as ahead of any country in North America, with their culture that can facilitate this, it just makes it easier for them to have the tools to compete because they're not there yet in America. Or will they ever be there because of the way um, North America is set up? It's a huge country. You're not going to take someone from New York uh, uh, to L.A. easily for a tournament every other day. Where, what is, what is, the, what is the city? Dong Regu, which is his city's name, to Seoul. I'm, I can guarantee you. That's a shorter drive than ninety five percent of Americans to like whatever well, like team everybody, has that set up. Everybody lives in everybody lives in team houses in Korea and even to the point of um, there's schools like if you're a high school student in Korea and like you have a lot of promise as a gamer, you can go to a school that you basically just play games in. Like there's schools set up for that. Like, it, like, like straight up. Like, culture. like life is sixteen and he's still he's still technically in school, but he plays StarCraft at school. Right, like, and the problem is, there's a bunch of kids out there that are going to graduate from that school and and really have no, nothing to go forward with their life. It's like the um, like America has a huge problem with um, a lot of like impoverished youth and stuff like that trying to get to college through their football or through their basketball or something like that, but they really don't do anything with it. Um, and that's a huge problem in America. It's just, it's it's a similar situation in Korea. This is why, in it's my just opinion, to about gaming. we're all fucked all of us in terms of, of getting better is because we already have to catch up to people who are also getting better. Like if, you know, if Imarine wants to get, you know, into Grandmaster, he has to improve at a rate faster than the Grandmasters are improving, which is ridiculous. And also it's, it's, it's such a part of life in Korea, these, these games, you know, it's, it's already been in, yeah, you but know, there will, but the point of that is like, that's ever going to happen their, in North America. They're going to find their, no. their prodigy kids. Right? They're going to find the people that are going to get better really, really fast and get to the point where they can go out and, and compete in a GSL Code A or Code B or, or Code S even. Notice right? how we're like, using those as the global standard because they are the well, global yeah, standard. That's because it is, change. right? Yeah, the global standard league. But that's that can change if there's infrastructure here to find those kids, give them the opportunity. Well, I think but can't change that infrastructure. Than I think it's I think it's beyond just the WCS tournament. I think that that's only oh, one that's, one symptom. I think the WCS it, it definitely is way beyond that, but I think the WCS is what is going to kill it at least for another year until they fix it. I think I think what needs to happen as far as like team houses is that they need to all be in the same area. I think that that would make a lot more sense if the oh, team yeah. houses in America. Oh yeah, and that's why she's going to San Francisco, right? Right. But Clarity's in New York, and you know who? Do, There's the. You know. It's, well, it's New York the is New York, man. Where's Root putting theirs? Are they, they is it Florida? Are they, uh, are I they think they're California? living somewhere in California. Uh, yeah. Actually, close to where I live. Walnut yeah, Creek. Yeah, if they go to like, if they about. go to California, that's two teams, right? Right. And but then I with mean, those two teams already there, maybe Quantic, you know, steps in and says we want another team house. Um, team Liquid, I don't think will, because they're well, they're huge, but they're a smaller team, and they're. Will anyone do that until they show results, though? I don't know. I think that I think a team house is a quick way to kill a team if you have a, a new team. It's a lot of money. It's a huge investment to put something like that up. But you can't get huge well, returns without a, like a huge investment. Right, right, right. Look at Clarity. It's basically a new team in terms of that. And they I th they don't have any sponsors, do they? It's just that their owner is, is, from what I hear, very wealthy. That they're able to do what they're doing. Sure. But, I mean, at that point, it's a personal project. And it's yeah. not a business. And I think it's... that was part of the downfall of the first Quantic team. Was that it was more of a personal project uh, in terms of the sponsors and the way that that worked. Um, yeah. So, That's, you know, once you get bored business. with a personal project, you just wrap it up and, you know, and it's over. So That's that's how that's how do we make the North American scene more profitable to Well, EG has know, the right way to do it, but I mean, you know, well, EG is like they they nail metrics and all that. They know how to market everything perfectly. Yeah, but um, what's, not about what's winning. The, what's I wouldn't the even nickname like, here, of here's EG? the Evil geniuses. No, 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 no. What's their nickname like among the community until until Coach Park came along? What were they known as? Evil. Where talent goes to die. That's what they were called. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Um, Tim, why aren't you on the Heart of the Swarm category thing? What the hell? I don't know. I get. I keep getting knocked off of it. It's stupid. There's some Twitch bug that's popping hey, out of it. Hey, uh, Twitch admin told me to put it to not playing and then put it to playing because I just realized this whole time we weren't even on the StarCraft two category, so. That's that's a tangent, but that was kind of an important tangent because yeah, I'll do that. Got to no get exposure for the North American so, scene. Yeah, <laughs> like no one. The only people that are watching this show right now are people that home. have already basically came from my stream or went to stream or someone on Skype call or Tomesson's followers. So we 
Mm -hmm. Kind of fucked up on that. Yeah, it's Just a weird. little bit. I'll post it to Reddit. It keeps doing Quick it. Quick question. Quick question. Why, um... Why is it... Hmm, never mind. Well, Ask the question. Come on, man. Yeah, just go, man. It's, it's hard like, to spit it out. You've been quiet long enough. I've yeah, been very quiet, and I apologize. Let's go. But, like, the reason we're talking about it is, like, yeah, NA sucks compared to Korea, right? But, yeah. sure, we don't have, we don't have, like, the capability to establish a team house, but I think that's a lack of motivation in American society. Like, it's a cultural thing, because... I mean, as That's people, an entirely different argument, and we shouldn't get into no, that. No, it's not because what were we talking about earlier? We were saying then we what, can, what then happens we have in to talk about, houses, no, no, it's like, fifteen people in a on. small apartment. Like, and if in we're America, about Americans being lazy, no, no, as like, a mindset, you, we have to talk about like entitlements are, in America and like politics, and that's just like a, a whole nother conversation. Yeah, it's a whole nother. That's why I wanted to back out of what I. got Yeah, I mean, listen. But at the same time, is there is there an American mindset? Is that is that a thing? Yeah, like. There's is a lot of entitlements in America. We do not really. Spending. It has nothing to do with yeah. StarCraft, but yes, there is sort of a lazy mindset. The way we run the government, it encourages laziness. I, I get let me, that. Let me, let me ask you guys. If I, if I said, you guys, I found an apartment. I'm going to take you all in. You're going to have to live four to a, a, a two-person room. It's going to be bunk beds. I'm gonna, you know, we'll take care of all your food. You're going to all sit in one room for 14 hours a day and just and, and play StarCraft. How many of you would take that offer? I I don't know. Nobody. I structure. I want to do my thing. The I typical mean, American doesn't take America. that. I would say that the typical American would not do that. Like, I'm not and, American. And a lot of the Koreans would. It's, so. And I think, yeah, I think we just have to throw it over and say, Cats nailed it, and we're just kind of yeah. really you, beating it yes. over a dead horse right now. Yeah, that's, we that's really, how bad really it is. Have. Yeah. There's like 14 dead horses right now, and we're each simultaneously taking out multiple things and beating each other. Yeah, we should just all go to jail right now. I just a, a tear is being shed Jesus. by winter as uh, all these high horses are dying. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, I have plenty of those. But so, to summarize. Filter had the most concise version of this. Do you want to summarize Thank it, Filter? You, filter. Just like a couple sentences, I think, maybe to wrap it up. Yeah, um, basically with the WCS allowing Koreans in, um, it really stunts the growth of, of North American talent because it takes away the incentive for uh, teams to even even play in it because they're not going to win, um, and it prevents new young talent from being brought up and being brought through team houses and that kind of stuff. Uh, yep. Basically because there's no, no reason to do it. There it is. And I think Thank I think you. the fix isn't isn't citizenship, but I think residency would be fine. And I think that citizenship is a huge leap only because esports is so small. Like you're yeah. not you can't guarantee a living off of it. And that's what I was trying to say with the NBA argument. It's just that I I don't disagree that, you know, that there should be some kind of commitment, but I, I think that requiring citizenship is a bridge too far. I mean, there's just no money for most players. Mm-hmm. Nailed it. Uh, uh, Spot on. Everybody's reluctant to say any more on this because it'll keep going. <laughs> well, it will. It'll uh, definitely spitball. Well, by the way, Tomb, you fixed it. Kill it while it's white. You probably fixed it. Oh, did it actually? He didn't, he didn't use his like high lens flare version though, which disappointed me. Yeah, why didn't me. Tomb? Seriously. You like the lens flares, don't you? Yeah, I really did. You gotta, yeah. They added some class, man. They fit right in with the disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if I have it on this. All right. What other topics do we have that are? Well, we could talk about DreamHack in general. Um, just sort of different matches. How many? How oh, many um, players? Sorry, if we're talking about DreamHack, I'm gonna uh, go ahead and, and uh, escort myself out with Tombs here because I don't think Taryn really got to talk about that tournament, do we? Uh, we, we had Gumiho. No, that was let's amazing. Let's talk right? about how to lose to <laughs> round two out of sixteen. Uh, yeah, round eight. Yeah. I was so my sad about shoulders Paul. are getting oh burnt God. by oracles. Even just uh, thinking about DreamHack. Oh God! Oracles. Paul, yeah. no. And I don't see why they need a buff. Yeah, see, so that's sense. the thing. Like, I feel like if there was more macro games, then Terrence would have done better. But there was a lot of Oracle, not necessarily cheese, like but drops, like... aggressive play, I guess I should say. And that's I why I don't understand why they're getting a buff. A lot of Protoss took advantage of the fact that they have like 15 different openings they can do against Terran and just destroyed them. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's that's all. Doesn't doesn't go farther than that. I'm glad Blizzard is being really slow with meta game stuff though. Um, because yeah. we would have, like, if we had seen, like, an Oracle speed buff or something pre DreamHack, it would have been kind of, <laughs> I would have thought it was silly. But uh, with an Oracle you, speed buff and post DreamHack, like, mm, not a fan. 
Yeah, I don't I, I don't exactly see how Blizzard like extracts from the metagame, hey, we've been noticing a lot of Protoss players have been going proxy Oracle and it's been going really, really well. Let's make Oracles better. Well, there, I, I, whatever. I don't Blizzard get hasn't that. said anything yet. It's, they haven't um, no... done their balance update. I, so well, I get that, but they're thinking that's, about it. I mean, they made a forum post about it, which is kind of yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, but, but the forum the post was like two weeks, like, and they were testing it. And I like think a, they figured out they can't do it. They're like, it's on the table, and then the community kind of threw it off the table, and that's probably out right now, like like the Brill change. I don't think DreamHack, because DreamHack going in, you had a small representation of Terran as well, and also of Korean. Well, actually, there were a decent chunk of Korean Terran. It's not like top tier. But, but there it kind of just were like out. 23 Terrans. I mean, it wasn't like there were no Terrans. No, Terrans it's, just it's lost the same thing like that happened at MLG, right? Protoss, it, so. It's like when everybody at MLG, everybody was like, oh, Terran OP, because Terrans just destroyed the tournament. But it was like 9 out of the 10 Terrans there were like top level uh, Koreans, like it, Flash and Innovation. It's the and best players. And all like the Zergs the and stuff play. that got wrecked and like kicked out of the tournament were all foreigners. Exactly. So. True, you but I really just think. I still think in a Max is a bad tournament for balance. I think you have to. You have to look at GSO. What's I don't even really like talking balance is in terms of unless it's like a very broad brushstroke and something is clearly overpowered. Like the only thing I would say that really needs a tweak is like mutalisks. You would pick mutas over hellbats, really? Yeah, uh, well, I think terror. hellbats need a tweak too. But um, <laughs> I think hellbats are fine. I, hellbats Maybe themselves <laughs> aren't over. Here's the problem with hellbats: they're not overpowered by themselves; they're overpowered because of the speed meta back. Yeah. I, if they right, weren't that, that, the that's what it's not it's not the healing it's the mobility I, if yeah. you put a missile turret up in your mineral line and you have like three or four marines standing around it i can still speed boost on your mineral line and drop off the hellbats in time yeah and there's and nothing keep the you can do. out and keep the metavax yeah. alive and then come back later and, and if you them up. if you try to pull like let's say your protoss you try to pull like, probes <laughs> all i do is like i fly in with my with my metavac and as soon as you pull the probes then i speed bass speed boost and land on your probes and they all die you can't, you, you, there's zero you, counterplay option. It's similar to like Oracles, where once the Oracle's in your base, like if you're not already pre prepared for it, you don't have counterplay option. Do you have, do you put it one Hellbat per Metavac? You put two in, because two are no, one. No, 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 I mean, I'm saying is that the Oh, change? To, to change it? Well, yeah, it used um, to be four, so. That would just be stupid. No, if you have one, bad. yeah, that yeah, just would that, be. Then you'd have to make it think... You no longer do Hellbat yeah, drops. But that's well, people would just, just the way, change the way people they would just get the upgrade and then put a bunch of Hellions in, drop them off, and transform them. Yeah. Like Terran, Terran players have been abusing things the Blizzard didn't think they could abuse since the start of the game because it is such a weird kind of scrappy race that doesn't win straight up fights without playing tricky. Is that you can't a, like you don't a move and win with Terran? No, that's a good thing, but so I, I still think it needs to look at. Is there then really? I don't too. Yes, both there's players a huge team problem team. with Hellbats. Yeah, they don't they don't walk fast enough. They don't shoot far enough. They <laughs> they could use like a little bit more hit points. Like, I mean, actually, yeah, I could I could definitely agree with that. I think that we should we should up the cone to like a range six, so that when it when it cones out with that 180 degree cone, that it's just range six and it just up and they remove the Thor and make it cost a ton of gas. <laughs> Even that would be fine. I'm all right with that. Make it the freaking Terran Ultralisk for all I care. <laughs> <laughs> the ultra list. No, like Hellbats are they're broken in a sense, but it's just because of the way they work with meta I don't know. I, I don't like broke. how they can instantly end the game with and like your counter your level of counterplays. You have to kill the meta bag before they even drop off. Yeah, like, and, you know that's and exactly it, 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 it here's I would like to see like maybe a cost increase or something on them because at this point, like when. Strategically, when your strategy is, I'm gonna fly these hellbats in, lose a medevac, and like have two hellbats die, and that's still a worthwhile trade. Then something's a little bit wrong. You think they should? It's not fast? like you're I, like I have no problem with if you're flying the medevac in, you're dropping the hellbats off, you're skillfully in microwing and picking them back up, and you save all your units and you fly away. That's cool. You flat out outplayed your opponent. Um, it's not like he doesn't have counterplay options to to do that, but. When you're talking about like suiciding the entire drop, and that's worthwhile, then I, I don't think that's reasonable mm. at mm. all. Like I, I think it's reasonable to say that that's not. When I can put something in a medevac, drop it off, lose everything, and it's still a worthwhile trade, pretty much every time. The only situation where it's not is when you have like a bunker and a turret and stuff in your mineral line. Then, um, yeah, it's a little unreasonable. Yeah, you're saying it's like too much of a, it's so it's kind of like a muta versus muta situation in TVT. I mean ZVZ, where it's like, sure it works and both players can do it. It's just a tactic that that isn't really 
agreeable no, because, for either player. Because if you go if you go a one racks expand into a one one one, you can just completely shut it down. Like you go a reaper expand into a factory, you just make a couple of widow mines and a and a. Um, it doesn't uh, shut it down at all. It, sh it, sh that, it that completely shuts it down. down. I can send you replays of it shutting it down. Yeah, but I can show you replays of yeah, but that's like. It. I can, like show you replays of me not making any like, I can show you replays of me not making any hellbats winning TVT. I can yeah. show you Beastie Cutie getting the drop out at like 6.30, 6.15 before you have any defense up and you're getting smashed. Yeah. Right? I, like, there, it's not a, it's not a, if you do this build, like, that build is going to stop, like, putting Widow Mines up is going to stop working at a certain point with it. Yeah. So I, how does like, that happen? In order to defend against that, you. you're talking about... Okay, but let's say you are doing like widow mine and you're putting, um, you're putting up a missile turret or whatever. I can just drop off my hellbats away from your, away from your missile turret or whatever. But hellbats aren't, and aren't effective. At long. They don't trade well with marines unless they're being dropped on top of them because yeah, marines will. Yeah, that's the them. thing is they will drop on top of the marines. Not yeah. if there's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's saying that uh, I'm not going to drop on top of your marines because of your widow mines. How many widow mines are you going to have at seven minutes Three. or six forty-five? So where are they? They're on the edge of your base, and one's near your mineral line, and you have two turrets already. Oh, then I'm miss. then I'm fine. Then like it doesn't even I matter. Play if around them, and I win. Like you can shoot my medevac out of the air if you have all that stuff because you just invested so much in defense anyway. So mm -hmm. how do you change? Then it's already won. But the, the no, because I have one rex expand. So I'm telling you, it's a one rex expand build. Who's going one rex expand in any matchup though? Because it's a reaper. Yeah, you can do a hellbat drop in 38 oh, minutes well, off two bays. Right. Like there's expand builds behind it. Yeah. Uh, there's exactly. the, you can like the the actual the hellbat drop, if you go eleven barracks, eleven refinery, you get two reapers into his base. If you out, if he if you out micro his two marines, he doesn't even get his factory up and you kill him. Like there's really good counterplay options against it. Like that that is literally how it works. Because you, you when you do a hellbat drop off one base, you get two marines and then you get a factory up and you try to get a, a Hellion out. If they go twelve racks, thirteen gas, the reapers are too late to stop it. But if you go 11 barracks, 11 gas, your reapers get into his base, you can out-micro him, and he can't stop it. I, it's physically impossible for him to win the game at that point. I, I've i been using uh, three reaper double expand most of the time, unless they're going for... If they're not expanding, then I only expand once and add on extra barracks, but I just go three reapers. And if they try to go for like a reactor factory or a factory early, I can literally just get in and pick away at their marines, because they won't have enough marines, and they're forced to go for hellions first or something like that instead of hellbats. Yeah, but you get the winter just cut off. But you get the two hellions up first, and then you go for hellbats. But the that. the first reaper gets in to see if they're making hellions yeah. or not. So <coughs> from there, it kind of snowballs. If you lose your first reaper, then you're just fucked. But I've never had a hellbat drop come off against me because I'm always in their base, seeing that they have an armory, seeing that they're making hellions or hellbats well before they can even have the option to be in my base with it. So by that point, I can have like a widow mine or a siege tank out in order to defend it. It's a very active way of like scouting. But it's completely reliant on getting. Yeah, like you, you can do like there's counterplay. I just, I just dislike the fact that the little mines can just like smash in on stuff and wreck everybody. Right. So it's many. it's. I or mean, the hell bad. I don't mind. Both go hell bad on hell bad, and then. No, no. I, I just mean like. The hot, risk reward hot, hot, on hellbat drops is too high. It's the same thing with mutilisk, right? Like risk reward on them is is stupid. You yep. can like especially against Protoss, like I can you can have like five high templar and I just fly up and as soon as you storm me, I move a little bit. You well, have to hit I think, three I think full PBZ, storms to kill my mutilisks. Like if you're losing oh, no, the mutilisk PVZ, it. it just happens that you didn't scout them because Phoenix are are just literally amazing against a ranged Phoenix with the upgrade. They're just so amazing yeah. against Muta. That, I, mean, I think it's a could problem. Dominate with all air units that Zerk has if microed properly. And not, with the not against corruptors. Back to hell. Hey, Hundred percent against corruptors if microed properly. We got Mario properly. in here. We got we got. Well, when you say possible. micro properly, you mean like I have 900 APM because I'm macro. You don't need 900 behind. APM to stack yes, them. Yes, like microing back. properly against corruptors and because corruptors. I, are so I don't I don't think Phoenixes can be corrupt. Especially with yeah. Corruption. Hey, if I awesome. could, uh... they can't touch them. Hey guys, though, wait, 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 we wanted to get Mario in here. They outrange corruptors, and Mario. corruptors have to stop the shoot. If I could get something thrown in on the hellback conversation, I I agree with Filter 100 percent in the specific area that they are overpowered with the medevac. And uh, one example I have to show that really 
is uh, you can have plenty of marines to fight it off, it's just that they drop on top of the marines. So one of the ways that I've been countering that is I actually place a bunker and a missile turret in each mineral line, and it will hard counter the strategy entirely. I just move my SCVs and the Hellbats die and I come out completely ahead. And you just go marine tank, no problem. It's just that once the medevac is out of the equation, because not only will the marines fire it really well, uh, the marines are safe, and <coughs> the that die to the missile turret, it's the easiest thing to stop. Yeah, because without the without the bunker, the, the marines actually just melt on that first uh, that first volley from all four. Exactly, yeah. But with the... But see, that's a problem with synergy. Then. So is Marine, really uh, marines aren't the answer, then? Like, <laughs> marines really are the answer. It's just that yeah. not a lot of people have thought about putting their marines defensively them. in the bunker. Uh, you no, can't just split them. Split against the Medivac? I mean, Hellbats? They're just like... Yeah, the they, biggest thing that would fix this... I don't this? know, it's, it's all about positioning. You can, you can okay, use Mario. the bunker, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, Mario is the best player here. Well, <laughs> yeah. How would you fix yep. this, Mario? I would make it so you cannot unload or pick up while the speed is going. Um, yeah, that but would then fix can it. You, can you manually can you turn it speed? off? Yeah, what he said. What do you mean, turn, turn it off? Can, can you stop speed, speed in the middle of speed happening? No. Um, that would allow you to think before you use it, and you can't just, like, if a person sees you speeding in, you can get a, a pre-split and still get away from them. You still have, like, that one extra half a second of the speed right as it stops, <coughs> as the person's army start dropping, but it's not as critical because you can easily move away. Is that it's just, specific or everything? I would say ev everything. everything. Everything, including bio. I'm actually And sure. Mario comes into the conversation and solves really head of XP idea. and OP. <laughs> of course he what, would. What about, yeah. let's say they just they bad, delay. Is. There's, there's, okay, so there's an easy fix to, the, to the, that in the sense of, so they just I press like the that. speed boost, wait a second, and then go in. Yeah, but if they speed boost... The, the point of having the speed boost is that you can catch up with whatever unit's running from you. So if you don't have speed boost, then you don't really catch up. If you try to run after a marine that, that's on the ground uh, with a medevac, and it's just the regular medevac, the marine will kill it as it gets closer. Before right. the... Before the like, I, don't know if you've, like, I don't know if you've seen, like, uh, watch, like, Mario's stream or, like, really, really high-level good Terrans. Um, but the all basically all the hellbats do is they drop out of the medevac, they fire, they get picked back up, the medevac moves them, they drop back out. It's like basically instant, and it's micro that's so far ahead of anything I can do. Um, but that's why you're for really really good players, and that's it's why like, they, uh, that's when they start to get like, if you've ever had it happen to you, that's when you start to be like, oh, okay. It's like when Leia drops the uh, the Colossus, or Puck now I guess, but when Puck drops the Colossus and does the micro, it takes a shot picks up and then comes back out um it's that kind of it's that kind of really high level um ability to load unload except it's done with hellbats which are probably I... better so but but all right so let's say i scan ahead and now now blizzard has patched it with mario's suggestion okay i save a scan so now i know the positioning of his units in the mineral line or where his marines are i press the boost and i time it so that my boost is going to end when i am over those units and i give a little bit of leeway in terms of oh he sees my medevac coming and starts moving away he'll still be able to move away though i mean the, the difference there would be that um well if you see it you know if you're not paying attention you would be dropped on top of naturally but you know that the moment you see a speed medevac coming in you have a few seconds to not only split up, uh, you know that the medevac can't just... It, it's, the problem isn't that they drop right on top of and do the first drop on top of the units, because you can be split up for that. The problem is that they re-pick back up, because the medevac isn't dead yet, and then speed boost on top of you, and then keep dropping them repeatedly, because you can't kill the medevac and the hellbat while you're cutting at the same time. So this would stop the second and the third portion where they try to pick back up and drop on top of you. Because the moment they pick up, I mean, they're still going to be moving slow. They can't just speed on top of you and you can pre-split again. So the right. problem is that you can't, spl you don't have enough time to split up your units the second and the third time or, or the fourth time, you know, and this really slows it down in that regard. <coughs> right. I mean, I can't argue with you. I really, I, I'm, I'm not, I like I'm it. Not it, it, it creates that, it creates that like extra, it's like, if he doesn't speed away, then he can drop like the widow mines out or something. For example, if it's a different situation, like against Protoss, he can drop the widow mines out while he's moving. But if he does speed away, I can chase him down and not worry about like hellbats getting dropped on my head or something. Yeah, and it would Wait, take so a lot more micro to do too, because unless you're really paying attention to it, you're never gonna time it perfectly. 
so. You should, uh, you should put that suggestion in a blizzard. Even as a Terran player, I like Go that. put it in the blizzard mailbox real quick. Like, I'm sure they'll pay you. Wait, hold on. Are we doing this just for Hellbats or what? That's like, good for, like, no, 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 it's for it's everything. Maybe for all units. Like, but how would that affect, like, example. PVT? It like, completely. What about drops? I don't even care if it, if it completely effect. ruins PVT. We'll it didn't, stop. It, it doesn't drops. ruin it. It stops like really stupid stuff. Like what I like it's to like, do when I do a widow mine drop is I fly in until your stalkers or whatever is going to be shooting at my medevac. Then I speed boost, drop my widow mines away from your units, and then continue on through to your main or natural depending on what side I came in. It makes it harder to drop. Right. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. that, but like, and I wouldn't be able to do drops, something like, like that. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of? No, like, I wouldn't. No, because you still have the ability, I'm in PVT to bait out a Protoss army, then pick up and go into their base. You still yeah, have the, that ability. It's still the there. biggest right, thing but, about bio drops is that uh, your ability to get in between the bases. Um, you know, it, it really doesn't affect it too much, simply because with a bio drop. You know, you, the biggest time you use it is to either get away or to get to his base. You, you usually just drop off in a corner anyway, somewhere out of sight, so they're not paying attention. So there's no real big risk in just rushing in there. Um, if you pair this with like a, maybe a little bit of a nerf to Protoss openings, uh, combined with the medevac drops and Protoss being a little bit more stable with their openings, so they can't pick like one out of ten random cheeses, I think the matchup would be perfect for Bio. Hmm. I'm trying to think how this would affect TVZ because there's so many situations like the entire point of going mutas in TVZ against like Biomine is to stop drops. But no, even it, with the it speed boost, affect that though because with the speed boost you're just trying to get away from the mutas. Exactly. I mean, you know, some of the yeah, time it's like I, to I get really away and see. also drop up Marines. It's not a big deal, but you're you're definitely faster than the mutalisks and you're you can get like I think the speed boost is like 10 seconds or something like that. It's not yeah. like a huge change, but yeah, I yeah. just don't get like how you know a drop would work in PVT. It's also for timing those drops too. Like, if wouldn't it make the drops percent. even worse than like a Wings of Liberty drop? Because I would know basically exactly where his units are going to drop out from instead of no. it could be anywhere. More so like, mobility like, for higher skilled players is never less usage than like having less mobility. I think it might like your your random like whatever Diamond or Low Master Terran or whatever it is like. He's probably going to lose a lot of stuff in drop ships because he speed boosts at the wrong time. But you're once you start getting into like the GM and the the really high level guys, like they're going to time it perfectly. And there, there's going to be a lot more skill of that. I think it'd even be more exciting because like the reason Metabax got the speed boost is to make the game more exciting. That's the only reason it, it's there. Yeah. Terran drops are already really good. They just wanted to make it more exciting. But if the idea is like maybe this guy's got an observer on it or he's watching it, um, he's going to time it out perfectly and just wait till the second the speed boost is off or just before and blink his stalkers underneath and that's more exciting that. than that like that's going to be way it... more exciting than um then right, like okay oh, so the terran just goes oh blink stalkers and then he boosts away right but let's say that like so i always put observers around my entire base so i know when drops are coming so let's say i have the observer i see the boost coming i know how long the boost takes he comes into my base and he boosts near me and let's say i don't put the stalkers on the edge so he comes in the boost is over, and then that medevac is dead because, like, he yeah, used absolutely. all of his boosts. Of but, but the boost would be over anyway. Right, so it, it would just be like a Wings of Liberty drop because, like, in a normal thing... What if he just drops on thing, the edge of your base? What if he like, doesn't like, boost on the way in, though? Like, nobody says he has to boost on the way in. He can just fly in, drop off, and then pick up and boost out. But like, then it would the, just boost and turn around. Like, those options are all still there. Yeah, the, the um, biggest just, complaint... Uh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Mario. The biggest complaint about the speed medevacs and the biggest strength of them is that you can be like, picture the map like Whirlwind, okay? Um, let's say they take their third base as the one closer to the middle, not the one along the bottom of the <laughs> edge map or whatever. You can be in the main base, pick up, and speed boost to the third. You, you don't automatically just start flying slowly to the third and then speed boost right on top of the third. No, because it's right there. The, the real big strength of it is that you can be from the main base into the third in a matter of seconds. And that's where this huge thing comes in. Now, um, by the time you reach the third base, most likely the speed boost is about to end anyway. And you can still use it for like getting around the map really fast, yeah. getting between bases really fast. The only thing it would really hit hard is the Hellbat drops and the Widowmine drops. But I mean, let's be honest. If you can get a few widow mines or hell bats in any matchup mineral line, and they're not paying attention for a second, it's destroyed. And every race could use it. Just a few makes more it seconds. a little bit harder to do that. So. Yeah, it just takes a little bit more skill to do it. Right, which is, I think, the biggest Never issue. Never a bad thing. It would raise the skill, the skill ceiling. So, yeah. I, I don't think I anyone think it would can make, really disagree with that. I think it would make the medevac 
boost, do what it's supposed to do, and make the game more exciting and, and more skillful. Whereas right now, it's more of a... Oops, I screwed up. I'm just going to pick up. Like, boost, <laughs> pick up. It's a get out of Muta's free card on those sometimes. Like. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Unless yeah, you're like Tombs and you fly the Doom drop into the Mutas, but... Right, you know, you, you do it how you want to. <laughs> yeah. You can even make it so you it's can pick choice. up units while the boost is going. You just can't drop them off. I mean, you, you can oh, even yeah, go yeah. halfway there. Yeah, I like that, though. I like it. I, I, this is one of the first times I think like, it's I've not seen a downside. I mean, are, are, so are we saying that, like, Hellbats and, like, normal TVZ engagements, like, that's balanced? Yeah, that's and... totally fine. I think it's totally fine. Just because I... Hellbats are also light, they're heavily countered by, like, Banelings, the same thing. Um, yeah. If you're they going take mass... extra damage from... Wait, no, they don't. The, take the biggest thing with Hellbats is, and, I, I, like, people underrate this, but they're one of the slowest units in the game. Yeah. Because they don't have stim to make up for their mobility, right? Like, Terran Bio as a whole, which is the speed of Hellbat moves at, is ridiculously slow. It's slower than Speed Hydras, Roaches, uh, it's slower than Speedlings, it's slower than Stalkers, it's slower than Zealots that have the charge upgrade. Not just when they're charging, but they gain a little bit of movement speed. Yeah. It's slower than Colossus, it's slower yeah. than basically everything in the game without having stim. It's, and and Hellbats are the same way. Have you guys the ever reason? watched uh, Optic Dream or Yume? He's like a Grandmaster Terran, and he does this... Yeah, Yumi. He does this this build PVT with Hellbats. It's not even an all in. He takes a third base behind it. That is like incredibly hard to stop. Like if you ever watch the stream, it's like all, it's very hard to stop as a Protoss player. If um, you if you do it well, I mean he's really good. So. Yeah, he's really good at it. But I'm saying like the Hellbats, his usage and and the build he does, like the Hellbats are really strong. He's even stated that the Hellbats are really really strong. Like Hellbats are really good. He thinks that they're amazing. And I yeah, but that's because he's using them in with in combination with medevacs for the mobility. Yeah. No, no, I mean, he's there just going up to their base and, like, give, he's not... A, no, he's using... Dropping. It's, so, it's Oxygen Hellbat wants things. to talk. Yeah, <laughs> I was about All to right. say. Okay, so, like, Hellbats, the reason... They have no business moving fast because they should be mech. Like, that's the thing. That's their hole. That's their niche. There's a reason why that isn't combined with bio, but for some reason it's being done. That's why they don't move fast. Hellions move so they fast. Have no Hellions move and they can move with bio. Yeah, but Hel think Hellions. But they don't the stem, and that's the Mech doesn't need so to stand for slow. Mech needed something to move. It's more quickly. stands for strong. Like. So giving, uh, what is it? Was it Hellbats the biological tag? Gives them, what is it? It allows them to have good synergy with the medevac, which is pretty much a strictly bio support unit. So giving that to Mech. Is is doing something that I don't think is good for the game because nobody builds medevacs in Mac in Wings of Liberty. They, exactly. So they wanted to add a reason it's to build medevacs. They wanted. Well, to I know it's not Wings of Liberty, but that's that's why they did it. Is so you would build medevacs when you're going back. Yeah. yeah. So that it opens up a lot of the the a lot, a lot of the the changes that were made for Heart of the Swarm are to make it more interesting for viewers. And there is probably nothing more exciting than a drop. I mean, I in my opinion, I mean for me anyway, a drop is one of the most exciting things that can happen in the game because it's kind of a little bit risky as far as the the units and all of that sort of thing, and it can do amazing amounts of damage and it can pull all of these reactions and it it makes the it makes the high level players uh, that can multitask just come out looking like like fucking gods, gods like when you when you look at it so so when you have when you have a mech army it's a big death ball that just slowly trundles across especially on creep it goes up onto the creep and they they scan and they kill these tumors and then there's these like these small skirmishes of one 200 200 army against another and then the zerg loses their entire army and then the mech moves like 15 spaces further and then you know Zerg makes up another 200 200 army and it gets thrown away. So there's just no there's no dropping. There's absolutely no dropping in that in that army because why would you? Why would you drop in a in Wings of Liberty, right? Well, it's not back? there's no useful mech units to drop either other than like really early Hellion all ins and stuff. Yeah, um blue from Wings. So I now just did that to me recently. Yeah, they nerd now you're making... even, there's no point in blue flaming it, but that's that's like mech. early game, right? That's early game. It's not late no, game. No, I'm talking about constantly throughout the game. Like he went mech and he was just dropping blue flaming. You can do that. I lost, it's I lost probably. So wait, what is our what what is our argument here? Are we just talking I think about we're, hellbats? We're all, we're, none of us are arguing. We're all agreeing that something needs to be done about hellbats. We're just and not sure what. 
Uh, you think they should cause gas? I think that they should cause gas. Yeah, they should cause gas. I think they're fine. The I reason they need to cost gas is because they're too efficient for just a mineral unit. And no, if you make them cost gas, gas Terran will never build another Hellbat again. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they were only 25 that gas. Would, that would, bio it's Hellbat like still would never make another Where's your gas going in Bio Hellbat? I would, okay, I would build them sometimes in Bio Hellbat, but even then they're not really, like, they're nothing more than like a, a cheap meat I use Bio Hellbat in, in TVP and TVZ. I would, I would still be making these units. I think if they cost gas, it wouldn't be the biggest problem. I don't think you'd be able to. I think that the but problem nobody would ever make them in mech. Like ever, I, I they would, really, they may, yeah. at that point, you may as well just stick them on the barracks. Yeah, I really want to chime in on the gas cost one here, because um, if you've ever seen my Terran against Zerg, you'll notice that I go siege tanks and widow mines very effectively. Um, it's one of my favorite openers, but the biggest problem with that is because uh, mech is already notoriously as the most gas-intensive army. Minerals are are nothing. They are they are shit. Literally, the only th reason I use mis minerals is uh, hellbats, missile turrets, and command centers. And I will end up with so many command centers and missile turrets, and still have like three thousand minerals left over, but no gas. And this is because if you had like a siege tank, which you need, it's like 125 gas. You throw in a widow mine, 25 gas. You need Vikings, 75 gas. You need ravens. You need ghosts. It's so gas heavy that if you were to put gas requirement on the hellbat. <laughs> It's almost something that I would, what, I would most likely not make. What about what about um, if you made the transformation upgrade cost like 200 200 or something pretty expensive for early game bio, but you could still make Hellions for the same cost, but if you got the transformation upgrade, you could still make those in the Hellbats while making Hellbats directly costs like 25 gas or something like that. But I thought the whole reason people wanted Hellbats to cost gas was that they were just too efficient against the other two mineral dumps of the other two races. Well, like like the, I thought well, that was the main complaint against Hellbats, not only Yeah, but else. if you think about it, like, so are Marines, and you have to use gas to counter Marines at the same time, unless you have, like, this really heavy, heavy Zealot push, but you still need some form of AoE. The reason why it's okay for that they're just so cost-efficient against the Tier 1s is because Hellbats actually are not a Tier 1 unit. Uh, they take a lot to tech to, and the, you know, they, if you go bio with Hellbats, you, you have one huge counter, and that is Ling Bling Muta. You know, it's, it's the same thing. It's because... Bailings are so effective against hell Hellbats. They're a little bit more tanky, but I mean, you know, Bailings are still really good against them. And then you got to think about it from like a mech point of view. What are you going to be making against a mech player? You're certainly not going to go mass Zergling. You're going to go Roaches or Ultras. And Hellbats can do kind of okay against Roaches if they're like right up in their face and you're hitting a bunch of them. But there's no reason why you should be maxing out on Zerglings against. Uh, you know, it's not the Zerglings that do the, the damage in Bio anyway, it's the Banelings. They do the mass, mass damage against the, right. the Marines. So it's like, mm -hmm. the Tier 1 units, the later the stage goes on, are worthless anyway. It's just they're a little bit better at countering the Tier 1 units than most people like, and it requires a little bit more emphasis on um, Storm and Colossi, and a little bit more on the AoE, on trying to get the Hellbats and the Marines and everything together down. So if that's the case, that means they're coming out too fast if Tier 1 units are still so heavily used. Well, I hope that, like, so, the Tier argument is like the stupidest argument in the game. Everybody I'm not talks making a tier yeah, yeah. No, I'm no, I know. a timing argument. They're coming out too fast. They need to be later. <laughs> but and they that's why the upgrade later. is implemented. They're I mean, extremely look, late. They come out after Armory. That's yeah. Yeah, it's, really, really it's, late. It's the equivalent I mean, you of you see people going dropping down seven minute armories because of Hellbats. <coughs> yeah, but I so, mean, it's, it is like a hive, though. It's so literally like a Zerg going would, straight to hive. Here's what you would like to do for like each race, okay? If you go for like a really fast Hellbat push, and we put this nerf in for the medevac, let's say the medevac dropping thing is completely evaporated out of, you know, these speed boosts, it's no longer overpowered. If you make really fast Hellbats against Zerg, as an example, uh, you know, most Zerg Zergs at the high levels, they go for a Roach Rush anyway. Yeah, you're gonna die because you don't have widow mines, you don't have siege tanks, you don't the have the one one arms. roach. Are you talking about like two base roach or like three base one one speed roach type of deal? The one where they get like a, an early, uh, you know, they they play normal, they get a hatchery, they get a gas, they get a spawning pool, they get a queen, and when the queen is halfway, they go ahead and drop oh, the roach. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, so yeah. That, early, early roach that's roach designed that, to yeah. counter shit Kill like pro. that because yeah, no one wants to deal with the hellbats. Completely hard counters it, and it's it's simply because if you get hellbats that early, roaches will flat out kill you. You have to have widow mines, you have to have siege tanks, you have to have marauders, you have to have one of those epic things, and if you have marauders, you have to be in a bunker. So for zerg, uh, just don't make zerglings. You know, make like queens and roaches, and you're fine. This and is why I go roach hydra every t ZVT now. Yeah, yeah, and that's then, why it's the best option at the moment. 
and then for Terran, like against early Hellbats, well, Marauders, Marines, they're they're just never gonna touch you if you go bio. So that's not <coughs> the problem. The problem is mech. So I mean, the problem is like siege tanks or something like that, or or you can't just go Hellbat Marine against bio because you will get demolished. Why? Why is not being able to go a single unit composition a problem though? If there's viable unit compositions that already work, why does a single composition need to work? That's just like I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying, why does that need to be a thing, though? Why, what do you mean? Why do we have to have more options with the Hellbats? I mean, why... If if something... If there's already a viable option, a way... As long as it's not pigeonholed into, like, one or, like, 1.5 strategies, depending on, like, what style of the strategy you play. Like, right now, um, in your honest opinion, is Mech completely viable against Zerg at the yeah, highest level? Yeah, it's my best matchup. So, yes, Mech is viable, but... Uh, there are ways you can't play mech, and there are ways you have to play mech in order to win, uh, even against early attacks. So, if you can't go hellbat drops earlier, early, or you die to road rushes, is that a problem with hellbat drops, or is that just you can't do that because Zerg has a strategy that can beat it, so you have to play safely? I'd say it's more of a strategy of scouting. Like uh, the the reason why hellbat drops are so popular is even if the roaches get up to your base, you will still wipe out all of his minerals, and you know there are no reinforcements. Once that's been taken away, the players will be forced a lot more away from Hellbats and more into different styles. I'm kind of expecting like a Hellbat nerf, which is why I've completely almost stopped doing these types of drops and just played against Zerg stand st uh, straight up. You know, it's kind of like a metagame. Um, Mario, Mario, can I ask you, how do you play Mech TVZ? Because it seems like whenever I tried it, I just got completely shut down. It is yeah. the most funnest matchup. I get so much rage. If you, I, I, uh, oh, I, I hate TVZ. Mech. I hate, I hate Hellbats. Make it if you players. Playing Mech TVZ is like one of the most complicated and difficult things to do. It's the same with uh, playing Mech and, and TBP, which I, I still I think you're completely insane for even attempting that. Um, but if you science. do want to do it, yeah, the dude, best so way to the best question. way to do it is to check out uh, HG Mario's YouTube channel because he posts a lot of um, stuff like that on there. And that's like yeah, it's a direct plug, but at the same time. It's such a complicated thing. Name, the, name one other Mech Terran in North American GM that pulls it which, off. Mario yeah, might know one. Is, <laughs> is, it? is Goody still <laughs> playing? Goody, yeah. yeah, Goody even doesn't even play Mech you know, as much as he used yeah, to. Yeah, Goody is. doesn't even play Mech. <laughs> That's why he's not winning anything. Mario, how do you, yeah. just how do you play against Vipers? Just how do you play? It's the same thing. Like I Vipers? actually rarely use the Hellbat. The only reason I use the Hellbat is I mix in like 10 of them to evaporate Zerglings just in case he's dumb enough to make Mac Zerglings against my Mac army. I actually go for like Siege Tanks, uh, Widow Mines. That's the backbone of my army. Yeah, and but then, so it's Widow Mines. That's does, what it is. <laughs> What's shutting actually, down the Vipers? Because the I mean, Widow Mines. The Widow Mines just stop the, the Viper completely. 80% of the battles, I'm not sieged. Or I'm into a pre-split, heavily sieged position. Because when Zerg attacks, they try to concave you, they surround you. And if you go through like many of my videos, you'll notice when the battle starts, I immediately engage and then pull back. And this makes the girl, the Zerg come kind of like the girl. <laughs> come into like this heavy, he goes from this nice concave to a little bit more clumped up, I drop the Widow Mines, go back and Because he wants attack. to chase you. Like, yeah, he wants to chase like, you. He's, he's unseaged, like I gotta go. Like. Siege tanks have high unseaged damage, and yeah. they have they have far range. So if you're yeah. running away from the Widow Mines because they just burrowed, the siege tanks are actually hitting you. You have like a few siege tanks sieged. they're taking so much damage trying to do this dance, and it becomes like this pressure so you're thing. you're kind of flanking with Widow Mines a little bit almost. Like, <laughs> Kind of. It's more like they have to push in to attack you. The moment they push in, you burrow, boom. They blow up if they get too close so, to your army. So how does Zerg beat you? So it's, it's a bait and switch. Yeah, it's a bait and switch. It's constantly like a bait and switch macro or a really slow push up. And there's different counters to it. Like if I get Siege Tank Widow Mine, he's forced to go Swarm Host, and I have to go like a Siege Tank Hellbat because the Hellbats, the only, they're not there to do damage. They're really just there to absorb the shots and because I need more gas for Siege Tanks. Quick and then question. Ravens. Go ahead. Quick question. Have you fought against a Swarmhost Broodlord army when you mech? All the time. Okay. And does it is it hard Ravens? to kill? Not when you Because I feel like that is a really, really strong composition against mech. How? Ravens, right? Yeah, yeah. Ravens, are, Ravens are kind of Ravens. The key. Ravens. Except against everything except for Ultras. TDD. 
Uh, it's not hunter even that. Seeker. It's just the, the Hunter Seeker missile. Because when they go Swarm Host, if you have enough Siege Tanks to keep them at bay, they usually go for, like, uh, Mutalisks. So you throw in a few Thors, a few Widow Mines, and the Mutalisks are useless. But the way you really break a contain is you either start mass dropping him, or you have, like, a group of three or four Ravens, and then three Hunter Seeker missiles will destroy... Oh, sorry, four Hunter Seeker missiles will destroy swarm hosts in large yeah. clusters so you can take out like six swarm hosts with 400 secret methods it's, it's just like, like forcing tanks to unseed with like a drop on them yeah right mm -hmm. you, can, you can get the swarm host out of there you can form them to just uh you can force them so to you use ravens them. to shut it off i use ravens to kill mass swarm hosts but until it becomes out of control i use siege tank help it's like what if the desert has just like two to three vipers mixed in and uh, Five Broodlords, no more than that, just like Wings of Liberty, and the rest Corruptor Swarm Host. If he can pull in your Ravens and kill them... <laughs> if you pull in Ravens, that's the dumbest thing you can do. If you... Uh, well, it, it's it's not the worst thing, but it, it isn't the greatest thing either, because you can just drop a Hunter point defense run and fly out. But, um, like, a good example of that is Broodlords cost a lot of gas, Swarm Host cost a lot of gas, Vipers cost a lot of gas. By the time you have this army, the Terran can already have like this huge Sky Terran army. Twenty Ravens, fucking yeah, and yeah. Then battle cruisers if they want them. One right. of the more popular tricks as has come up. I, I think there's a, another Terran who does it. It's something I use a lot against Zerg is I will actually get one or two medevacs for no other reason but to hunter seeker them and fly them straight into the enemy into the Zerg so they can't really out micro. Kamikaze and, Ravens. Yeah, kam use Kamikaze Ravens. medevacs yeah, because I've, I I've seen you do that and it's hilarious. Yeah. Raven it will take out so much. Oh my god, when Bomber it's did so that good. the first time that happened, that was the yeah. greatest moment. Apparently you need to nuke your own army as well to win games, but that's just Ravens for you. <laughs> he didn't you win can, that game. <laughs> yeah, you can lost even that game. Just, yeah. yeah, you can even just drop a mass point defense drone against Corruptors and your Vikings can take him out. You don't even have to hunt your Seeker. I saw, hey, like, I saw so how does Zerg win that late like, game? 20 of them. If, if it, Terran, it's impossible for Zerg people, to win a yeah, Most people don't understand how good CBT. people don't understand how good ravens are. It's, um, um, they're just so incredibly difficult to get to them. It's this exactly. huge dance. Yeah. As it's a this huge dance because, like, if I go, if I go help that CS to go roaches, if I go with a mine siege tank, I counter roach hider viper, no problem. But then ultralis come in a mix. The siege tanks are useless. I have to throw in thors. If I throw in thors, then I'm really weak to swarm host because I'm missing tanks. So it's like this huge, huge circle chain of events. And if you're not scouting each other's composition right, one of you is gonna easily get crushed. This well, is why swarm hosts are so good right now because a lot of players are like, or, oh, siege tanks, I can't get them because of vipers, and then they get swarm hosts and they get kicked out because they can't defend against them eventually. So, so what I'm hearing here is not enough people are playing mech. Yeah. Um, there's yeah, actually, mech needs to be there more. is no follow up to that. Like, <laughs> I see everyone just relying on very strong micro and control with. And honestly, I feel like the more people learn how to deal with Widow Mines, the more people learn how to deal with like these timing pushes from Terran, because Ultras are stronger than by a Widow Mine if you get Ultras out. Yeah. Like, well, so I think the way Mario goes about things is actually going to become the metagame over like the next six months when people are like, wait, this is actually how you deal with Widow Mines. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go Ultras, and then people are going to be like, how do I beat the Ultras? And then Mario will step in and say, here's my MLG trophy. I made Ravens. Mario will be our savior. <laughs> Well, oh, ultras, yeah. you don't need... ultras are kind of the counter to ravens. You can't yeah. go too many ravens. I mean, yeah. What I, what I think is going to happen is Zergs are going to start... I think Zergs are going to go a lot heavier Ling Bane, and you're already starting to see it, um, and skip over Mutalisks, like, completely against Terran and go straight into Ultra. Well, um, right. well, Mutas are not good against Terran right now. Like. Well, you need them to stop... You need them to stop drops, but if you're... If you have enough Ling Bane, you can really punish a Terran that's moving out and trying to drop you, because um, you can just crush their army. That's what I think will happen. But um, I just, that being said, I, I'm sure you'll probably agree with me on this one, Mario. But uh, Bio is typically a, a lot easier to recover from and, and easier to play in general than Mech. Oh yeah, that's um, definitely if you, the case. In every if match. I make a mis yeah, if I make a mistake with Bio, like typically with Bio, if I outplay my opponent um, and I do things right, it's it's in my control very much uh, in terms of my control and how I play and that kind of stuff with bio. Um, if I play mech, you know, one simple mistake will, will cost me the game. So it's very difficult to play. And you have to be patient. If you can't be that guy playing Counter-Strike, sitting behind a box for like the whole five minutes of the round, getting like two or three kills, 
then don't even bother. People that, underestimate the defensive skill of, like, the defensive capabilities of Mac. They're like, if I sit back and let the Zerg do their thing, that's such a Wings of Liberty mindset, I think, right now. Yep. I think people I are a... just underestimating the power of late-game Terran, because Raven Battlecruiser Thor is still the strongest late-game composition, in my opinion. Hands that's down. Strong, yeah. Uh, it's like, even strong. a Wings of Liberty was unkillable, and it, at least from what I could see. One Seeker missile was changed, I think it was. Yeah, I think that the uh, Tempest, uh, High Templar, Kent does that pretty good, I think. But I think yeah, that's, that's in one match. Catch up to it. Yeah. But um, the biggest difference about Mech, and I have a good example for what you said, Walter, <laughs> is like, um, you'll see in many of my games where I play, where I make one mistake and I will die. But there are these yep. moments where, this is like the beauty, this is why I actually do it. On, earlier on stream, I was playing this Mech game against this Protoss. And he I kept think I, saw, I think I saw that one. It was like a 50 minute game, I had 4 bases, he had 6 bases, 7 bases, and he just kept expanding. And no matter where he went, I, I microed so perfectly that army after army, I crushed him. And I was always 50-70 supply ahead, and he just could not break me, because I, I scattered him perfectly, I got the right composition. It was just, it was scary. For, I mean, I was having the time of my life, but this guy was really angry. <laughs> and it's just like, if you don't make that single mistake, mech is the most powerful thing that you can ever have. Uh, in, in an army because it, it can truly hard counter anything as long as you do the perfect scouting and, and you know just like when to transition and how to transition. And that's yeah. where the high skill cap comes in and the understanding yeah. of the game. People just think, Mac, oh I made siege tanks and I turtled and they couldn't do anything. So inaccurate. Yeah, well there's, so easy there's to ways to exploit mech. mech too. Like, you can definitely exploit it but uh, Darkness actually asked in chat like is when he watches my stream I'm, I'm primarily using like a lot of marines in my compositions like just tons of marines um, and a huge part of it is like you don't necessarily always want to play like what is really good or what's strong or what's overpowered you want to play what's fun for you yeah. like I really I love playing bio I love doing drops I, I love I do as well brain. I love drops um, I love like splitting my marines up. I love just crushing somebody with marines because they made a mistake and something wasn't sieged, and you just stim and like bag in and kill everything. It feels and like you, you know they hate themselves right now. Um, and like it feels really good. And it's fun to play, but at the same time, as Mario mentioned, obviously he likes enjoy. He he loves playing mech, um, for the reasons that that he kind of stated. Where if you play it just right and you baby them through, there's nothing your opponent can do. Yeah, and that's what I always tell people when they ask, like, how can I improve? And just, just have fun, man. Yeah, you know, play what you want. Come there. Yeah, that's play why StarCraft you is the best game ever. Yeah, just because you can you do. You don't. You're not. You're not. It's not like you can only do one thing. A lot of people try to pigeonhole. It's like Sky Toss is the only way to beat Zerg or something like that. Where Nanny was like, wait a second. Well, <laughs> Nanny like basically took eight years of meta game, including Brood War, and said, you don't need to forge fast expand. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that, so like that goes Forge Fast Expand goes back to Brood War against Zerg. That's insane mm -hmm. that he basically I, said, I never actually played Brood War. I don't have I to think do that. The Mothership Core helped a lot with that with the Nexus yeah. scan and, oh, yeah. the and stuff. That's a very but, good point. That's why PvP that's, isn't for, like gateway timing versus gateway timing. Like, boom, gone. Which is crazy. We'll see if we, we six. We figured we'll out StarCraft, time. guys. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> do what you like, you'll win. We're the real winners. True. Well, that's, I mean, that's Well, how many times have you, you watched a Protoss streamer, like, review somebody's <laughs> replay and been like, you just gateway expanded, that's trash, you're garbage, you suck, you should never do that again. That's the worst thing you can do, you're an Does idiot. Does that actually happen on Protoss streams? Oh, yeah. And it's, like, I can't say anything bad about them, because every Protoss stream I've ever watched who's watched a replay where the guy did a gateway expand told him it sucked. Every single one. Shh. Wait, and Because that's though? just not how things are done in PvC. It's just not how it is, okay? Like, yeah, I mean, like, I think for a lower Forge league player, expansion. like it's a Forge Fast expansion is a much more simple build that they could learn a lot from mm -hmm. mechanically. I mean, oh, like you just you Forge Fast every single PVZ is a Forge Fast expand until Naniwa came into Dream Mac. and if it's not, it's Liquid Hero doing a one base all in. But I think even before Naniwa, I think uh, Noni was talking about how it was bad. I mean, Noni didn't do it either. I mean, he was. Noni he was said he tried to make Gateway Expands work, and this is in Wings of Liberty. He said he tried to make it work for like two or three months, and he couldn't do it. And and Noni is one of the most intelligent players. I'm sure Mario knows that from his series, where um, he played a few games against you and started to figure out a, a good composition to play against you, Mario. Right, where you weren't able to quite adapt uh, fast enough, but. It wasn't um, something that I'd seen before, so it definitely yeah. caught me off guard. And it's, Noni is, and like you said, Noni's been playing Brood War for years. Like he knows how to deal with the Mac Terran. Um, so, yeah. if it's crazy that 
the, the metagame and stuff can change that fast, but... Well, yeah, I mean, as far as all-ins go, like, I, I definitely wouldn't want a low league doing gateway expand, because, like, there's a lot of all-ins that you have to be really intelligent to hold off with one gate expand instead of forge fast, so... I think Mothership Core is the real kicker there, like, that's your, both your fallback and your aggressive lot. option. It's like, I can yeah. do a five-gate timing and just sacrifice everything for his hatch, because I can recall now, or something like that. So... I don't know. It opens up a lot more options. I think the addition of like all these spellcasters, the addition of like metavac speed, the addition of like swarm hosts and vipers and other microball units for zerg or faster mutas or faster hydras just open up so many different attacks, so many different timings that the meta game will shift back and forth. I think in six months mech might be the way to go, but then zergs will go like seven roach rush first or something to shut down mech players or some shit, and then they'll even out again or something like that. I don't know. If there's one yeah. solution to everything, but it's metagame just there's so many more fine. options. It's right now the meta game is like, mostly for fast expand. Like, yep, and that that might change, I and mean, it might not. Right, there might be a zerg that goes, oh, I know how to beat this gateway expand every time, um, and then there's really no out for Protoss. Right, they go back to forge expanding. It could happen. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Wasn't well, that kind of what happened with Parting's build? How it just became the unstoppable soul train, and it completely changed the way the matchup was played for a while. The matchup was played at like, let's hope he doesn't go Immortal Sentry or I'll lose for a little bit. Like that's just that's what happens with the new meta game. There's it's it's like I said, it, and and I'm sure anybody that plays Protoss will agree. Like, if a Terran does um, the old the really old school like three barracks stim timing, that'll kill a lot of Protoss players right now. Yeah. Um, if you don't scout it, like let's assume you don't know what's coming, and like he leaves his base, and you're like, oh. Shit, I didn't realize he was doing that. I thought he'd expanded behind it because you didn't see his units or whatever. You're just going to die, and that's like a three year old build, right? Just because the metagame changes so that's, much. There's a lot of old builds. Like Four Gates, I died to Four Gates on a regular basis. Um, and hell, like Polt died to a Four Gate. I think it was Polt. It was a high level Terran and Dreamhack died to a Four Gate. Yeah, Terrans, I think, are actually. They're making a few too many command centers now when they have so many early game options. It's like going 3cc, you don't really need to, because you can reduce the economy right now. I don't go, yeah, I don't go 3cc against uh, Protoss, but I go 3cc and TV, TVT and uh, TBC. That's one of the reasons why you know a lot of... TVT? Uh, oh yeah, TVT. TVT. Yeah, you siege can tank, go from Reaper in the Siege TVT. Tank, you can pretty much just turtle up. You don't yeah. even need to go into Siege Tank, but yeah, if you open, uh, like, I open 11-11 Reaper, <coughs> 3cc, um, mm -hmm. you, unless the other Terran opens... Reaper? Yeah, you go 11 barracks, 11 gas, and oh, then okay. you'll get your Reaper really fast. And uh, what happens is if the other Terran, yeah, if the other Terran goes 12, 13, you're across the map fast enough to get. To and they only have one Marine. But if they go 12, they're 12, and they're doing a Reaper of their own, what happens? What's well, that? If then the world if you is go 12, 12. Yeah, if they're going 12, 12, and you're going 11, 11. You. Then my Reaper's like meets his Reaper slightly farther across the map. <coughs> and you have and it one doesn't, like, there's like no impact. See, because right? I've started like but just like if I don't my if I don't scout him, like if I don't get into his base and scout him, I'm not going to go three CC. That would, or you know oh, two yeah. extra. That's CCs one of the things. Stupid. But when that's, you go for that early Reaper, it makes it really easy to get in. That's one of the if things that's open, really changed so. in Heart of the Swarm, and that's also one of the reasons why a lot of Korean pros, and I'm not talking like North America ones, because a lot of them are balanced QQers. And I'm not going to call anybody out, but like a lot of the green pros personally asked Blizzard not to change anything because there are so many more options for every race right now, and it's really impossible to know what every race can do. And it, you can see like uh, win rates across the board are actually pretty even, uh, except for this recent tournament, but that's only because like uh, Zergs have a new metagame against Protoss, and Protoss have a new metagame against Terran that just came out like the last week, and that is these, like uh, these Dark Templar War Prism drops, and then these uh, delayed uh, oracles, you know, the stuff co starts coming in the last week and it's still changing and adapting. That's why I didn't see so many Terrans right now and DreamHack performing really well. But the, the metagame is shifting so fast constantly at higher levels that um, by the time, like, lower league players, they get to these builds and they really practice them out, there's already, like, a counter for them at high levels and you see it at the next tournament. And it's just I, really I, changing fast. I can't... Every time I see, like, Zergs have won MLG and DreamHack, I'm like, MLG and DreamHack were barely a month apart. Are you... <laughs> Really? Yeah, it, was, it was the same metagame right there. Like that it, ultra build that they were doing and the defense <laughs> for drops where they leave like two ultra lists running around. That's actually only been done this last previous month that I've seen. And it's just it's just going to change to where instead of, you know, um, 
trying to engage these ultras, they're going to try to come up with a different way on really fighting them, like dropping more marauders or even just a few crit mines to deal b damage to the ultras back and forth. You know, it's just the meta game just needs more time to change. Maybe more factories for more siege tanks or something like that. I don't know. It's well, yeah. Like my only two, like you said, the only complaints I have are, sorry, I'm, my Skype's dropping or Winters is dropping. Is it not yours? I still hear you. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, you dropped for a second. No, no, I think Mario just mutes his mic when he's not talking because there's yeah. a little bit of background noise. I do. The only, um, guy. Like, the only real metagame complaints I'd have are, um, like, the Hellbat medevac speed boost, and I think Mario addresses that really, really well. Um, I don't think Mutalist should be that tanky and that good at, like, and that mobile. That seems a little obnoxious to me. As a Terran player, I don't care because Mutas are not a problem, but. Um, they affect it's the other two matchups pretty badly. Like I just I that, that regen is DVP as bad as you think they do. I think it's because important. At the, ha at the top you... of a brain, it's easily stopped. Okay, if the Protoss doesn't want to go for Phoenix, how does he stop it? He has Every to go Protoss Phoenix. wants to go for Stargate okay. because they want to get to Sky Toss is the issue, which is why Mutas aren't that good right now. Because if they just get to Stargate and then they get to Colossi safely off of Stargate, if you don't have Mutas, you have nothing. Uh, especially on maps like Akalon or something like that. I know Leenok made it work, but that's only because Naniwa lost his Phoenix right off the bat. If you have the Phoenix in the sky scouting everything, then you'd get a third base up for free on maps like that. No, uh, I, you just, I, I, I would just like to see more counterplay option with it. It's not like, even just some... entirely that, because uh, Naniwa, yeah. through the whole tournament, he went, he started opening up the target <laughs> through the whole tournament. He showed his hand that he swapped into Colossus Archon Storm. And Leenok just, just took keep advantage going. of it. Yeah, Leenok Leenok knows you're not going back into it, so I'm just going to make mass mutas, whatever. Yeah. But um, I just, I don't know. I'd like to see something done where you, you can storm them. You like you have other options available to you. Mutas are an entertaining unit, though. Like, forcing people to go Phoenix or storm They're not. They're is boring not... as hell. No, well, I mean, entertaining in the way, I guess, it's funny to watch someone get raffle stomped by, like, 50 <laughs> random muta that they didn't scout, I guess. I don't know. Well, it's that's a completely different situation. All, like... It's like you watch Mutas get stormed, and it's not like, oh man, he landed that storm sick. He's gonna, he's got a shot now. It's those are just gonna fly away and heal, even if they're all red and he hit two storms. I, I don't it see really why we're talking matter. about storm and Mutas because, like, Phoenix with range counter Mutas. You don't even. Why would you talk about? I would storm? like to see more compositions that are viable and more counterplay. That's all. I don't like well, a singular I option for anything as a counter. Well, I, I, yeah, I don't know. That's how it works right that's now. That's kind of how PvZ right now is like the Zerg desperately trying to make tech switches before Protoss gets that 200-200 death ball. Because I think we can all agree the Protoss 200-200, unless there's... Well, Protoss 200-200 based off of Stargate is usually stronger than a Zerg 200-200. Unless the Zerg has been tech switching all over the place and like keeping the Stargate count down like that, like Elenok did. Because if they both just sit back and macro up, there's no other option. So what... <laughs> There's other. That means Zerg has to play the mid game, uh, and they have to win the mid game in order to go into the late game in advantage. Kind of like how Terran had to play against Zerg uh, in Wings of Liberty. Um, I, I just don't know what the other options are right now besides trying to tech switch in and out of mutas. Um, I'm not saying like it's imbalanced or either one way or another because I'm a random player. Uh, I just I just as a Zerg and a Protoss, I think mute, the muta tech switch into and out of it. Is the only way to try to find yourself ahead in the later game. So, is that the problem? I just I don't know. I wish there's like uh, Zergs couldn't be super careless with them. Yeah, that that I watch like Zergs that are really Mr. bad, Kim? but they just make Muta, so it just works out for them. But at the same time, like you should be the better player and like scout the fact they went Muta and have the proper response. No, no, that's so. fine. Like I don't even play Protoss. Like I said, I really don't care. I just find it boring to watch a pack of Muta get stormed or or whatever it is, and they just regen. Yeah, that's one of the um, things. You have to give Zerg another a, a unit that's entertaining to watch. It's hard to do. It's that. not not entertaining though. Mutas are like. Mutas are Zerg, though. Like, you think of when, Mutas for if, the last 15 years, and that's just, if you made, like, the staple. If, if Mutas were... If they had a, no, no, I know that. If they were slower to heal, like, even half of what they what they heal for now, because it takes one minute to go back to full health, then it would be entertaining to watch. But right now, it's... You can fly in, and it doesn't matter if you run into, like, one or I, two Widow Mines. You're still okay to just fly away. There's no real excitement or risk to that. But yeah. if the if the risk is they take a bunch of damage, and now they can't really be used, um, so the player using them is sending, like, one Muta in ahead really quickly just to kind of scout everything out and playing 
with a lot more skill. Um, That's what I do when I meet us against Widowmind, usually. Like, I, I think, what do you make them, somehow, like, make them more useful in smaller packs, but in larger numbers? I don't know. Honestly, if they brought back, like, 12 unit control groups, it would fix a lot of things because people couldn't just, like, ball up huge amounts of units, but that's not going to happen. Well, I mean, I, I think Pi would be much better in that situation because he doesn't control group at all. Exactly. Oh, nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> GM <But>. tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly just don't see it changing anytime soon in PvZ. In ZvZ, that's just going to be changed. Like, I'm like 90% sure Blizzard is going to do something about Muta versus Muta because everyone and their mother is complaining about it, even though they don't know much about it. Like I said, well, I don't want to change because I win. Yeah, the players don't even know who's going to win. Like you have no idea who's going to win. Oh, when uh, it's like no, two that's big not clusters. true. I wouldn't each say other. that. Yeah, by the by the time the third base happens, you almost always know who's gonna win is actually true. What exactly. the, the fact is. No, no, that's I mean the when the two muta packs engage, right? Like oh, if both players if are player, even if you're a third player, their... you know you're gonna win. No, no, but if, if, win, if you guys take your bases yeah. even I know there's other things, like if you get your lings underneath, if you take your third a little bit earlier, you know how you're gonna have slightly better numbers or slightly better um, you can get like a, a slight upgrade advantage and you know when you're gonna win. But what I mean is just from when you have two players that are basically even and they hit each other, like, nobody can retreat. It's two muted packs attacking each other for, like, 30 it's, seconds. It's the jockey it looks for retarded. position to force your opponent when you're winning. Yeah. It's forcing your opponent to engage and not retreat, or he suffers too many losses. So that's kind of what you're trying to do in Muta versus Muta. And the way you can kind of change it is, like, the upgrades or getting a little bit of a ling advantage so that you can have that... Absorbing the Glaives. I'll agree, the actual Muta versus Muta or Ling versus Ling fight is just a total clusterfuck that with like little chunks of meat dying on either side and no one can tell That's what's like going on. That's like how ZVZ and always was anyway. With yeah. And it's rich. not entertaining and I don't like watching ZVZ because of it. I mean, it just it doesn't the, entertain me. The only it. reason I like it is because I understand it so well. I'm like, <laughs> this player just did this tiny little move that's awesome. But you can't really tell. Unless, like, you're really experienced in DVZ, and I can get that. If you're any other race watching DVZ, you're like, the fuck is this shit? The muta's everywhere. Like, I like I, I like ZVZ. Yeah. There's a, it's, it's a definitely... I, it's because it's always muta versus muta. It's like, sure, my favorite food is Thai fried rice. Do I want to eat Thai fried rice seven days a week? Yes. Yeah. But two times a day? No, I don't want to do that. There that just be, hold on, wouldn't it just be easier for both Zerg players to agree at the beginning of the game that neither of them would make Muta? And then, <laughs> yeah, but then what happens when <laughs> what one of them does? Then, that that so then they both go Muta? <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm random players points. telling their race. Uh, you, just, uh, you just have like a gentleman's agreement, no Mutas. Yeah. Uh, there there are some counters you can do though to prevent a Muta where since they're They are Zerg. coming up. It's <laughs> Queen's <laughs> hybrid. Even, even if, if uh, even not that, like there's a new popular... There's been a new popular build coming up on the Korean ladder where they just go for this huge baneling bust right before the Muta Spire finishes, yeah. and yeah. they just destroy so much economy. I think yeah, we no, saw that in the previous tournament, not three. Yeah, this uh, revival was doing it in yeah. the WCS a lot. That's becoming yeah. really, really popular as a counter to this build, but you have to make sure that then you know the Spire will be like, timing. Blink baneling every time, like ugh. Well, ZBZ is like that's kind of awful point. anyway. As in ZVZ, I mean, I don't know. Like the early game ZVZ has always been fun for me to watch, but then it's, it's so stressful. The only like the only mirror that um, is is really like really really good and it's always been good is probably TBT, with the exception of because Tank of the Viking Wars. Options. Um, but it's like <laughs> after you got before. past Tank Viking, which was like the first little while of Wings of Liberty, it's TBT has been really good and really TBT. fun to watch. It's because there are so many units that Terran has that are such good defensive options. Oh, it yeah. allows you to play like there's so many tools in the toolbox. Well, you don't know what that next guy's. You're gonna not have. necessarily dead because of a slight miss micro or something like that in TBT. Which you is also what makes TBT so. You don't want another TBT though. You don't want another yeah, like tech plan. if they make it so like swarm host hit up and suddenly it's swarm host versus swarm host. Then you suddenly got like a tank versus tank situation again. Yeah. Do you want that for ZVZ? ZV Zerg is a different race, so <laughs> or worse, that Broodlord versus Broodlord that was happening at the very, very end of Wings. That was oh, disgusting. Oh, oh, oh. Where it's like, hey, look, it's gonna be half an hour of free units just smashing. It was the, the worst. Was They're late games ZVP where nobody wanted to fight because the Protoss wasn't gonna fight unless you got like the big Vortex, and the Zerg wasn't gonna fight unless you like controlled the mothership core and vor Vortex the Protoss stuff. Yeah, that was pretty bad. It was, I'm glad it was they like fixed that. half an hour so of glad. that, and it was like, oh, I know how this game's gonna end, and it's gonna suck. Can we move on to something else? 
Yeah. This is awful. See, yeah. that's why I'm so glad with Heart of the Swarm. I just don't see that happening anytime soon. I think Heart of the Swarm is just so much more interesting. Oh, yeah, no, I, t I totally agree. Like, and it's it not all the new physics, okay? Like, <laughs> it is just the void ray parts engine. going flying, man. Ultra jaws, like, falling off. Oh. And there's Marauder players time. a lot smarter than uh, any of us that are figuring out ways to, to counter and get around this stuff, so yeah, it's fun to watch right now. Yeah, it's a really fun ZVZ build. You take a like 530 hatch, a third hatch, and you mass sling. So you just like die. gamble and you just hope that... <laughs> That's, what not gambling. That's what I it's did not. to you. It doesn't even sound exciting. It's like when That's iMarine gambling. shows PvPs on Doom's stream. <laughs> there, there's lots of good engagements and there's like two fights and it's... Like, nothing happens. Right, but the whole thing about PvP is, like, if you didn't like PvP in Wings of Liberty, you're definitely not going to like it in, in Heart of the Storm. Phoenix versus Phoenix understand. is, the, is like, Mutalisk Wars on Laser Crack. Well, okay, well, see, like... Yeah, that's why I don't do that. Like, when I see them going Mass Phoenix, I just go fucking kill them, and Which is the proper that. response. I believe I told you to do that, and you were like, no, I don't think you can, and then I was like, no, you just do it, and then now... now well, I'm see, the thing it. I used to do is I was like, well, if I get the same amount of Phoenix, that'll work. And it, it kind of does, but it, it's just so boring to go... Mass Phoenix versus Mass Phoenix. It just it hurts my soul. Apparently, you can only have four hours on a video call. I didn't know that. Fun fact. Really? Yeah, it just like it just popped the video call. It's like you've reached your four-hour limit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Everybody, have your jackass <laughs> pictures show up. Yeah, huh? that yeah, that was really worth it. Sexy red panda. Sexy red panda. I, well, I, like this show uh, is just about to end. I guess that ends the show. Yeah, I guess. I guess. No, that's I a think it's it. just the the cameras. You can actually still talk. It's just the cameras. Yeah, I mean, you just got the sloth with the sunglasses. Tomb, Tomb's still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Don't worry, guys. He can take over for all the videos. <laughs> right. Or I could just, you know, I could just put up like the... Uh, oh, yeah. Tim, I have a question. <laughs> yeah. Would you be interested in practicing your TVZ with me? I guess. I don't really even know that, you know, that I know well, what TVZ right. is. that's right, Fox. We still have to do our show match. And same with yeah, Wednesday. dude, I still have to play Winner. I have to play <laughs> Imarine. I'm good to go. Bring it. Yeah, I can. Oh, everyone nice but Mario can participate. I'll hey, play Mario, can you, can you <laughs> no, Mario can play you and play iMarine? Sorry, say again, I didn't hear you. Can uh, you substitute for me and play iMarine for the best two out of three? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, I injured my unfair. thumb. I can't, uh, I can't control, like, my 18 control groups with my injured thumb right now. So, substitute. I need, uh, I need Mario. Is it coming back? It's coming back. Yeah. It's like, yeah, the cameras are, are back. <laughs> Really? What just it just lets here? us. It's just like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> so like they don't get fucked. Alright, that's kind of cool. <laughs> They're like, hey, it's been four hours. Four hours Take a break. Alright, that was long enough. <laughs> that's, okay, that's awesome. Alright, we don't have to end the show. Good. It's only been four <laughs> hours. That's not long enough. <laughs> that's, yeah, like, that's guys, it's been four hours. <laughs> just take a 30 second break, please. Okay, you can go back. Let's do it. I don't know. I kind of like my sloth, guys. I think I'm going to stick with this for a little bit. <laughs> oh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. Someone just brought up a good point. Oh, never mind. There I am. Come here. Innovation, flash, life, parting. Group of make, death, make extreme your call. edition. Make your calls. Uh, I think uh, flash, inno innovation, innovation and flash. Innovation. Flash and innovation. Innovation. Uh, if innovation. If it's not flash, it's innovation. Because it's parting versus life and innovation versus flash first. Uh, first I, I, will, I, just, I think it's hilarious if parting and life both go out after being the two guys that called everybody out. It'd be hilarious if they both went out because innovation and flash are like, what's up? You wanted life, a group of death. Life will find a way. <laughs> I'm calling it. I want it to be life. Oh, guess, but who do you think? Parting or life? Choose. Life. Uh, I think, I think parting's think, in a lot of trouble. He's I in think tons parting. of trouble. Parting is, I, I, I think Zerg is one of parting's weaknesses right now, actually. Parting is really, really it's good, not, but he's... It's, but it's not PvC, those three though. players, it's he's not in a trouble. It's parting versus life. That's like I mean, the fact that like thing. a couple months ago, parting was saying like I'm immortal centuring like every single time I play you in a PVC in a tournament, and then he did that in WCS, and you know what happened. So I'm just like I, I feel I believe in parting to win, just because. Do you believe in the soul mindset. train? Are you getting on board? Like... Well, okay, that doesn't work anymore. Chugga, so that's chugga, not what chugga, it's gonna do. What if parting finds the new soul train and he does it against life? I mean. So I, the funny. amount of practice those Harding players are going to put in, those games are going to be ridiculous. They're going to be looking at each other. Well, those wait, they're not players the are going to practice like around. 16 hours a day or more. Guaranteed. Guys, did you hear that Parting is actually said he was going to rape life? He said he was going to take Literally. his quote, university <laughs> trip, which apparently in Korean is how you say you're going to rape someone. Yeah, see, I don't get how that means you're going to rape someone. I didn't get that trend. It's, it's a cultural that's, reference. That's why you're just an NA player. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> 
Well, then Leif, uh, what did Leif say when he called it innovation? I can't remember, but he's basically like, well, let's make this hard, so he brought innovation, and then innovation's like, well, I may as well complete oh, it. Might as so well do flash. it. Finish this. Yeah. Oh my oh, God. And Flash is like, I'm gonna win the group. I don't care. I played in many. What have you done there, Chad? Not a big deal. Flash is like, this is like the 15th time this has happened to me. <laughs> okay. Flash is like, any group with good players and me is is a group of death. So, Flash just doesn't care. Like he's got the best StarCraft 2 attitude in the game. He's yeah. like, just just give me anyone, and if he I can't win, StarCraft I'll figure it out. Attitude, he like, comes with his little ruler. He yeah, measures he just... distance between his keyboard You're... and his enemies, and he slams like... them. You're about you're about this fucked right now, like. <laughs> uh, yeah, Flash gets out of there, Fordo. I'm calling it. Flash and life. I, th Flash I think and life. Flash yeah, and that's what I want. I want to I see Flash and innovation. Right now is actually the strongest player. He shows so much talent. Who innovation? In, in, Did you say? Yeah, innovation. Oh, for sure. He just keeps coming up builds that just catch people. Oh, yes, man. I want to see Roro play somebody really good. Because I haven't had a chance to really catch it <laughs> any of his matches properly yet. Oh, uh, fuck you, Symbol. <laughs> Roro is, like, wicked good, so... Caspa Pro. Is he still using mutas and... I haven't seen him at ways. Did he get knocked out, right? Did he? Roro? Yeah, no, he's still he... in it. He's in round of 16. Oh. Oh, I, I definitely need to look this up to <laughs> see... You guys talk about the new map in the ladder pool? Yeah, yeah. we talked about it. Yeah, yeah we, we talked about it. That was, that was what, a grueling three and a half hours think? ago. What do you think about the new maps? I like it. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bullshit. Yeah, thank you. Every one of them. Then, uh, there are good reasons why it's bullshit. Explain the first why. map, the first well, one on the list, I think is the only one that's decent of the three. Yep. I because second and a half. Well, the reason why is... Um, because these maps are just simply evolutions of previous maps. Like, if you look at the second map, the, what's it called? Like, Scrap Station 2.0, you mean? Yeah, that Scrap Station 2.0. <laughs> and Zero's Prime is pretty much Shakura's 3.0. And those tiles. I was set. so happy. God about damn it. It, was like, it, it looks more place. like Entombed than Shakura's. Yeah, it, isn't Zero's kind of like Entombed because it's got the close. I, mm. I guess. Like, it but looks it's like it's got a, an easy. But very much it's more of a it's set up a lot more like Shakura's. I don't know. I just, it, Wait, I thought, I thought Entombed was a really easy third. I, I well, feel they, really, I feel iffy about maps with two entrance points. Like, I I never felt comfortable with that. Yeah, I mean, Ohana okay. was probably as like acceptable as it gets, but that's about it. We'll see. We'll wait and see how it plays out. I don't know. I think it's, it's easy to look at the map and change it. I'm just it. gonna omit it, so who cares? But I think we can all agree I'm that happy, I'm that happy. The Daybreak, so. mayor is is retarded, right? We can agree at least. Daybreak. Well, yeah, the Meyer, that yeah. one's I'm so and happy it, it looks gone. like shit. Like, I Daybreak was super balanced in Wings, but I think it's got some issues in Heart of the Swarm. I thought it was really good for Terran in Heart of the issues. Swarm. So it, it can die a happy death? Like a happy, yeah. long-lived death? I really like it's, it's, dying, it's, it's on its deathbed. It's, it's lived a nice, happy, long life, but it's time for it to go. Yeah, I like Goodbye, Daybreak. Daybreak. But I like Daybreak. That's like well, I a, do too. That's one of my favorite maps on the ladder. Well, just... Daybreak's like three really narrow attack paths. It is. Like, there's not a lot of open space in it. Like maps like Whirlwind. Right. Like everybody was like, Whirlwind is super Zerg favored, but all of a sudden Terran players are starting what? to like it now too. I was gonna because say Terran's I don't. a lot stronger on it. I, I like Whirlwind. It. I like having the open space and stuff. I, I, don't, I don't know. know I'm sure Mario hates it. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Daybreak. I hate Daybreak. I heard New. I hate Newkirk, and I hate Corhal. I hate when there's more than one. Attack. Really, you hate Newkirk? I hate. Oh, I, I oh, hate I all three of the maps. Mario okay. is a mecker. That's why he can't. Yeah, that's like exactly. handle a long distance map. It'll be harder for him to play just, out. It does make can, it a lot harder. Just, yeah. I felt like you know you, in the days, you hate that was like a prime like example of a great split. map for like Hellbad dropping. Is anybody ever going to be sad that Core Hell City is gone? No, no one <laughs> no. ever. Beat the is that the map <laughs> with the two force field well. ramp? That's yeah. the, yeah, with the two bases in the... Yeah, fuck that. Map. That's really dumb. That breaks uh, PvP really, really you, hard. Like, also you either PvP. have to go, like... Also CVZ. <laughs> and well, it, it's just... It's such a weird map. Like, it would be okay in, like, a tournament map pool or something. I still think it's a shit map, and it probably should never go in a tournament pool. But it'd be okay in, like, a tournament pool, but on ladder when it's, like... Just the best of one. You're basically completely rolling the dice on if the other guy goes like command center first or whatever nexus first, um, and you play it a little safer with like a barracks expand or something. Like he's automatically ahead, or you go like command center first and the other guy goes, "I'm cheesing you. Here's my roaches." Right. Up one base, and it's just a yeah. total like meta game dice roll clusterfuck. 
Especially in PvP, like it's. Did it's anyone so actually stupid. not just ban that map right away? Because I, I just banned it right away. Like, I, don't uh, I actually, right I gave it a, a try for like two or three weeks, and I was like, "Fuck, man, I can't do this PvP anymore," and I just stopped. I, I thought it was like cool at first. I was like, "All right, I can do this map. I like expanding." And then I kept getting either cheesed or like out metagamed, and it was like, "This sucks." Maybe if it was a two-player map and you could scout. Hold on, does anyone the in this call still have that map on Vito? Oh yeah, that map has close spawns too, like there's all sorts of problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does it's anyone like still here, like, have it on Vito? No, I don't think anybody. What map? Coral uh, City. Map with the two I have it. I've had that banned since the beginning. Yeah, I yeah, banned it right it. after beta. I wonder if anyone still plays it on ladder, like at a high level. They like, do, they do. Sometimes I, I play it. on like a uh, different account, and then I forget to ban it. The Muslim plays on that. No, I just feel like some people are like more annoyed by other maps than they are by that map, so... Because you got uh, map hacked on that one. I don't really what think it matters what map you're on. Wait, who got map hacked on what map? Uh, uh, the Muslim, the Muslim got map hacked on. hacked on like everything. You know, people yeah, say that was a map hacker, hacker but I, I just thought the guy was stream cheating, because all he did was, you know... That's effectively map hacking. Let's just call him out as a map hacker. No, no, yeah. that guy straight up map hacked because he was clicking oh. on Muslims units in Fog of War. Right. <laughs> like, it showed his, his color underneath the units in Fog of War. It's supposed oh, to be impossible for him to click on them unless he was map hacking, so... Oh. The Muslim That's was okay. having a good laugh about, how about that. How about map hacking in online tournaments for money? Uh, uh Physics League! Not even something that needs to get discussed. Yeah, well, the thing about it was, like, MLG didn't DQ him immediately, even though there's, like, substantial proof that physics was wrong. I think we can all agree that MLG, MLG did a lot of things wrong, dude. That was my they, problem with online did tournaments, it. instead of They were actual... smart about it. They, they, actually... him, like, they didn't ban him nearly early enough, but the way they banned him was smart. Because they banned him for sharing his account, and they proved that he did that, so they don't have to prove that he map hacked. That actually, that... You can't rely on that, obviously. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. Like, what about a real map hacker? Like, how do you... Like, there's a lot of threads that just show, like, substantial proof from multiple replays that, like, he map hacks. So, like, when does that become credible is the thing. <laughs> like I said, oh, I, think that, so? I think a physical tournament is always the best way to go because then you, you shut all of but, it down. But nothing's no, happened. No one's going to go to a qualifier yeah, exactly. physically. No one's going to have... That's not going to happen. Well, it's not going to happen. Well, not the same. It does. It, right, it, except sure. the mayor it needs, about That's thousand. the thing that has to change. That, yeah, but yeah. I've got to play in the WCSNA qualifiers. Like, would I have done that if it was anywhere no. physical? Yes, yeah, the difference between oh, Korea no. and America is geographically, America is a very big place, so it just can never happen. So, like, esports needs to You can have regional qualifiers and stuff. I'm, I'm just throwing that out there. It's not a like. You're know. never gonna stop map hacking. It's never. always gonna. There's always gonna be some guy that does it. I don't actually think it's that big of a concern because if you start making a name for yourself. And you get caught map packing. There goes your whole career. Goodbye. Yep. I mean, Dragon is not allowed in so many tournaments because he map packed. And yeah, I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of over. Like he's allowed to go to some things, but that's why also or, why he's not like on a serious team. Well, or... Hash was the other guy, right? Last Shadow, for yep. instance. Chef Spades. Yeah, the story Spades, Spades, not yeah, Hash. Spades I want to refresh that. Yeah. Once once you're caught as a hacker, I mean, you could get away with it for like yeah a year, but then good luck. Coming back into the scene, it'll take you so long yeah. just and to even have a chance. It, it really sucks when like people lose spots and and lose a, out on opportunities to map hackers, but it's that gonna happen. Suck. I agree there. Is the I guess it's a risk reward situation. Do you reduce the risk of it, or do you just decrease the reward so that people won't? It's I don't think it's that big of a deal. Like online tournaments are never going to be that big or that important for that reason. Well, they right? shouldn't be. Like this is like the first yeah. example of a major online tournament where a map hacker was proven. So yeah, I just don't unless, think that unless you yeah. just he wasn't yeah, technically but... proven. He was DQ'd for sure. Well, no, there's the other guy. There's that Zach guy at the Blizzard WCS too, right? Like um, for last year. Yeah, but it, it happened, happened like twice, times. and they're never yeah. gonna come back. So. But that's like steroid yeah. use in baseball. Some people are just gonna do it, and well, no, if they it's get not even. Out, it's it's if you map back, you never. Time. You're basically your career is dead. Yeah, yeah, it's just the thing that like there's a lot of people that do it. So like there's gonna be recurrent events like you know for instance Cat Lots' spot to a map back or like although it does kill their career entirely, there's so many people that do it that there's always gonna be that kill career, but it's gonna continue to happen. So we need to find a way. To you give like MLG go. a program to make both players install on their computer to make sure that they're not map hacking. So I know there's well, yeah, some days. Yeah, some yeah. Gonna but if, like, look at the old days of like Punkbuster and, and yeah, things like that. Those programs are there. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. No, I mean, that's what we had in Counter Strike. Head, 
Like, yeah, it's not worth putting a lot a of effort solution, into. It's a band-aid solution. Let's be, be let's be honest though. Let, let's just be honest. How far was Cats really gonna get with all those presents? Didn't he really get like really sense. far though? Like that. He was has. Yeah. He I mean, has a super easy. easy a what if it had packets. happened to? What if it happened with like, for example, someone almost as good as Cats, not quite as good as Cats, was map hacking against like Oz or something like that. And I was trying to do like with, with Protoss. If you see what tech building them, Cats is a production tab. It's not. It's not about the skill of the player. It's about like the potential for it. It gives I mean, you an advantage. There's not very Wait. many players that rely on on like that are not that much better than the the other guy they're playing. Um, that it's a, yeah. a big issue. I mean, I know like you could map half against point. us and you wouldn't beat them. I exactly. But what if someone better than me, like a top, almost near an A pro? Let's. This is completely okay. hypothetical. I'm not saying they would ever do it. What if Cats was map hacking, for example, or someone as good as Cats? Because there are people as good as Cats. Then people would rip his replays and he'd get caught and his career would be over. Period. It's happened before. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's exactly a case by case basis. We have to do it on a case by case basis. Yeah, like Listen. the situations there. Like you're never gonna have a situation where like if if I gave if Tombs had a map hack or like me like if I had a map hack, which yeah, obviously I don't. Free. I stream every single game I play, just for the record. By the way, some um, stream, some I'm stream. not gonna. I'm not going to beat, like, you in the call, right? Like, if I'm map hacking against him, I'm not going to beat him. His mechanics and, and decision making and all that stuff is, is just that much better. I can't yeah. close the gap. Uh, it's like, I disagree. Not, I mean, according, no, yeah, no, according I would say to... go back to uh, Brood War. Look at the players, like, when you would when you would have people that were really, really high level, they would, they would do things like shared vision and still beat you. Like, that's... Still, I mean, yeah. obviously we can't uh, okay, do that well, with StarCraft 2. It well, doesn't well, let's happen. do an example. Like, there's a guy, I don't know if he's in chat right now, but there's a guy like Nerfy, and he map packs all the time, and he's really blatant about it. And he has, like, low mid-master mechanics, but yet he's he's in Grandmaster. So I think if you had map packs and you were able to blind hard counter Yume at every single turn, and it even tells you when you're about to get supply block and when to build pylons, so you shouldn't get supply block with a map pack on. If I just call me. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to throw this stipulation in, okay? If I played Protoss and I cheesed and I map hacked, I could get Grandmasters. Look at Combat X. Not that he, you know, like he would just... Not, not to be like, not to target a Protoss, but it wouldn't work for Terran and it wouldn't work for Zerg. Well, that's because you, of proxy uh, two grades. Have you guys yeah. noticed a uh, correlation where most map hackers are usually Protoss? <laughs> yeah. Like Protoss, because you can abuse. <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, you can that's... abuse PVP. It's like super blind counter. Or, <laughs> well, not much any that, matchup. Or, yeah, yeah. Any matchup. I know, but it, it's more relevant for. Oh, he's going for a quick lair. Now I can make nine gateways and just kill him. Where he literally. <laughs> well, can't. I mean, Protoss takes the well, not the least mechanics, but I mean, Protoss. Well, okay, yeah, it's the most robust. Takes... Protoss has yeah. the most cheesy tricks, but that's the, the work in specific situations, right? That aren't stable, like doing a two gate. Proxy on a four game map is not a good idea at all. If you're map hacking, it is. Yeah. They, <laughs> right. you're map hacking, in. not even once. Yeah. Doing your proxy <laughs> oracle and then canceling it as soon as the Terran gets an engineering bay, you know, that's another example, right? Um, there's all sorts of situations you could pull it off as Protoss. I don't think it applies to the other races, though, really. I, guess I think if there's enough of a skill difference, like even just like a small marginal amount, um, the map hack's not going to work. Unless the player is like super cheesy and all right, but physics Lee, stuff. physics Lee, according, didn't you read about this? That GG, uh, whatever it's called, GG Tracker apparently stated that uh, physics Lee had about high platinum mechanics. Physics yeah. Lee had high platinum mechanics when it was like the fake guy playing. The real guy had Grandmaster mechanics, didn't he? The, re the reason why he was ultimately banned is because um, they couldn't quite hundred percent prove that he was a hacker, but what they could prove is that he was sharing his account. So oh, there was okay. no way to know. So that's why. Blizzard banned his account because they had proof for the account sharing, and that's also one of the reasons that's why like, he was disqualified. That's like arresting a murderer for jaywalking just to like get him in for quest. Al Capone. <laughs> arresting Al Capone for tax evasion. Yeah. Yeah, but that's like the that's one of the best ways to do it. Yeah. Do you just rely on map? Hack? Okay, I I think we're kind of like going a few different directions with this, and none of them are really like. Well, it's a, it's it's stupid. It's we can't, like at the end of the day, it's gonna happen. You're probably going to happen. stop it. But if you get to a high enough level and you're map hacking, eventually you're going to have to go to a LAN and get your ass kicked. Yeah. yeah. I think the so only player that still has map hack suspicion is probably Nurchio. Nurchio. Oh, I think he's the hand. only player right now that I can think of that is Hasn't like... Hasn't he kind of proven himself as like competent man? Oh yeah, no, he's a really, really amazing player. Now imagine like Flash using map hacks if they weren't in his brain, like... I don't it, think, yeah. It's not important. It's not important. Like, 
I, I guess we just have to realize that it's gonna happen. We gotta try to prevent it when we can, but it's it's going to happen. You can't stop it. And then that kind of I don't think it's as big of a problem as people think it is. It might be a, like it's somewhat of a problem, I guess, on ladder, but um, I think there's a just easier way to beat map hackers. What's, What's that? that? Because most people, I mean, up until you can't just like say they'll be bad. Like, oh no, 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 no <laughs> not always true. <clears throat> up until, well, I mean, mo until most, until well, if you look at most uh, lower level players, core focus of what they're trying to do is usually towards the early to mid game. You know, like build orders, um, not dying to like really stupid cheeses, you know, things like that, right? If they can get over that phase, then late game, <laughs> um, I feel for a lower level. Map hack is not going to be too relevant. It, so you're just saying work. if they're bad enough, then you'll still beat a map hacker. I mean, well, that's, that's the thing. Think about it. it. A map hacker is simply it's true. a map hacker is simply a more defined version of what a lower level player wants to aim for, <coughs> like perfecting the early to mid game, right? Because you don't die to anything. Like you, you could pretty much blind count them, things like that. So yeah. if they focus completely 100% of their aspect like that, that's pretty much all in. Then in a mechanical sense, it's a mechanical all in, you can say. So yeah. they're pretty much, their late game is not exactly up to par. Like even like there's like a 200 200 army, you're not going to keep track like of everything, right? So it's still possible you could pull off drops at the late game in comparison to the early game. Well, what if so, you get a player like physical? Okay, so let's say that he was, a sh you know, he was account sharing. So there was that guy who had the grandmaster level mechanics who was playing. No, no, but that's the thing. It's the thing. See, if you, um, what you're supposed to do in drops is you put them in a situation where even if they can see it coming, they can't do nothing. <laughs> it's about not the it. point, though. It's still an unfair advantage. It is an unfair it's advantage, but, th but there is an unfair advantage. But, but you, you have a way to fight it. That's what he's saying. There's a way to fight it, like. I mean, there's obviously there's a way to fight. You can you can just be better than players, but still, if you are facing a player that is better than you, then also map hacking, you have even less of a chance than you would in the first place. <laughs> and that's the that issue. only that only applies to like high level tournament play. Like, like, I don't exactly. think it matters. Well, like no anybody one, else on the honestly, ladder. I don't give a shit about people map map hacking and platinum because if they're only platinum and they're map hacking, then Something's you have a nice life. I don't like, care about the guy I get matched up with that's, that's map hacking. It's kind of like I unless he's to, smurfing and trying to slay well, me. I a just little bit. Feel, even then, I don't care. Well, I feel like um, if players learn to like do um, certain, you shouldn't play. have to make like a build order that counter map. No, 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 you'll, no not a build order essentially, but just like Strategies. on the spot, on the spot play. Like for example, like um, like let's say a platinum level player drops a medevac to do a drop attack. A typical map hacker would be able to stop it, right? Because he can see it coming. Mm -hmm. But let's say. Um, you have a very different style of drop play. Okay, it doesn't matter if your opponent is map hacking or not, because you use that typical type of drop style. You basically can drop even if they know it's coming. They can't do nothing about it. But that situation can only come certain specific points. But most lower level players don't know about that. I feel so. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's really something you have to go over though, because if you have to play against map hackers, that's already a worse problem. I got like two things to add. Uh, one, the only thing the map hacker has advantage for is if you're going for cheesy play and he just knows what you scout. If he already knows what he's going and you just don't play gimmicky, you can completely outplay them. And two, I think we should take five minutes to talk about Oxygen's food because I just got really, really hungry. Show so it. <laughs> that was that looked so good. Come well, to my house. I mean, you gotta, you can't put thumbs up. You gotta like show it. Yeah, show yeah, the food. Yeah, you gotta show us what the food. Yeah. Mm. Just pasta. Just it's pasta. just pasta. Well, none just of us pasta. have eaten in like over four hours. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I've been screaming. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I can eat whenever I want. I've got, got some meat and pop tarts. Fuck it. So I'll, have, I'll have a two thirty a.m. meal. Let's go for it. Yeah, I'm going to Taco Bell. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to meet fortunate. up. We go to some Burger King. All right. Oh wait, we're not in Korea, where everything is like within an hour's drive from each other. Right. Uh, oh, damn. Bring it at home. That ruined it. No. <laughs> Don't worry. I have the freedom to eat. I'm gonna go. Cause. I'm gonna go hang out with my uncle. Other than that, it's good talking to all of you. Thank you for having me. Nice to meet you. Nice That's to meet man. you. I second that. If you're Play wondering who I am in chat, I am Runic Tundra. I'm that annoying guy who says some silly things every now and then, but I say yep. silly things. Too. I like your silly things. <laughs> Alright guys, I'll see you later. Have yeah, fun. Yeah. See you later. It's got real quiet. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, we so have, prepared we, to talk about his food, and then like yeah, honestly, I have yeah. nothing else to talk about. Stream cheating and stream sniping. Oh, Can okay. we talk so, about this the first day? 
I have yeah, I have we, a confession to make, guys. Hold on, I, I can finish the stream sniping and stream cheating argument in like three minutes, and you can't can't counter my logic. So okay, when you stream snipe someone, you're not cheating the player. But let's say I stream snipe a Protoss player like every single game, and I just work it out. Like I'm I'm cheating the matchmaking system. Now when you stream cheating, obviously you're you're also cheating the player because you're gonna take his points. But like if I'm if I'm sniping someone. Like you're exploiting the matchmaking system, so they're both cheating, but in different senses, and that's like the end of the argument. That's you right. can't. You can't say it. that it's not cheating. It is a no, cheat. But the stream sniping, it, it's less. Of I don't a cheat think. I don't not... think there's an issue. With, I have no issue with streams. As someone who's the one getting stream sniped a lot more often than I'm stream sniping people, I don't have an issue with it. If stream cheating, of course, is like actually, it's effectively like using map hacks almost. Not quite. Yeah, I, guess, I, don't, I, guess. I don't see an issue with stream sniping unless you go to. It's like, like I'm popular map. enough for people to stream snipe me. Nice. <laughs> That's I, kind I of what I'm does. thinking. I got something to add to that, and uh, I, I kind of go with the Blizzard response, because if you don't put a delay on and you stream, it's, yeah, it sucks, and it is cheating, I completely agree, but it's entirely your fault. And I'm yeah, kind of right, exactly. Oh, yeah. you put it a is, delay on? It is your fault, but um, at the same time, you're also cheating the matchmaking system, like, completely. You really yeah, are. You can't. I yeah, but I'm, with, I'm with Mario. Like, what, what can if you really streaming, do about it's it? Part of it? There's no reason to get mad. That's what comes with streaming. I think when I watch Tombs get stream sniped, that kind of sucks, because it's like, it's a typically a better player like a GM or really yeah, high that's, masters that's player for yeah. me like personally like I don't mind playing against those guys even if they kick my ass I get to see like what I did wrong um, and it's usually not like the worst thing ever um, yeah. I can kind of see what Tombs is but I think more people just get mad and worked up about it than they than they like oh. their own game goes to goes to hell if, more if than putting, it actually if affects if you're putting your strategies out for everyone to see, someone's going to look yeah. at your strategies and use them against you. That's just how it goes. So you got to get with it. I get stream sniped a lot more than I realize because I get people all the time that are like, "Hey man, I played <laughs> you on your," and it's like, "Oh, I had no idea." I get stream sniped too. I, I, when I, I, when I actually get stream sniped, <laughs> can we all put our names in the "I got stream sniped"? Yeah. Chat? Yeah, like, I, had this, I had no I had idea. This guy like, that, that used to stream cheat me. He would actually cheat. It was like really blatant, and it's like so satisfying. Beating a stream cheater because you oh, you're yeah. so much better than them that you can beat them when they're blind hard countering you. Like it's just an awesome feeling. Like that you, is just fucking sweet. If you get like really super angry too, you, you invite the problem a lot more than you solve it. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, like Tombs, when, like, when you're getting when you're flipping out and stuff something. like that. Like you're just asking for the guy to do it again because oh, that's definitely. how he's getting his yeah. I'll and face also, a lot of like, a lot of people that snipe me are actually really bad, so it's just free ladder points. I'm not going to name any names. We'll call him Player X. I This Player X sniped me. I forgot what he did in PvP, and I still won. So oh, Player X is his actual name. <laughs> <laughs> when I play ladder, um, I face a lot of the same people over and over again, and there's yeah. a lot of people I face who are like, oh, you're that mech guy. Are you streaming? And I'll be like, yeah, I, I just... I've actually never faced you. Okay. I'd rather just have another viewer than like worry about losing a game. <laughs> uh, I actually just link them my stream. I'm like, are you streaming? Yeah, here you go. Good luck. Or, I play new people every time. Sometimes I wonder. I and faced see a full so players. many people over again. I once faced Cats like three times in a row, and I swear oh. he was going to slam his keyboard out the window. <laughs> Wait, do you, so like, does Cats not like you? No, he hates me. He oh, hates me. Really? Right? But does he like why? Why does he? Wait, hate hold you? on. I heard that someone oh, said yeah. in the chat. Why does Cats hate you? Okay, so here's what happened, all right. And if you hear it from cats, I suddenly sound like a lot more of an asshole. So, um, what I remember, and this is exactly what I remember, okay, I'm not going to mention any fuzzy details because I don't want to be, so it's like sound like I'm lying or something, but here's what happened. I faced cats several times in Wings of Liberty under the name SC2 Yosho. That's when I first met him, and uh, he seemed like a nice guy. I was a big Roots fan. So when I started playing the beta, I was I was already into heavy mech, and I was ha uh, meching a lot, and I was uh, having fun goofing around with Hellbat drops. And one day I get cats, oh, fuck. and yeah, Hellbat drops were still really really new. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna see if this works on cats because you know I respect him as a player. I'm gonna go Hellbat drop. Him. And I respect him as a player. So I, re I, I respect him. I wanted to see if he anally uh, dismantle him. With <laughs> I wanted to see if he could live up against it. Yeah. Hey, so I, I just want to clarify, yeah. Mario. This is four hellbats per medevac time, yes. right? Yeah. This was four hellbats per medevac, and um, I'm I'm playing cats. Okay. Or at the time, I wasn't sure if it was cats. Okay. Uh, I was streaming, and somebody in my stream was like, "Hey, you're facing cats," and it was like root no cancer, and I'm oh. like, "Are you cats?" And he says, "No." I'm like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> so I just hellbat drop him, and um. 
the second time I face him, I do the exact same thing. I'm like, I wonder if this guy can survive it a second time because I think he's in ca he's, he's in root, but I'm not sure. So the second time, I help bat drop him, and someone is like, hey, that's cats. I'm telling you, that's cats. I'm like, nah, he said it's not cats. So I help drop, drop him, dies again. Third game comes <laughs> up. This guy messaged me, hey, while you're facing cats, you should ask him if there's a Terran spot available because somebody just left. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm, I'm like, are you part of Root? And he says, no. And I'm like, I could swear you're Root cats because so many people have told me now. He's like, I am. I'm like, okay, that's a bit of a dick move. But all right. I'm like, <laughs> all right. I hear there's a Terran spot available. Are you guys looking? He's like, no. It's hard to tell Terrans by their skill because everyone Hellbat drops. <laughs> oh. So I, he's, he's like, the Hellbat is overpowered, so you can't accurately judge Terrans. But it is overpowered. Yeah. I told him though. I told him like, there's so many other things that you can look at. Like you can look at the other matchups. There's so many other things to see. This has never been more appropriate. If a Terran player is over, you can see different ways that a person is skilled. Like they're multitasking. There are other strategies. And I'm like, I, I disagree with you. I think they're strong, and I think they definitely deserve a nerf. But I, I think there's many other ways to see if a player is good. And it kind of went downhill from there. Because uh, he's, um, he's like, no, Terran's overpowered. We'll see you later in the year if I ever want to pick up another Terran again. I'm like, okay. And then I held bat dropped him. Cats <laughs> 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 was really mad because I've won like three or four games in a row with the same exact strategy that really pissed him off. Oh, yeah, I would hate God. you too, to be honest, because uh, like you're just abusing <laughs> things in the beta while it's really fun for you. Like Neither of you are getting good practice, and it's just like fucking up the games. But I mean, you're not wrong for doing it, I, but I would still hate you, <laughs> to <laughs> clarify. You're not wrong. You're just an asshole. <laughs> yeah. I was at the time of my life. And the next <laughs> time, I face I cats again, and this is all like within oh, the course please, of seven no. days. So that we're up to like the fourth or fifth game now, and the... Uh, is He's like, are you going to hell bat drop me? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, you're so good. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I start beginning the hell bat drops, and he's losing. We get into this huge balance discussion in the middle of our games. <laughs> and he, he like, he, he's, he's telling me Terrence so overpowered, and I'm like, you know, I completely disagree. There's so many other ways that I can Terrence teach you. Terrence overpowered. There's so many other different that. ways that I can beat you. My race isn't overpowered at <laughs> yeah. all. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Hell bad. I agree there's probably a nerf coming, but I think there's so many other ways to play this matchup, and I don't think it's impossible to stop. I'm like, if you just drop down... son of a bitch. You brought <laughs> well, logic into this to argument. Fair, to be oh, well, fair. Well, I'm like, if you have a vine and a smart crawler, and you have a few witches at each base, it is so easy to stop, even if there were four, because if you kill the medevac, they don't heal and you just split. Are you kidding me? The amount of mining time loss and damage you can do, it's, it's too much. With four Hellbats? Though. That's like hatchery killing material <laughs> well, I mean, with two Hellbats, it's still the, overpowered. The reason why it's main, it, I mean, the reason why it's so good for mech is because mech don't really do aggression. But if you can put aggression with mech too, you basically can play like what Lyle would able, be able to do. So there rather... Like if you look at mechers, like there's usually, there are particular play styles of mechers. Like there can be a mecher that plays aggressive. There can be a mecher that likes to really turtle super super hard and just get like the perfect army, even though he gives up the entire map to the opponent. Like they like things like that. But if you play aggressive mech, even, they, even though there's more consequences and risk, um, things like hellbat drop is not as risky as it's supposed to be. So it's like. So it's oh, really here we really go cool. again. There, there are so many Zergs I face though. Like it, it didn't get any harder to Hellbat drop. You just bring an extra medevac, and surprise is actually better because you have an extra thing healing you, and you can go in opposite directions. It's just I, I mean, face so many Zergs who drop like a few spines and spore. They're perfectly safe. Many expos. It's not no worth problem. it. No, no, it's not worth it because it, it, it defies what they're doing this whole time. It's it, it's actually imbalanced, like straight up. Oh. What do you think about Hellbats and like straight up engagements? Are they imbalanced or just just the drops? Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. Straight up engagement. I mean, it's kind of weird because to begin with, their direct engagements are already strong. But to make it stronger, it's like it only what it only would do is just put more emphasis on like um, hitting around it. Really, like you can't you can never do head on engagements unless like you're super confident. I, I'm a I'm a firm believer that if you know the hellbat is drop is coming, um, you can easily stop it, and you will be ahead because they don't have I many don't units to back you up against it. Completely don't like, agree with it. Like, do you have a lot of trouble with hellbat drop and Terran against Terran? 
No, it's just the, the, the resource you have to put in to stop it is a lot higher than every single other attack in the game. But I only I only put like a bunker, four marines, and a missile turret, right. and yeah, I stop but if it. You, yeah, if you do that, you can't get a fast third, and then you, you're going to lose straight up in the macro game. That means that if you do that, like in the turn versus turn, you're just going to lose every what, time. Do you have to hell bad drop? But I, I get a really fast efficient? third anyway. Like it, no. it doesn't stop. It doesn't, it doesn't matter because your third's not going to move out. Like it's just sitting there. It's completely useless. Like every player who has the worst matchup TVT, this is a common. This is a pretty much a common uh, correlation. And you the players who are winning are just doing hellbat drops. Is that the implication? No, 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 no. That's not true. <laughs> it's just like the amount of resource you put in for the attack. It's just not as high as it's supposed to be. But if you shut it down, no matter how many well, to but a even if extent. you even if you shut it down, it's like the threat still exists. Like you you're gonna have to put extra defense later on. It's like it's like it's like this. Like if a Zerg goes like me, let's say. And he keeps adding more and more and more meters over time. You're gonna to need to put more turrets over time, right? But Terrans don't do that. That's why these turrets like do absolutely nothing and just break apart. Like you have to put more investment initially compared so, to over time. Wait, were you here when Mario went over his change that he proposed? Nope. No. Mm. All right. But basically, you... Mario said to sum it up, uh, you can't drop units out of out of Metavax while it's being boosted. You have to wait mm. until the boost is over. No. What I um I mean the only problem with boost I feel is things like Doom Drop, like they're really exploitable. So yeah. what you should do as a res because if think about it, if you put like a line of turrets, you could speed boost it or you could speed boost through the turret line and you still will retain your Metavax. Whereas if you put normal speed without this boost, you lose those medevacs, right? So if you're going to boost, it should take extra damage during the movement speed so that it's still, you can't doom drop. It'll basically be the same. Do you, you know what I mean? You take How do you damage. deal with those? Uh, that would, those doom that would still make it impossible, though, for like no, no, early, a... early mech. I mean, uh, early bio to where they just drop yeah, yeah, the but that's the point. on top of them. But that's the point. Like, if that part is the medevac early game is retained, or at least it can still be dealable a lot easier. But over the course of the game, it's weaker because, like, the like for example, like flaw like late game, let's say uh, TVT mech, like if a player doom drops, you're pretty screwed no matter what because you know you, if you lose your production, like you're in a pretty shitty situation, and you, if you can't if you try to defend it, you can't like really defend against it. So um, it it makes late game mid to late game more forgiving, I guess, in a mechanic sense. Is that a bad thing? Um, like. Does that reduce the skill Was it? Yeah. No, no. Like, like, Does that reduce the skill ceiling of the game? It won't reduce the skill ceiling of the game, but it basically removes like the ultimate comeback a Terran can do. That's totally unforgivable. It, it's so abusable, especially versus Protoss, <laughs> that like Protoss players can't do anything about it. It's like a free drop, and you get out the moment they come in, and it's just like, okay, I just took, I just got free damage. That's it. It's, yeah, but isn't that mirrored by the the ability for a Protoss player to mass recall? Mass yeah. recall doesn't. It's not instant though. It's like even if you do that, like, well, like neither you're still is neither is pulling your medevac. But it's the not game, instant. not every race should have the same toolbox. Like, yeah, I, I think, think it's a lot that... different to compare the two. To be honest, because like you it's can a, target down a well, medevac like, easily. It's like a nidus or it's like a, a the mass recall. Medevac speed boost uh, is pretty much a free buff. It's there's no research required. There's no consequence. There's no drawback. Like, it's does? only it's only a it's only a free plus if you compare it to wings. Do you? What about what about just throwing out there? What if they made it an upgrade? You had to like have a tech lab on your starport to but upgrade medevac speed boost. Then that would be silly because. But all, that would take well, longer to get medevacs out for uh, that, drops. That's the thing. It's just, that means medevac speed is only relevant to late game, right? Not they've early. They tried so hard. Like they nerfed the way you get hellbats like eight different times. Help yeah. that's supposed to be an early game unit, I and think... that's where its like biggest strength is in the early game, which is why you see Terrans rush it. It's actually I, like pretty trash late game in a lot of situations. I think that the Hellbat drops, uh, it's just like the same thing when drops were first announced, like in Wings of Liberty Beta, Terran was so overpowered for many reasons, but one of them was because of the drops, nobody was used to it. To be honest, I think it's one of those things that can just easily be stopped if you know exactly what you're doing with each race. I, I, don't, I don't believe it. I mean, it could, I honestly, it could easily be stopped, but the amount of resources you put in is it's ridiculous I'm, Like to just invest. It's stupid because you're just going to sit there like... You're just letting a mecher do whatever he wants, basically. I, like, if, if you and, and if you are the mecher, it's the other way around. You basically sit like harder on two base. Like you're gonna get a fourth, third base, like 13, 14 minutes, and it's really stupid. Like 
that's that's is all it stupid equities. or is it just a different strategy? Like, I don't no, know. It's, if not, you... it's not a strategy. It's just a you're, it's it's it, you're, it's just a pull and push and pull thing. Like you're either being more aggressive or you're being not as aggressive. Like did did you watch the WCS when I was fighting it. Noni? Because uh, I believe in in the earlier stages of the group, I really tried to help bad drop him, but he was so effective at shutting it down. Um, even just one or two drops that I got to the stage where I didn't simply have enough help well, to be fair, that's stage. just but those are just blind drops. Like I don't, I I never suggest anything about blind drops. If you just calculate drops, it's different. There's a difference between calculate drops and blind drops. Just hope that it does damage, kind of thing. I, I'm talking more like a, I'm talking more like it'll be like the middle of the game in one of the first matches we had. It was really close. It's like th four base to four base, uh, and he's uh, expanding to his fifth, and I'm attacking in one direction. And I'm sending two drops out in different directions. The only thing he did is he warped in like one templar at each base. He had no cannons. He warped in one templar at each base. A few stalkers fed. Uh, Feed back the medevac before it got even close yeah, to his I've, base, and then boom, it's dead. As okay. but that's I just played every race like, against Hellbat drops, and I, I find the only race that does seem to have a little bit of an issue with it is Terran, because his Zerg, like, as long yeah, as you have spine crawlers, uh, as spine crawlers, eventually, like, they'll <laughs> get a few shots off. It's okay. No, 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 no. I know how to do damage. Like, I, 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 I test. Uh, there's a particular way. Like, I had a player, I had a teammate test it against me. Uh -oh. Like, he had two spines and two sports per base. I still could do damage. There's I a mean, way. you'll get Teach damage, me the ways. You'll lose, you'll a, lose the way. meta back and you'll lose the hell No, no, no. There's a, no, that's the thing. That's because you lose the meta back. Now, what if you don't? There's a way to do that. See, there's, there, there's, a, there's a way to play around with it. You, you could probably still do some damage, but I mean, you're going to have to get the, the static defense anyway in the later stages of the game. We I don't think it yeah. matters too the much, especially really, as a mech player. The, the, here's, here's the problem. You guys are looking at static defense as a way to completely shut down drops. It's not meant to shut down, it's meant to zone. That's what I'm for, saying. Like, you'll lose for, drones when you defend it. If no, you no, 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 but that, that's because they just ramble the thing in. Like, see? Like, imagine TBT. You put a turret in your middle line. Does it stop Banshee? No, it just zooms, it just zones them out. It's not meant to stop, like, Banshee, right? So, in the same sense, it's like that for Zerg and Protoss. It doesn't mean you shut down the drop, but it means you definitely... Templar do. Templar do. I mean, do. Templar, yeah, but uh, you can still do it early. There's no problem with Hellbat drops, I think, in PvT, because yeah, you either same. have Nexus Cannon uh, in the early game, or you have Templar when you get later on, or Blinkstalker, so... I, I faced uh, the Zerg on ladder. I know pretty abusive players when it comes to doing it. I faced the Zerg on... I would, definitely, I would definitely not say... I faced his Zerg on ladder, and then um, what he would do is he really know how to use the mech opener. Like, there's only so many ways that I can open up safely. And he kept me pinned down in my base, and then he would just mass expand and drop, like, three spine crawlers in the middle of each mineral line. And no matter what I did, I was always That's forced to directly to engage. attack the mineral line. Get it? Cause you still, because the problem with mechers, I feel, is they're so focused on killing drones just to get a lead. That's not true. There's other ways to get lead, but you have to... Think of other priority targets. Like, yeah, you can like cost efficient. Oh, no, that, that you can attack other places. Like for example, the is rat. this is this attack? actually a problem now? No, it's it's. I mean, I mean, it's not Hellbat, a problem. Hellbat drops are like they're really really strong. They're, in fact, they're stronger than they should be. But is that uh, the problem? They're, then? they're pretty much closer line. They're close line to Imba, but you know. I don't. I think yeah, we kind of moved think... away from the story a little bit too. <laughs> How bad drops? You don't even like. Even if you're killing like 20 drones at like 17, 18 minutes, you're not it's really. A, yeah. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, there are some players who can definitely out drone exactly what you're doing and have no problem with it. I mean, exactly. I definitely think well, they're like, a little that's, strong. Besides, but it's just, but that's just hell bad drops too. You have normal Hellions. Like, you know what the biggest problem about mechers is? Like, especially mecking, you get the habit of keep making hell bats. You never, ever situationally go to normal Hellions. That's. Like, I, don't I don't think there's many that. situations where normal Hellions would be better. Uh, but there, no, there there is though. Like, you can do it. See, see, like every time you think about Hellbat, the Hellbat drop, they prepare the defense for a drop play, but essentially not the run by play. If they prepare that, then they're just pretty good. But I mean, I, I'm telling you, there's so many ways to do damage. Like no matter what, if you open up replay, there's always a weak spot. Always, there always will be. But the question is, how they're gonna find out about it? That's how I feel. I I, I should see it. Like if, um, but that's just like early mid. Like it's just aggression, right? But most games I lose is because I like super derp, because I don't think because I only play like it's a week. So the reason you lose is because you're bad, but the reason you win is because the strategy is good. Mm, yep. <laughs> okay.
<laughs> so I've solved every matchup this turn now. That's the exact opposite with the tombs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I only lose because but, uh, the matchup is broken, and then I win because I'm so amazing. So yeah, I always think of myself as a very, very bad player, and everyone under me is even worse. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, actually that's a so. see. That's a horrible mentality. See, if you have to think about it, a good player always thinks a positive mindset and not getting better, right? But yeah. for me. It's like, okay, I know what the highest level is. I played Korea. I'm, I'm on MVP. I would know. I would know, like, good players, and I know firsthand I've seen players with my own eyes, like, how good they are mechanically, decision-making-wise, and everything. Now, if you compare that to me while I play, it doesn't matter if I stomp them or, like, I win the game. Because I know because of the level it's at, I feel like I'm a bad player, even if I win. So, Everyone. yes, even if I beat, But that's like, not fair. That's and not fair. It's not, but of course. True. Everyone's a bad it's player. Just, it's just compared it's to just, like yeah, or whatever. Exactly. That's it's why it's true. Like that's why I feel like it's terrible mentality. This is like a total little recycle of old conversation too. After it's like just, four hours, yeah, right, it's like it Saturday happens. night pie again. All like, like, it's, it's, it's only it's like five hours in. Now, like so it doesn't matter. Whatever. Like it doesn't matter to me. Like if I have somewhere that ranges 350 to 400 APM, I feel like I'm still a bad player because I feel like there's so much things I can work on because every time I look at something, I know what to improve on. But How? Just... How would you improve as quickly as possible in That's less than three question. sentences? I always ask, and I have no idea how to answer it. I, always, I go to other people, I say, guys, how do I improve faster? And they because, say, no, because... The, that's, but that's the thing, like, most people look at this thing and say, okay, this is where you messed up, oh, this is where you messed up. But then here's the thing, there are people that miss things, like, opportunity. Um, opportunity cost, it, like, um, there's, oh, some things you can do in, there's some things in the game you can do that you could have taken an opportunity to take, like, calculated risk to put yourself in a lead, right? But most players don't see those. Um, opportunity. They just, well, it's, it, it's they just, let, they just, that, yeah. They, yeah. They just completely let it pass by. Like for example, if you stay on three base macro, don't even attack. You technically don't take any risk, but you don't also take any opportunity to, like, get yourself in the lead. Like you're just playing like straight up. The most common thing I see at a platinum and diamond replays when I'm coaching somebody, or I see it on team stream all the time. Um, where situationally something will happen, they'll stay in their base, and then eventually they lose like a really strong late game army. Um, and they'll like go back and watch that and be like, oh man, I didn't have Marauders, I didn't do this. They analyze the hell out of that endgame thing. And then it turns out in like 10 minutes, the other guy actually didn't have anything. You could have walked across the map and just killed him. Yeah. yeah. See, like, that, if you look that at happens me. so much. Like You have to be really careful with your replays. It's like Stargate openings, right? Like Everybody's doing Stargate openings in uh, DreamHack. But for the most part, the players that you and I are playing on ladder, when they do a Stargate opening, there's really not a lot that they can put behind it. Yeah, so I just if you deflect the, the Stargate, that. you just walk across the map and kill the Protoss player if you open Stargate. Because yeah. there's no splash, and your bio is just going to be way better than whatever he has. So many times. Yeah. That's, the, right? and That's so fun. But you like watch it. like an average Terran play, or you look at the replay, and they take a little bit of damage, think they're behind, and stay in their base and do nothing, and then the Protoss eventually gets to a splash, and then they win not, the game. At, like, in cases like that, you got to make a decision. Like it, A lot of players don't know like what he actually invested to do a strategy. Since I play random, I know exactly what the other player invested to do well, a strategy. But, but... See, all, a lot of players should have a basic concept of timing attack. Like If you look at the lower level players, the one core key timing attack that Filter would put like emphasis on would be the meta back timing, right? Like man, these. That's why players, if they execute it with um, constantly, nonstop, they get really, really good at it. But that's not the only timing attack that exists. There's, there's mid to late game timing attacks. Yeah, that what you, you doing, do. filter? There's well, mid to, no, yeah, there's yeah, tons. Yeah. There are, you there, are mid, there are also mid to late game timing attacks that players can take. But the problem is, most people are so fixed upon builders in early game to mid game that they don't see about any of those opportunities that can take. Like there's or two ultra late game. When, like, when you say opportunity cost, it's such a you're bringing in a whole nother level of StarCraft. That's no, 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 no. That's not a whole nother. It's just an aspect that pe people just don't look at at all. Exactly. It's, it's on. A, it's a different level. Lower, lower, low, lower level. Uh, all the lower level players I teach, um, they start integrating into that. That's why it's a good foundation they can do to improve. That's why, for example, like I have like let's say six students who are silver like five months ago. They're pretty much masters now, except for one of them, they're in diamond. But be because they have the foundation to improve on, they basically can improve in the long run a lot shorter because they're learning the same college level stuff you can say in StarCraft to 
basically get boost on. They're not going to get, oh, this is a bronze only build order, or this is a strategy that only works at this point, and then you have to move on to something else. I'm, I, I definitely don't do that. Like, I teach them straight yeah. up. Like, look at Korean pros. When they're noobs, do you teach them like the noob only builds and then they move on to the, the pro level builds? No, it's because they start working on the stuff that is actually legitimate and they keep working on it. So, but then you have to explain it and show it how to do it in precise detail so they can build a mechanical a foundation behind it. Yeah, but that's yeah. why you start the lower level players with lower level things so I that they can build on it. You can't just start them with those It's to build decision making. It's not to no, build like a certain build order. It's no, to build you, like this you is what you do when shit goes that's, bad. But that's really silly. Ooh. See, 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 if you look at it in life, like why do you think Asian parents teach their kids to do ridiculous shit at a, such a ridiculously young age? Because, it's because they can actually handle it. No, they yeah. can't. That's the thing. Because they can't handle it, it's, I human, mean, it's human nature to adapt into it. And because they adapt into it, they learn and it becomes a part of them. It, it, beco it becomes mechanically, mechanically bound into them. That, that it, it becomes natural. Like, for example, well, yeah, that's, uh, idea, how many Asian kids do you teach piano at the age of like three and they become like prodigies by the, like, by the mid age? Because but then they're they not have, prodigies. I totally agree with that. Like, that's I'll not use, a prodigy. That's the well, point. You don't, don't want prodigies. That, oh, but example. they're still good. At this, no matter what, they're no, still no, better no. than the average thing. It's because you have, a head, you have a head start learning the right material. You should not be teaching wrong material because it's just that. That, just that I, but, I you totally don't start the, but you don't start the three-year-old on, 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 a, on a Mozart piece. You start yeah, yeah. the three-year-old on, on, a, on, a, you know, on C Spike Run. Yeah, yeah you have to build like, that. I mean, yeah, 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 that's true, but you still teach them basic stuff first, right? Like, you know how to you press teach them, you know, the yeah, yeah. teach them mechanically properly. I mean, yeah, but, there's a but way those that are, you... But those are things you still use all the way to, like, I'm... to Mozart's piece. You still know the, the notes, oh, yeah. you still... Yeah, you have same to push thing. yourself. Now in Star in the Star in Starcraft two terms, like it's it's not any different. That's why um when like for example, like I'm I'm working on a guide, right? <laughs> Which is actually a good moment. You know, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the guide basically integrates something like that. That's why I had play I have some players that actually promote one league up even though it's only like very few. Material, there's few content because it teaches a player in chronological order. So you think about it. If you talk to yourself, say, "How did I start learning StarCraft?" If you think about how you started learning StarCraft, you pretty much got pretty much hell and like you know all that bullshit rained upon you. Like you learned everything in just whatever time one time. Like like you probably learned Marine Split like when you're in Diamond. Some players learn Marine Split when they're like in Plat, right? Like you're learning things completely out of order. There's no like kindergarten to like eleventh grade, like you know, lecture, like easy to heart. You just learned everything that just throws at you, right? It's not organized. It's not chronological. But right. I've, I want. I'm creating a systematic way, so it's a lot easier. I... To improve. But but uh, see, but you're putting it in a controlled mm. environment. The reason it's like all hell and, and high water is because your these experiences are not being thrown at you in a in a. It's a, it's lighter. You're, exactly, you're playing exactly, players exactly, a different play exactly, style. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I'm giving them the situation. See, if it's I a get, better way of teaching. Does, but does it work? Yeah. That is how you have to do it as a coach. Like, you gotta, you have to teach a master's level way of thinking because is if they're forced to uh, play at a master's level, even if they're like the silver league, if eventually they will have to play at the master's level. That's the point. That's what I was saying earlier about having the Koreans come and play on NA like three hours ago. That's exactly the same situation then. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's like Silver yeah. Leaguers or NAGMs. But like. this, here's the thing. Like, if you, give, if you give them the level where like, it should be at, then they, like, there are a few routes that it can turn out. One, they could turn out like me thinking I'm bad even though I'm really good. That's one. Or the second way is you actually have a foundation of what to work on. So, like, like say, you don't, you're not dependent on a coach, let's say, to know what your mistakes are. You just look at a replay and you know what you made your mistakes on and you know what to work on. You basically have the ability to self-think and self-improve. You're not dependent on anyone to improve as of that moment. Option three, you fail horribly and go play law. But, <laughs> <laughs> that, only that happens. happens. That only happens Speaking of which, welcome back, Coca and Puzzle. We missed you. I that feel like you I feel like we're talking about an happen. extended period of a, an earlier conversation about an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, that's. I mean, well, he, he brought up a lot of really good points. Though. I really, I actually, he put it more concisely than I think any of us did. So this is what we get it's, for bringing new people in in the middle. We just are saying the same. But we're getting <laughs> middle. Like new. I know that's we get a huge very part of like how how I like to teach people and, and try to do it too. Like a lot of people ask me like why my benchmarks are so hard. 
Um, and they're ones that I miss on a regular basis, right? And that's because you ha you have to be doing something that challenges you to all kinds of different levels to really push yourself to get better. And like, I, think I, I have my, like, my first video is like just a pure extreme example that you can win by just making a lot of crap. Yeah, um, but I hate exactly it when I have like, somebody who gets to like gold league and they're still they're still using that like just mass marine build because it doesn't you don't really learn anything from it. It's just an example of what making a lot of stuff can do for you. Well, yeah, um, okay, and you have so to move on to the next steps, right? That's you that's have like, to you have to constantly push yourself. It's like tombs with his TBZ right now, right? There's times when it works out really well. Um, there's times when it doesn't, but I'm sure every single game he feels like he's getting pushed to get better, and eventually it'll kind of click into place. But you can't, you so, can't just like, like a good, like a lot of people say to like one base all in and like four gate you're in masters and stuff like that, and I like stuff like that drives me crazy because you don't, you're not pushing your own skill set no, at all. But there, but there comes a time where, so this happened to me back when I was in bronze. What did I do to get out of bronze? I just did the the, the three racks, and oh, actually, I think I had two racks, yeah, and I got out of bronze into silver just by you know just by actually just making things out of those facilities. And then I got to silver, and what happened? The two racks just stopped working. And I had to... And the same thing happens. People can four-gate their way into Masters, but there comes a point, especially it happens, I think, around Diamond, where the four-gate stops working as much, at least, unless you're at a really high level with it. And and, and you have to adjust. There, yeah, there comes yeah. a point where One you have the, to say to myself... Have seen my changes to my Heart of the Swarm stuff? Like, I know Yumi talks a lot about decision-making. Um, and I, I really don't talk that much about it because, to be perfectly honest, I'm not that good at it. Um, but a lot of it is very, very open, um, and it forces you to win by by playing your mechanics and then seeking out different guides. So seeking out stuff that's going to teach you decision making, because I can't teach you that, right? Um, I want to intentionally leave it open. I'm trying to get away from like that and, and timing, and timing, because there are so many people that would just like get the platinum or diamond and then be like, oh, I, I can't improve. I'm not, this timing doesn't work. What if he has this and this and this? And it's like, well... But that's what I'm saying that you have to adjust to, is that there, yeah, you, you have to make the realization that you can't alert. stick with oh, that time. And, and you have to, you have to adjust your game. People to think. Yeah, it's absolutely. Like, it, I think because we're all really actually saying the same thing right now. Uh, to summarize it, just... It's like a... Sh I, I, I guess I want to use the shoe metaphor. Either you have a smaller shoe that doesn't fit and you're like... We're assuming infinitely growing feet here. It's a bad metaphor. But you have a smaller shoe that doesn't fit, and like it, oh, and once it fits comfortably, you're like, okay, this is my thing. It works. But That's you're not going to go any faster or farther. farther. Well, if you have a larger shoe, but you don't fill it yet, then you have a lot more to go. You have a lot more base, a lot more foundation. And that's the way you have to think about StarCraft to improve, as everyone in this call has improved pretty much, um. much further uh, over the last few years, so. You have another, to understand too. If another, you're in Silver League, like you are gonna die to stupid stuff. That like doesn't make any like a Protoss might put down a like, they might mine a bunch of gas or like a Zerg. Let's use Zerg as an example. They take two gas really really early, and then they don't spend it. And then like at ten minutes, like fifteen mutalists come into your base and kill you. Like that, yeah. you're you're you don't understand how to punish that and play against that yet. Um, and your whole understanding, if you're learning of somebody who's really, really good, will tell you like he's going to bailing bust you or road rush you when he gets that much gas. And all he's doing is just banking it to get a bunch of mutas. You don't understand how to punish and play against that yet. So you have to basically just take that game and, and you can't really learn from it yet. That's because the decision I make is teaching them how to not die to stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. How many I... players get so frustrated they lose the first like <laughs> seven, eight minutes to a single timing? Right? I, no, but you have to. If you, when you have teaching, to say to yourself, if you're in that situation, is that if you if you're actually looking to improve, is you have to say to yourself. No, no, but that's a good. That's a good way. See, see, the good, greatest part about decision making is it's not. There's not one way to go around. There are multiple. Oh, there are multiple ways to go around. Every no, but but instead of instead of a, getting frustrated at that stuff, you can just say to yourself, "I'm actually they're playing for." That's what I would. Whatever I died to cheese in, in the lower leagues, uh, I would always say to myself, "They're playing for ladder points, and I'm playing to get better." Well, anyhow, um, what I'm saying before <laughs> is, what I'm saying, what I'm saying before is that um, the decision making I give out is merely what you may call possibility. So let's say a pros has two gas. There is a possibility that he can do a one base tech play, right? And I tell him how would you scout that, and I pretty much draw a really, really, really good flow chart. That if he, if there are certain conditions that follow, you just follow the little flow chart, with your little <laughs> finger, and if you memorize it, congratulations, you know how to scout Protoss. It's that easy. 
Now, if you don't do that, then you're taking a chance or you're going to die. Yeah. And there are countermeasures to that. If there's a possibility of that, you want to put preparations just in case. Even if it's not coming or even if he does a completely different thing, you're eliminating the possibility of that one aspect. So that's yeah. how I would teach at a lower level. To basically I, not die, to build up some consistency. And if they build consistency, they can po probably comfortably play late game a lot better because most players are not, most Terran players are not good at late game. And the reason why is because they're so focused early to mid game, like they completely ignore this one aspect because they probably either win by that point or, you know, take a, like a risk or something. I think what we can all agree on here is that there are many ways to learn and someone has to have, are you going to start with the foundation? Because uh, yeah. hearing everybody talk, we all have our very own different styles of I teaching. I think we're all kind exactly. of saying the same thing here. Though. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think we all it's came to the same. I think we all came to the same conclusions through our own experiences. I, I think this stream has always been going on for like five hours now, or, or has been going on for five hours, and I'm I'm pretty tired and about to go to bed. So we should. All, yeah, all, the, all the people yeah. who I think we should end. after two to three hours. If I could finish the story real fast, because okay, I finish your story. Oh. Bring okay, it back. Hurry up. All right, so the we're now with the fifth game against cats, and uh, <laughs> oh my god, another game against cats. At, at this stage, it, it goes up to seven games. At this stage, cats decides that he wants to go swarm host and fester, and that is his perfect counter. But he's got nothing back at home, so he just flat out dies, loses, and he spends 20 minutes on his stream telling everyone how bad of a player I am. So, hearing a lot of things about this, I actually thought it would be funny to uh, whisper cats my stream link while he was in the middle of a game. Ooh, that's VM. Yeah, yeah that's really it VM. looks pretty VM. I was uh, I was a little bit pissed off that he spent 20 minutes talking about me. So I was like, if you want to watch uh, the different point of view of somebody who doesn't rage, here's my link. Uh, oh, Wait, hold on. So let me get this straight. So you this hellback drop him. Dude, hold on, hold on, hilarious. hold on. So you, you do a gimmicky hellback drop five games in a row, and Katz goes to your play and says, well, this is a really gimmicky hellback drop, and this guy's a bad player, which is the case if you're doing hellback drops. And then you send him your link. <laughs> Even though Katz was always in the right, because you're doing a gimmicky build. I, I don't and think like, like no, it's a, Mario, I don't no. think that makes me a bad player. What Mario, really yeah, happened is that after you're five fucking games, up your practice. I, I think that really after up your practice. I think that after five games, I got really tired of of Cat saying shit on me, and like oh. after saying five games of good luck, have fun, and him going fuck you, what? I decided to retaliate Dude, a little you're bit. You're basically in the beta abusing something you know is broken on purpose just to beat cats or whoever you're trying to beat. So yeah, it not only is it gimmicky, but yeah, it's no, not. It, I don't even think it was broken. I mean, it I, wasn't just you know, to beat cats. Four hellbats in a meta was It's still not broken. Well, it's it's not. Uh, you lasted longer. Then I would expect you to, Mario. Wiedemann's three pylon blocked me, and I was winning the game, so I linked my cheat stream in the game. I think that was a little bit more BM. But um, I, I, if someone BMs you five times in a row, and Come they on, know you're going to get mad. Shit, you're going to get mad. And yeah. it wasn't even I, that. Like, it's I just, cats still, I just like, does Cats still hate you? Oh, yeah. Or is it? Uh, our last game, um, he actually, I said, good luck, have fun. And he said, um, he said, fuck off. And I said, can't we have a nice game of StarCraft? He says, no, I'll just block you. There's no such um, thing as a nice game of StarCraft. It was, <laughs> it was a really fun game. You know, game. the nicest okay, players, okay. I, know, like, I don't know why he would hate you. I talked like, after. I talked like, after filter. I called it. I didn't even hell bats <laughs> in our last <laughs> game, I think. I used a lot of hell bats as the finish, <laughs> though. Um, I actually ended up making like 50 Hellbats at the end of it and just running him around under his units and killing his bases to kind of troll no. him. I, so like you're wondering why like you're like... No, I don't wonder why Katz hates me. <laughs> After right, the right, fifth right. game, I just decided to have fun with it. And that's the I, thing you see my YouTube my turn, my turn. Katz. All right. I think you guys have to take into account that Katz is a player with pride and no. Don't hurt his pride, damn it. No, in the beta but, when but, things but, are but seriously though, how would you feel like if you're a very known player and you start losing to a, some nobody? Like, and it's only because they're growing not, the NA not, scene. Not not because you got the experience or anything, but you were exploiting basically a singular strategy that has not yet been like solved. It's it's the same thing when the it's a, it's, 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 a compare, it's a compare, it's a it's a completely demoralizing play like. Then, if anything, there are some players like that who would brag about them beating a pro level player. It's like, oh, I took one game off. It dropped the most slow, blah, blah, blah. Well, like, like, that's not that? even the whole thing. Like, I, I mentioned in the beginning of the story that Katz and I faced a lot of each other in, in Wings of Liberty. I was just under a different username before I quit. So, I mean, I, I've never lost against him in Wings of Liberty playing straight up standard, and I just decided to test the strategy. And after but a few times, 
Yeah, he, he wasn't aware of that. But after a few times, I got BM'd. And you know what? After five games of saying good luck, have fun, and just having fun with the game, I decided to retaliate a little bit. But he's, All right. he's not BMing you. You're BMing him by going, how about I drop every no. single fucking game? No. It's, I think it's, no. it's a yeah, no. 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 It's I a war. I understand why cats, is, no. cats would be mad at you. Like, I totally get why he'd be mad at you. I'd be pretty pissed, too. I'd be pretty pissed. I don't hate cats. I have nothing against him. Um, but I'm I surprised he still him. hates you, but I'm I'm totally understanding why he would. <laughs> There's a guy who... Yeah. I would, too, man. Master. Like, if some guy just, like, kept raping me with the same, like, proxy like double reaper or whatever it was well figure was, out how to beat if, the double reaper look look th there's a guy who got the grandmaster just massing cannons is he bming everyone who would is he, be that is, who there, know? A, who he streams he got the grandmaster <laughs> just cannon rushing no, he's, he's a modern right no no the um, thing no, is, mario do you actually not Hold on, Mario, here's the thing, right? Like, cannon rushing is not broken at all, but four Hellbats and a Medivac was broken, and pretty much it everyone knew it from broken. the get-go. It needs to go back to four and a Hellbat. Okay, 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 hold on. Before Tomb starts trolling, we all pretty much knew it was broken from beta. Like, it was pretty clear that Hellbat drops, especially four and a Medivac, maybe two and a Medivac still broken, that it was Man. broken. And you, you're sitting just here, you can't deal like, with it doesn't mean it's not broken. You, like, there basically are, taking games off cats by just you know, doing this build that we all know it's broken, and I'm sure you knew it was broken, and so none of you are getting good practice, and of course he's going to be mad, because so he's one, streaming one, one. to like 2,000. <laughs> no, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and he's yeah, but it is a certain bronze level oh, strategy. Well, wait, wait, at, at, wait a, a point, I'm right. at a point, I think, uh, I think Mario was just being like, all right, you can't stop this drop. I'm just going to do this and be a total dick. He's going to have to practice against it anyway. I'm not going like, to be the first person to do it. No, I wasn't the only one held that drop. No, no, yeah, I, I think you remember. I'm saying, I think what about Wings of Liberty, the one, one, one versus him? Idra, where he's like apologize for that race? Like, yeah, that, exactly. There's so that, much that, overpowered you know, we, shit. We can't, we can't even. You know, if it's in the game, it's in the game. Exactly. It's not a dick move. Yeah, look, dropping mules. Yeah, it's a little bit BM, but whatever. It's part of the it. game. You know. Then just, you dance them, right? No, yeah, then you dance. But that's fun. But so is drops are not. Mule dropping's not BM. Nobody really thinks. There are there are two things that are BM in my in my mind. Actually, there's there. what you say out and when you preemptive GG. Those gotta, are the two I gotta, BM things. I gotta, or if I you lift your buildings and like float to the corner. I, I have a perfect response to this. In the beta, Wings of Liberty beta, four gate was the most overpowered shit. And how many players built their name on the four gate because it was in the game? Are they bad mannered? Was Wait, white what? Wait, and hold on. Okay, okay, was, okay. you really want to you really want to talk about that because I know so many Terrans pretty much got by with season one and two exploiting Terran like all yeah, of and no, they were I don't think the mass reaper they, I don't think was, it's they, were, they were okay from the four gate More scenario of, the four gate speed. thing the four gate thing was up until like a diamond to masters point low masters in fact but Terran all lands went all the way up to the GM level yeah like there are and so, so many it's like the robo sentry bit by bit, bit man PVC bit by bit what changed that Mortal Century didn't become good, good. Grandmaster? Why? Because people actually made Hydras and they realized hybrid, Hydras actually have decent DPS. But the, the but more. You mean the metagame is... changed, not like the player? <laughs> like, no, the metagame changed because back then people go. didn't want to make I, Hydras. I completely cause... understand why Cats hate you, but I don't know why he would like still hate you, I guess. But the moral of it is, is that, yeah, it might I have been overpowered at the time. Um, I think it, it was still unstoppable, but it's, I, think I don't think it's not overpowered now. Okay, so, so but, uh, here's the thing. It's, it's like if I played someone on stream, and let's just say he does a proxy 2-gate plus X. I don't know what X is, but I can't stop this proxy 2-gate. He's doing it to me five games in a row. So at this point, he's just exploiting the game by something that is in the beta and that is broken, and you're just exploiting it at this point. Of course, I'm going to be on stream... Analyzing this replay, saying, "Well, this guy is just really bad. He's just exploiting a bad part of the game. And is, I don't know why he keeps like doing it." There's no, there's no bad there's part a difference, of the game though. Be because it's honestly, doing like, it for 20 minutes and like trashing somebody with like attacks is kind of overboard. Yeah. Look, the more like, I do it, all you do is you like you would go in your replay and you'd be like, "Oh, this guy's trash. He just does hellbat drop. He's done him five times in a row. This guy's trash. Whatever new game." Yeah, you 20 can. minutes is like, if I'm you've been held that job five times in front of 2,000 people, I would be angry as fuck for a very, very long time. Yeah, but I think, I would be angry I think as you're too. more angry about not being able to hold it. And I don't think, like, yeah, I don't think that's that it was necessarily. Much more I don't even think it's that big of an issue. I think it was just a funny story. I don't I know if it warrants discussion. And we should do our final shout outs because I want to go play. There's still a little bit more to the story, too. Oh, no, finish the story. Finish the story. No, no, no. So now, whatever happens is that you remember the early part of the story. I told you that uh, somebody messaged me saying Root was looking for a Terran player because somebody dropped out. Well, in the second game, 
or yeah, the second or third game, I asked cats, are you guys looking for a Terran player? And this one went into this huge discussion. Now every time somebody brings up my name or I talk to him, he says, stop begging me to join RIM. <laughs> <laughs> So, a yeah, little bit of... When you introduce yourself like that, it's a really bad impression. Yeah. Introduce you yourself mean, like what? You, you honestly should have never, like... Ask... like no, Which, yeah. I didn't ask don't... to join Root. I was <laughs> like, no, no, no. is there was, a He was just BMing. No, it, it, it's it, not important. It, it implies that you are, because otherwise there's no reason to ask about it. You would not say, oh, well, I have the, a friend that wants to join The Root. implication is not as, as rude as it is. It's just flat out, you know, doing it. But I, I don't think there was a problem. I so, think it's I, just a funny story. I Listen, it's I think a that funny story. Yes. Follow Mario on Twitter. Wait, is that what Yeah, I mean, the too long didn't read of that as, like, it's extremely BM to, like, message someone's stream link while they're streaming so it's seen like that's that's the worst part to I be feel honest, like as a Mario was just I, trying I, to I, have fun like I, I, was just, I, I honestly was, do I think Mario was just having I think Mario fun, was like alright this bridge is already burned we might as well go all the way Look, this bridge is somebody, damn burned right now if somebody <laughs> five games in a row five games in a row if somebody you, let's say it wasn't even cast this is a random player that streams okay let's say he's got like five people okay uh, I'm Marine. What if you face this person five times in a row, and you hear five times in a row this player spend at least half an hour after each game talking shit about you? You're not gonna have a little bit of fun the next time you face him. Come on, no. yeah, you are. No, because you know, you know what? Starcraft. If you're better, you yeah. exploit it, you know, and that's no. how it is. You just gotta you have see. fun. With hold this on, game. hold on. Wait, no, no, wait. No, no. In this see, hypothetical see. situation, do I kill this five stream viewer, or do does he kill me every five games? No, no you're let's killing say him. you're killing him five times in a row. He talks shit about you for half an hour minimum after each game. You face him again. You're not gonna have a little bit of fun. A little no, bit I of fun. No, I rate him. Like, I like, secure no, those points. I have time. a stream. I would, okay. I would oh, totally be oh, in I'm, your situation, Mario. I would totally be like telling him I'm going hell bad. I, I did <laughs> right it too. At the beginning, yeah. I told him. I, told I, I would him be I'm like, I'm going hell bad. Do you remember the story? Cass is like, I'm going hell bad. I have. And then to top it off, to be like the ultimate dick, because every time he's gonna be typing back or complaining. Before my drop went in for the land, I'd be like, oh, how do you really feel about Hellbats? <laughs> like, how do they really make you feel? So that he is typing with both hands on the keyboard when the Hellbat drop drops in to kill all his drones. That's just me. You know, that is exactly what I would do. See, well, I think it's, it's a different thing, because I don't abuse, like, issues with the game, so I can't really speak to that point. I don't... Bullshit. What? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. Mr. Like, I supply right, blocks, right, sit on right. three base, okay. and both army five. Guns. I hey, think Mario. I think it was a personal okay. Okay, yes. okay, guys, I need to say something because I'm not sure if anyone realized, but over the course of some strange time, talking somehow became BM. So if you say something, it suggests something. That's why if you play like like a lot of EG players, they're not gonna ever say good luck, have fun. Like, they're not ever gonna GG. Like no, I thought it was anything past GLH GLHF. Because the, the most mannered part is not saying really saying anything at all. You only say what you have to do. Don't say anything unnecessary, even if it's a, a question. Because otherwise, it will. Because for different people's mentality, it will bring up very insulting things. Like if it's, you said some, if you said something like, "Oh, is Root looking for someone?" It can imply that. You want to join Root, and that's like it's not exactly. It's obviously implying that. Yeah, yeah. it's obviously. Yeah, yeah, I don't, no, I don't it's think totally that's a bad BM. Thing. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. right. that, that sense, it can be BM because you're suggesting that you're a good enough player, and right. that if you're a good enough player, you're also suggesting in a very indirect way that you are better than cats. As a oh, player, well, like, that's as, a tough as, call. As, as a player. Oh, as Mario. A, <laughs> as a, Play. I don't know. I, I guess you could take I it that way. It was a fun story. All right, I actually, yeah, like, I do want to go play. Okay, so can we do shoutouts? Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah it may be a fun. It may be a fun story. Hold on. It may be a fun story, but like it will, prov it will provoke a lot of players, and that's that's why right. when I pl when I play, no matter what, I would like say like GG. I would not say anything else. Like even if they're BMing me, because like I do counter BMs, but. I would never like. <laughs> yeah. I would. I would not start anything otherwise. Yeah, but you're it's, already in a position where you're being recognized. People know no, who you no, are. No, it's just no, it's straight up BM. What Mario did. No yeah, one actually. Mario was completely. It's not, that, it's not that important. I just. I want to go play. Yeah. It's not let's important. Go right play. Let's go let's, play. Let's go play. Let's shout outs. Let's do shout outs. All right, shout outs. All right, I guess so, we'll start with Imarine, and then we'll just go across. All right, the top. well, guys, thanks for watching the stream. There's 206 people tuned in right now. It was pretty awesome. You guys don't already know who I am. I'm a midmaster Protoss. The reason my name's Imarine is because I rerolled to Protoss from Terran. I currently stream at twitch.tv slash TV, usually every day for about four to five hours. You can follow me on Twitter at TV, and uh, really enjoyed you guys being here.
My turn? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I'm going to throw down. I'm challenging Winner to some ZVT, and I'm challenging Imarine again. It's on. Me and you. You can get too old again, man. It's okay. Let's go. Let's go. Easy. Anyway, I stream at twitch.tv slash shockfox. I'm going to probably stream after this. I haven't, I'm not tired at all, so whatever. I'm probably just going to try and take on Winner. So let's go. All right. Shit, I can finally <laughs> talk. Holy. I didn't talk that whole show. <laughs> but, um, <They're> here now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm Exalted Nice. I'm not, I'm no longer with Exalted, though, so if people come to my stream, don't say Exalted Nice. Just say Nice. Um, I was a Master Zerg, now I'm a Diamond Terran, so if you guys want to check that out. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn, bro. Uh, I am Yumi. Y-U-M-E, or Yume. It still means dream. And... What else do I say? Oh. Oh, I am a, I am a GM ran, I am a GM random player. I play on <laughs> KR and NA. Shit. You play and random now? I always did play random. Oh, I only saw you play Terran. Oh, Wait, what? Terran. I play Terran on NA. Oh wow! Whoa! There it is. Ah, uh, that's like wow! I did not know that at all. Random in team games. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> alright, 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 alright. Um, I'm on Team SCA, I'm on Clan MVP, and uh, don't find me at Twitch TV slash Optic Dream. I will stream probably tomorrow, not tonight, and I will wear something interesting. Um, Bikini! Oh my god, I'm so excited now. Yeah, okay, I think that's it for me. Is it more interesting than Artosis with the Pokemon Trainer uniform? Actually, that, that well, I the well, Apollo had black. the pink. Those uniforms are called. The uniforms are called Kirigumis if you look them up, and it's basically a Japanese uh, summer. It's a it's a Japanese. Uh, basically, it's a pajama. It's like really really hot. It's really warm. Um, it's, he was it's, in Sweden. Yeah, and it's it's like a one size fits all kind of thing. So that's why it'll fit. It, there's no specific size. That's why it's really good, and it's usually after like animals or something. So if you type that down, you could buy yourself one. It's usually like it ranges somewhere between sixty to seventy dollars, seven bucks by average. Today I learned. <laughs> I don't know if anybody saw the picture of Artosis, but he used like putting the gloves on with like yeah. the full thing with the Pokemon trainer hat. <laughs> that was the best part about that. That was so funny. Um, I may as well do my shoutouts now. Uh, I'm Filter SC. I'll have a webcam next week because everybody keeps asking that in chat. Uh, sponsored by Monty Trash. This is boss. Um, I'm with I'm with Quantic Gaming on the media side, so obviously I'm not a player or anything like that. So shout out to those guys. Um, I have my own Twitch stream, which is twitch.tv slash Filter SC. Uh, I'm pretty big into YouTube and doing uh, mostly Terran tutorials right now, though I will cover the other races. And that's youtube.com slash Filter SC. So I take... Um, a really hard look at the mechanics of the game and, and kind of making sure you're making enough stuff to actually win the game. If you want to look a little bit more at decision making, I suggest you look at Yume's channel because I, I just checked out a couple of his videos. But you can go over there too. You trying to hide? Yeah. That's okay, why I, like that. I had to it stop the message. Him from his face. That's why I've been streaming a lot recently. Cool. I'm a stalker. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you no, got a stalker, so, so don't go over it is. No, but uh, uh, yeah. I that's got pretty a much message. It. Scary shit. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> oh, I don't. I, I had a message from someone that... Mm -hmm. Okay, actually, yeah. let me read it quote for quote. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I only have, like, three stalkers. Can you come visit and share the bed with me and my girlfriend? Heart. Oh, welcome to being welcome to being in esports. Wait, that's that's not even that bad, dude. <laughs> that's not bad. Yeah, Just go for it. It's not bad at all. Like, I'm yeah, sorry. No, no, that no, no, that that that, that like one person has it. watched. That one person watched my stream, and that's why. How's the problem? Very, that's very, just where you wear something sexy for extra donations. Yeah. Huh? yeah no, I'm, I'm just, like, just, just, pop it, just pop it off. Like, I'm just, I'm just, oh, I forgot my t shirt today. I mean, you know, you are oh. putting on these cute outfits. I'm, so I'm, you have to expect to start a new Put on some Japanese lingerie or something. I don't know. Yeah, like, there you go. I'm just going to hide. <laughs> okay, well. Every five dollars, another new article of clothing comes off. Uh, uh, I'll, 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 I will do that. I am So, I'm. I might as well do mine. I'm HD on Mario. I mech 100%. I used to be a Grandmaster random player on Europe. And uh, 
I, I switch to Mac and I do like YouTube tutorials on SE2 Yosho. And uh, I stream at HTML Mario, just slash HTML Mario. I Mac and Marine Tank equally. Ah. Uh. Okay, I, okay. I love Mech. I, I was yeah, playing like races, but I just decided that Mech was the hardest, so... I, I don't think it's the hardest. I think it's just different. Have you tried playing Mech at Grandmaster Level? Hold on. Of Liberty? Calm down. Yes. Calm I down. have. Bruce. Let's let Winter show up. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Let's throw, let's throw, let's throw Winter a bone here. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to put all my links in chat, Winter's so I just... Spoo I stream pretty much every day. I'm pretty much full-time StarCraft right now. I'm Winter. It says twitch.tv slash zealfreebird in the chat, but I stream like... I, well, I streamed over 200 hours last month, so there's math on that. Uh, I'm top eight masters random player. I'm near GM as Zerg. Top masters is Protoss and high masters is Terran. I coach all the time. People seem to like it. Nerdupgrades.com slash Winter. Um, if, like you, if, you, if you like watching white guys who play StarCraft, I'm your man. Um, also, everyone else in this call except Tim Essen is your man there. Wait. What? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, how about just me? Just me, guys. Just you. <laughs> just me. I actually have a question for you, Winter. Texans, what's up? Why are you called Winter? You're like, your room looks so warm and cozy. Um, I live in Michigan, and it sounds like a cool name. No. <laughs> so where did, where did ZL Freebird come from? That, I, was, I was on Team Zero Limits at some point, and my name was Freebird, and then I'm like, I want to be Winter, and at that point, I got two viewers, so I, I didn't think people would give a shit, and then by the time I actually got viewers, I already had, like, too many followers to really bother making a new channel, so... Uh, okay. I got lazy. And is it, that is, is it the true perfect that, yeah. lesson in why you don't put your team name. If you make a Twitch channel, for oh, yeah. God, never put your team mistake. name in it, because you can't change mistake. it. You know, there's yeah. like three. There's like three winters. So I know. There's one know. in GM. Everybody's like, "You got GM winter." I'm like, "Fuck you." <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey. uh, um, all right, winter. We gotta throw down, man. Let's do it. I. Same. Okay. I'm gonna just we'll, two we'll take it down once again. We'll just we'll just you'll go down, throw down. You know what? Two v one. Both of you versus me. I mean, I don't think I'll be winter, but I know I'll two o fox 100. percent Yo, how about this? Me and winter Hashtag versus fox party. and I marine. Two v two. Yeah. I play Protoss. All right, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop it over and end okay. it. So see you guys later, everybody.